2024. I'm super excited to get started here, man. My name is Skip. With me, this way, this way is Dara. Dara, how are we doing today? <laughs> uh, I'm doing good. Yeah, a little bit of an early morning for us here on the East Coast. Uh, it is approximately 8:43 a.m. AKA, I don't know, maybe five hours before I'm normally supposed to wake up, but I'm fine. I'm not upset about it at all. Hi, I missed all of you guys so much. It's good to see all of you. Uh, we will be taking off today. We'll be opening off today with top six of the Southeast Asia Championships. I'm excited about it. Skip, how are you feeling? I mean, I'm definitely excited. I'm just happy to be here, man. It's been a while since I've been on uh, Brawlhalla for a little bit. Took a little bit of a break, but man, just to be back, yeah. so excited. We actually have a fantastic casting team this year as well. So, I mean, everything's going to be beautiful. It's going to be fantastic this weekend. I'm so excited for it. I'm ready to get started. But yeah, like you mentioned, we are in Southeast Asia mm -hmm. for the Trials of Ymir. And what's it? In our winner's finals, we've got Himwi versus Sphinx. Sphinx! Taking it over Keith the Poo Poo, by the way, uh, in a game five uh, set. And I'm a little bit shocked because Keith is like, he's good. Like, he's, he's, he's one of my guys. Yeah. I love watching him. Yeah, Keith is number two in the region, so that's actually quite a bit of an upset. Um, you have number seven going up against number two. That's quite a bit of an upset, uh, bracket-wise. Um, last time they played was like in a community tournament um, all the way back in 2023, and that set also went to Sphinx. So it seems like Sphinx is the kind of a player that is up uh, and coming in on the rise. Uh, 2024 is going to be really exciting here for Brawlhalla. Uh, a lot of changes, a lot of changes to movement as people are getting a little bit more comfortable with it. So I am pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, him way to get up until this point. Everybody, this is where they expect him to be, right? Um, to be like that number one beat of the bracket, to be able to take it over the plump. Um, Keith gonna be knocked down to uh, elimination side quite early on. Uh, and we're currently waiting for elimination side to get filled out. Um, if we just go ahead and we take a little look at top 32, uh, the two people uh, currently competing are uh, Laz going up against Sire. Uh, Unpio is waiting on the winner of Green and Malevolent, or Malevent, excuse me. Tiger and uh, Max Evasion, or Tax Evasion. It's been, a, it's been a long morning, I apologize. Tiger and Tax Evasion also looking for, um, you know, the winner of that set to lock their way into top eight. And Ello uh, against Holix, waiting on that to go up against Jerry K. So yeah, elim elimination side's a little backed up. We're waiting for it to just get going. Yeah, I mean, once that gets caught up, we're definitely going to be really underway here. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't caught up for the winter semis, I already told you that Sphinx took it 3-2 over Keith. Mm -hmm. I wish I uh, was able to watch that one, but hey, you know what? Maybe we'll get the run back here today. I, I would be very excited to see that. But yeah, and then Himwe over Le Plum. Yeah, man. Uh, 
I'm excited. I just oh here we go. We're getting started here, man. We're getting into our stage picks, and we're about. I don't. To get... I don't think we are. I don't think oh. we are. Oh, we're uh, not. Because oh. that's that's uh that's Sandwick. Oh. That's Sandwick. That's Lockin and oh yeah, man. So that's, I got a little excited. I got a little him excited. Wins. Thanks. But like th that's the thing though is like we're we're start finally getting started here for Brawlhalla in 2024, and man, I'm just so excited because mm -hmm. like the year's got a lot in store. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fantastic matches. There's going to be a lot of fantastic events. The trials events. Oh, man. I'm just I'm super ecstatic to be able to just be a part of this again. So, yeah, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm ready, man. I I, I, we were talking about how, how we're both a little bit tired waking up this early, but I, I feel like I got this burst of energy we're all about to wake up. Yeah, yeah, we're about to wake up. We're about to get some high-level competition. Uh, I'm excited to see like what Southeast Asia can do uh, mm -hmm. at this point in the year. Um, I'm curious to see how the meta has progressed. We are definitely like one of the smaller regions um, that we have here represented in Brawlhalla. Um, and so yeah, always got a little something to prove. So once again, we're gonna be waiting on Hemwe and Sphinx to jump on into the lobby. Uh, Hemwe quite a bit in 2023 used uh, a bunch of Terrors, uh, a bunch of Asuri as well. Sphinx, I, I'm actually not the most familiar with Sphinx's gameplay. I had a chance to cast Southeast Asia, of course, like Hemwe, uh, of course, Keith, those are like the big names that jump to mind. Um, in the past, they have a set record of 7 to 3 in Hemwe's favor. Uh, last time it was at a community event. They haven't played at an official tournament in quite some time. They never really crossed paths bracket, so here they are, Trail of Ymir. Um, Let's see how it goes. Yeah, uh, I think we're just kind of waiting for Sphinx to get locked in here. But potential, we're seeing what characters gonna be coming out here for him. We gonna be seeing that fate potentially. That's just what I'm seeing on my screen here. Whether they lock in is another story altogether. Um, but yeah, fate, fantastic character, Orb Scythe, and uh, uh, got a lot of speed too. She's like, there's just so much combo potential with this character. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see exactly what Himwee's going to be bringing to the table with her. Uh, Sphinx just getting locked in here, by the way. Uh, we're going to see what character potentially. But uh, man, I don't want to start drawing too many conclusions too early because, again, this is a new year. It's a new beginning for a lot of people. And it's just like a fresh start for everyone to kind of mm -hmm. maybe bring out a little bit of extra sauce, a little bit of extra flair, or try something a little bit new to see how it like pushes them forward for the rest of the year. Ooh, so this is going to be interesting. We're seeing Sphinx lock into the Val. So, uh, Himwe's weapon choice, the, specifically the combination of the Siphon Orb on Fate, um, it's going to be interesting. These are the kinds of weapons that if they're, like, KOing, they're KOing, and then if they're not, you also, like, really substantially feel that, right? Mm. So, uh, especially, like, when, like, the damage gets super high, Sphinx does have a little bit more consistency. When it Three, two, KOs by one, virtue of having Swerd available. Swerd, such a consistent and solid weapon all the way around. You just get a delight into creativity. You basically get anything else that you want. So, uh, game number one, winner's finals. Him we going up against Sphinx. Let's get it. Yeah, man, him we already off to a great start here. Had that scythe putting on a little bit of damage before tossing it. And now they got that orb putting that pressure down. But here we go with Sphinx, okay? Using that Val, the gauntlets, trying to just kind of punch him around here. And, but man, right now, uh, for the most part, him we's controlling this pace really, really well. Yeah, him we's controlling the pace, him we's controlling the space. You just sort of sitting on stage for quite a bit, but hey, you're up against gauntlets. Look at that edge code. And oh my, no. Oh, I can't believe it. The downer didn't connect. Wait, why didn't Sphinx's down air connect? Him was just able to slip past him and then was just able to find a KO of his own. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a little bit unfortunate, but you know what? I like his aggression coming out from Sphinx right out the gate. Uh, you notice that you're a little bit behind, but you had this opportunity to take a huge lead, potentially if you got a, a nice read out off stage, and it didn't work out for you, but it is not really working out for you right now either, because man, Hibwe is just stacking on the damage. And we backing off a little bit right now. Okay, just looking to, again, just controlling the space, controlling the inner space, especially with D-Light. Sphinx is having a really difficult time actually getting back onto the stage. Looking to get that pinpoint with the down -in. Not able to lock it in quite yet though, but Sphinx has taken a beating the second stock. The D-Light into the recovery, not enough to take out that stock quite yet. Himwe still staying afloat. Oh, that's not gonna do it. Oh, Coming back goodness. down with the side is this it? Wow, okay, finally just getting up board here, but man, it's really unfair way to stop being a little bit sooner than this because Sphinx is not looking too good. You're already in the red here, and the way that him we oh my god, he's just controlling this space again. Oh, tries to get for the weapon toss, not gonna be able to close it out, but does he's get it right there. Beautifully played. Oh my 
Yeah, JC's side light is just about like the best option at that point. Um, you see a lot of Hall players go for that. It's just it, it's just a, quite an active hitbox that just says, hey, we have quite a bit of base knockback. We have quite a bit of uh, initial knockback. At that point, you're just going to be basically done. You don't have to go for any GC ground pounds. You don't have to go for uh, any GC D lights. You whiff a GC D light and it's so committal. So really good stuff on Hemwee's behalf. And now all of a sudden, it's two stocks to one. Hemwee is extending off stage, looking to get an edge guard started as well. I mean, this is looking like his game. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, you know, both players were kind of taking a little bit of a break before we got started here. So I don't know if, like, you know, him, we just had a way to stay more warmed up, I guess, getting into this game. And maybe Sphinx just needs to warm up a little bit. But this is definitely 100% him, we's game. I think the close out. Well, it's his game to lose. That's 100% for sure. Himwee's just playing back. Himwee's just saying, okay, Sphinx, you just want to overextend just once. I'm oil. That is what oil does best, just playing back, controlling the space, able to get the down out, and ooh, looking for the GC side lights to maybe convert it into a side out. Doesn't find it quite yet. Going off stage for the down out. Comes back on. That's not going to do it quite yet. But Sphinx in a nasty position. Himwee not connecting the ground pound. Oh, try to get the gravity cancel signature there. Not going to be able to close that one out. But really just one more hit. That should do it. And as we see... Himwe getting the first game on stream yes. for 2024. And man, off to a, a really good start here. I don't know what's going on with Sphinx to get started here. I, I think a lot of it, you know, might be just getting this far, you know, getting probably a very stressful game five set over Keith. So probably just kind of recovering, trying to get some gas back in the tank there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's game one. It's game one. I'm not trying to count anybody out. But, you know, going off game one as well, just mm -hmm. seeing how well him we came out of the gate. I mean, whew, it's kind of tough to just talk them down, you know? Yep, Hemwee is playing excellent at the moment. Sphinx was struggling to get in that game, and then Hemwee always two, had at least a two-piece and three-piece follow-up waiting for the Sphinx. Uh, and then when Sphinx was off stage, Sphinx was taking a couple of hits. I mean, honestly, a lot of momentum was lost on that first stock when Sphinx tried to initiate uh, off stage and wanted to go out there with some really crazy gauntlet combo. But now we're getting a bit of a switch up. We're going into game two. Let's see how it's going to go. Sphinx now picking up the spew. Okay, overextending with the D light ends up getting with punished. Oh, there we go. Stacking on some pretty solid damage there. Again, it's kind of like game one all over again. It's just a hot start here from Himwe. Uh, using the, the sphere, the orb, excuse me, to just continue to just put down this pressure, keep them off stage, just make them use up all these resources just to get back to the stage itself. Oh, and Himwe right now, once again, about to edge code Sphinx with no weapon. I love the way that Himwe has been using all the different angles of orb. Such a unique weapon, just being able to bounce off of surfaces. Himwe, uh, especially like on the ground and off stage, has made it so difficult for Sphinx to get back on, bouncing it um, against the sides of the stage. And once again, getting another edge code started. Sphinx finally coming back on, but already taking a significant amount of damage oh my goodness man these orb combos are just devastating here and this is kind of what happened again in game one we saw oh him we just start off really hot we saw sphinx answer back but not before taking a lot of damage here and yeah this game too uh, this is looking like uh the script might be written and set in stone uh, at least for him uh -oh. all right taking some time here on the side with maybe i believe potential. we may have a little lag yeah. I think that's uh, that's what's going on here, at least according to Twitch chat, so... Um, I don't know. Yeah, let's see what happens. Just right, took a well, second to chill out, now they're yeah. back into it, and him, we just found a sideline siding. Okay. I mean, so, I, I, I do appreciate that. That's good sportsmanship. You know, you recognize, hey, uh, neither of us are really going to be having a good time here, and instead of just using uh, the lag going on, you know, trying to get some extra damage, we're just going to wait it out, see if it fixes itself, and we'll continue playing. But, oh my god! Him we is him right now just stacking up all this damage. Look at this could be a potential three stock. Oh no! Oh there it is. baby! Oh Yep, <laughs> that is that is a three stock, just as we told by Skiff. Excellent job there. Um okay, so what happened that game? Uh, perhaps a little bit of lag. I don't feel like personally too comfortable like analyzing that game because Sphinx's gameplay was of course um, you know, you just have to take that into like consideration. But again, I mean, the same thing happened where Henry put Sphinx off stage. Sphinx had a really difficult time of getting back on. Henry got a hit. Every single hit then converted into something else. And so that was a pretty rough game. That second game was a little bit tough. Um, I want to see what's going to happen. Maybe a couple of reconnects. Um, 
but at the moment that is Henry that is up two to oh so yeah quite a lead yeah it, it is definitely a little bit tough here and this is one of those situations where i was hoping sphinx was going to be able to come into game two uh, you know, just making some quick adjustments, you know, again, it's it's the beginning of the year, right? You know, the energy is high. Maybe the nerves are a little bit high as well. Uh, but man, like I didn't really take any calculation that him we was just going to actually uh, also make adjustments. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like Sphinx is going to be restarting their game real quick. So yeah, it looks like lag to come into play. So yeah, like you called uh, a couple reconnects here just to make sure everything's good to go. Yep. Yeah, it's also interesting to see, like, I mean, him we, between, like, Scythe and Orb has been mostly using Orb uh, the past couple of games, and to, like, great effect, too. It can be super difficult to actually get back against uh, Orb when you're trying to get back onto the stage, just because it's like, hey, as long as you have your spacing down, you can keep, like, a very nice, uh, generous distance away from your opponent. You can mix them up with different angles off the side of the stage. Uh, Sphinx has been kind of suffering that last game, so... Uh, let's see if there's going to be another character change going into game three. Um, it seems like Sphinx is going to be sticking with the Kaya uh, going into this. Yeah, we just saw we saw the start of a couple of combos with Bo, but otherwise no extended strings, right? Uh, no closes. Him, we won that second game with three stocks. Um, all right, winning his finals. They're getting their bands out. Uh, we're about to get going. Yeah. Uh... I'm not sure how I feel about sticking with the kayak. Maybe, again, you needed a game to kind of get it warmed up, you know, get used to the spear and the bow, just kind of changing up some of the combos and some of the routes you're going to be going for. But, yeah, there's one thing I could definitely tell is that Sphinx definitely uh, <laughs> likes the high mobility, high defense champs. And, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It does keep you alive quite a bit longer and having the high mobility. And you're able to move around, you know, maneuver and try to mm. extend those lives a little bit, but you're gonna have to try a little bit harder because man, Himwe is just deleting these stocks as they wish. And as we get into a potential final game of winner's finals, we'll see if Sphinx has got something in the gas tank, man, because we need to see it. We need to see it. Um, okay, game number three, Himwe up two to O, uh, three, and we're going to two, Miami Dome one, for this one, so. Four. Yeah, we're about to get into it. And Henry right off the bat, just jumping up to the left platform, picking up Scythe in hand. And Sphinx fighting back a little bit. Finally has a time to be able to pick up a weapon. Just getting a little bit of extra space with the GC side light. And now Spear on hand. Henry though, initiating with those side lights. Okay, once again, just getting in there. Oh, Sphinx is already taking a considerable amount of damage. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're off to a better start here, though. I mean, they're still kind of maintaining this aggression. Oh, man, the counterplay. Oh, yeah, this is terrifying, Dara. I'm actually, okay, finds a way back to the stage. I mean, just with the way that we've been playing here, it's just, <laughs> Sphinx, please. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, ouch. Uh, <laughs> I don't know really what else to say about that at the moment. Right now, though, Himwe once again just getting in there with the down air, looking for the neutral light. Such a nice active hitbox. Backing off a little bit, looking just to catch one bad landing, looking to catch that whiff. That's right, with Spear, if you whiff that end light, um, it has so many active frames that you give your opponent ample time just to be able to react to it and punish. Sphinx, though, finally cleaning up one of Himwe's stocks with the recovery, keeping themselves in the game at the moment. Two stocks apiece, and with Spear, I mean, you really just need uh, that one D light. You just need that one side light, and you can get something going for right now. Sphinx, bow on hand, just getting him way off stage, not able to get any uh, anything too big. Right now, I mean, I feel like this is, again, it was off to a better start before I felt like him was just like, you know, kind of cut the energy down. But what I really like is that Sphinx is continuing to battle here, because right now, you're really not that far behind. I mean, you're on the same, your same stocks, the damage is just a little bit different. I, I like one or two good combos, and you could be able to take the lead here, uh, at least in terms of health, not necessarily in terms of stocks, but the way that Himwe's playing though with this orb, it's just, it's so devastating, man. They're just doing a, such a good job, weaving in and out, just finding their openings and just converting off everything. Okay, the Sphinx catching that landing, unfortunately ends up delighting into the wrong direction. Himwe back onto the stage, one sider, goes out there for another one, whips it, but then still able to cover behind with the recovery. Sphinx makes back on, really good whiff punish, no huge follow up though, but the damage is just about even at the moment. The sider doesn't connect, they're whiffing each other's faces, and everybody is just still, is that gonna be it? Yes, it will. Side light, sider. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, I know things are looking a little bit grim, like you take, I mean, Himwe's in the red, right? Just, again, a couple solid combos. You could find a way to even this up and take a strong lead, but 
With the way that Hibri's playing here, I thought there was a chance that Sphinx wasn't going to make it back to the stage, but they do find a way to just get your pretty little feet onto this pretty little stage here. But man, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't want to say it's over, but like, it's not looking good. Oh, oh God. You don't want to say it's what? Okay. I don't, yeah. I don't, okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm glad that you felt so good so not to uh, fully finish your thought. Excellent idea. Oh, man. Himmy is just sliding off, charging up that end sick now. Just going off stage for a bunch of Hail Mary Downers. They're ground pounding each other. Okay. Yeah, it's a little troll. This game's a little silly at this point. Sphinx is still keeping themselves afloat, though. They're still keeping themselves in the game. One stock apiece. Maybe Himmy will regret uh you know i'm just gonna say it kind of trolling that's what that was that's what happened last talk there's always a chance i mean I'm, I'm a big advocate of finishing your food look i like to play around mess around we do see him we close it out thank goodness because like if you throw a game away because you want to you want to have a little bit of fun in a mm -hmm. competition there's a chance that you just give your opponent so much energy and like leeway to you know really battle back so i'm glad that him we just said okay look i tried messing around i'm gonna clean this up i'm gonna punch my ticket to grand finals here and you know maybe i'll see you later maybe i won't but you're gonna have to go down mm -hmm. to the elimination side of bracket and you're gonna have to prove your way to get back here so yeah but you know, Sphinx still making a couple of upsets to get up until this point. So, uh, like, once again, like, I would be curious to, like, know what happened uh, in the set against Keith. Of course, we were not privy to that. That was off stream. Uh, but, yeah, that means that, once again, Sphinx knocked down to elimination side uh, in elimination semis. Waiting on, I mean, elimination side is still quite a bit backed up at the moment. Uh, the top 32 isn't completely filled out yet. Uh, we're still waiting on a couple of sets. We do know that Laz is on one side of, um, you know, one side of elimination. Tiger is on another side of it. And they're currently waiting on some of the sets that I talked about before. They're waiting on the winner of Yunpyo uh, and Levent, as well as Jerry K up against Holok. So uh, it's still going to be a little bit for us to actually get there. I don't know what we'll be doing in that regard. Uh, well, I mean, worst case scenario, it's also just a good time to just say hi to everyone in the chat. Like, uh, you know, just welcome back. I mean, I know it's been a couple, you know, slow months here, but hey, we're here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic time. Uh, for some of you, it's a Friday afternoon for the rest of us, like us right here. It's just Friday morning and we've been up for a little bit, but you know what? And just take a little bit of a nap once we're done here. That, that's what I'm probably going to do. I'm going to be real. <laughs> That is my plan for the day as well. Yeah, we'll get through this top six and then I'm uh, knocked out uh, for the rest of the day today. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all have been enjoying the show so far, uh, even in spite of perhaps like some lag and some of the disconnects that we have been having. Uh, we'll be able to get the show back onto the road um, soon enough. We're just waiting for Elimination Side to fill out a little bit. Everybody, I hope you have been enjoying the uh, the show and the competition so far. Uh, and we'll see you all in just a couple of minutes with the rest of Top 6 Elimination Side. See you soon.
Hello everybody, welcome back. We are currently in top six of Southeast Asia. We are gonna be taking it off from elimination side. We just had the pleasure, that is my lovely co-caster, Skiff and I, we just had the lovely pleasure of being able to cast um, winner's finals. Uh, it was him we up against Sphinx. Sphinx on a bit of a bracket run at the moment, taking it over Kate back in winning semis, knocking them down to elimination side, and now we're jumping into elimination side ourselves. We're gonna be kicking it off with Malevent going up against Laz. Skiff, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know? Like I mentioned before, uh, we were both kind of being a little bit a little bit tired coming in because you know we're waking up a little bit early but that first match got my energy boosted i feel like my battery is charged i'm ready to get into the rest mm -hmm. of this right now but yeah I, I, i'm really excited to see how this this top eight plays out because mm -hmm. like you mentioned uh, i mean sphinx had a great bracket run and i'm gonna be sitting in losers finals or elimination finals and just kind of be sitting there for just a little bit because we've got some time to catch up but i really want to see if they can find a way to get back to grands uh and kind of just you know, showcase the gameplay that got them there in the first place. Um, but yeah, next we got Malavent versus Laz. Gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, PR4 and PR blank. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited to see Malavent here. Good. Malavent is going to be particularly interesting. If the stats are correct, Malavent has only competed uh, about three times in a few community events back in 2023, a little bit more active in 2022 and 2021, and then some inconsistent results across the board. I'm seeing things like, actually, you know what? Not too inconsistent. Um, somewhere in like that 17th to like 13th placement range. Um, back in like all the way like the spring 22 championships uh, and so forth. And I think the best placement was a top eight, specifically a, um, you know, a seventh placing at the winter championships all the way back in 22. Mm -hmm. Whereas Laz, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more familiar on this side of the bracket at this point in competition. Um, you know, last uh, really big placement that they had was third at the Southeast Asia Autumn Champs. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and these two players, they've only played once before, is my understanding, all the way back at the Autumn Champs in 2021. So that was, that was in Laz's favor too. So Malavan has quite a few things working against him at the moment here. I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to get this started. Yeah, same. <laughs> I'm just looking at the character here, man. And this is one of the things I love about Brawlhalla is when they get these crossovers going on and then you start changing mm -hmm. the colors of the characters they bring over. It's always like crazy whiplash. I remember the one of the first like crossovers I remember like really diving into is someone playing Three, like a, two, uh, a bright one, pink. Brawl. I think it was Michelangelo. And it was just like, what am I looking at? <laughs> it's so right. good. It's so funny. Uh, but yeah, everybody, game number one starting. This is just top eight elimination side. The, you know, person who loses the set is going to be knocked out of the tournament, so quite a bit on the line. Malevent! Whoa! Okay, if an axe is connecting that many hits, that is a problem. That is a lot of damage all of a sudden. Laz being put off stage. Malevent already looking to close. Laz able to get a couple of licks in now, but hold on. Also, Ooh. look at Patrick's icon. Look at Patrick's icon on the on the. <laughs> it's so, so goofy looking. Oh man, Brawlhalla is a game that exists. I love it. But here we go. Gonna be to put on some solid damage here. Getting some strong hits. Nothing super solid in one way or the other. Both of them just kind of oh, take a turn, just wailing on each other. And as we can see, uh, Laz gonna get started here a little bit strong. Okay, just controlling his pace, looking for a nice way to get back to center stage. D-Light just to be able to continuously anterior Malavent, not able to land back down. Chase dodges in, picking up an axe as well. We got an axe ditto at the moment. Okay, they're swinging. They are swinging. Malavent again with these weapon tosses. Laz, not ready for them. Gets that down and off stage. The recovery, not enough to take it off the top quite yet, but the hammer neutral will do it. Malavent keeping himself alive. Yeah. Man, these guys are just going to continue to battle here. I mean, right now, a little bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. I feel like it's something that could definitely be, uh, what is it, kind of reset here. But the two of them could be, you know, relatively even after a couple hits. And I mean, that's just kind of what happens, especially when you got axe and hammer flying all over the place. Okay. Axe and hand again, getting that neutralized. Okay. Yeah, doing a pretty solid job. Just kind of. Uh... All right. Oh, 
Les now just trying to get a bit of a juggle going. Spew on hand. Looking for the side of Malavich just coming back onto the stage. Is that gonna do it? Yes, it will. The side sig ends up cleaning it up. Malavent is currently up two to one stocks against Laz. Um, yeah, a little bit unexpected at the moment. Mm -hmm. You'll be getting uh, the one, two, three, putting on a little bit of solid damage here. And there we go, the equalizer in our game one. And now it's coming down to this. Really just a couple more hits from either player, especially with the way they've been kind of wailing on each other, getting this damage stacked up, these strong hits as well. Honestly, yeah, that's Taros. That's Taros at the end. That is Taros, yeah. <laughs> I love yeah, Taros, can definitely, When he chooses to approach, which may or may not be not particularly often, it can make for some quick games. Uh, but right now, Mal does have Axe on hand again, coming back in with the side and looking for the recovery, getting that punish onto Laz. Laz is hurting. Laz is in quite a bit of pain at the moment. Okay, picking up the hammer now. Side off stage, weapon tossing, and then still coming back down and getting the side chunk. Malevent, no weapon in hand, able to close it out. My goodness. Oh my god, that model on Patrick? Oh, that is so funny. Did you see that? Him <laughs> yeah, doing the Akuma pose? <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> it is so goofy. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. But hey, <laughs> great start here for Malavent, who honestly is kind of making a prize run here and, you know, taking the first game off Laz. Uh, and not mm -hmm. necessarily like a super strong dominant showing, definitely a strong showing, but like a dominant showing. So it could go one way or the other, but man, <laughs> the Akuma pose is just killing me, man. <laughs> Oh, that was insane. Yeah, I did. I was like, oh, I didn't know that he could do that. Oh. Apparently, he can't. <laughs> um, okay, everybody, we're about to get into game number two here. Uh, so, by the way, I just want to once again, like, emphasize Malavent taking that game one over uh, Laz is a little bit unexpected. Um, typically, you know, especially with the way that brackets have gone, especially with uh, Laz's tournament experience, you would expect Laz to be the one that is very comfortably in control of this game. We haven't seen Malavent a whole lot in the last year, um, so 2024 is maybe gonna be his year. Let's see what happens. I mean, At the right moment- oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Wow, we're right so now. respectful. We're so nice to each other. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time working with each other, so it kind of makes sense. But here we go as Malavent getting a strong start here. Uh, so, hey, kind of making me eat my words at, like, I didn't say it was dominant last game. Look at Dominant to get started immediately, though. So beautifully played right now. Just kind of uh -huh. using, utilizing this hammer, again, to stack up damage really quick and, you know, do other Taros things. <laughs> Malavin, Malavin has been getting a lot of weapon tosses. Just sometimes just like across the stage, sitting there, tossing the weapon, and then just able to find an opening. Doesn't actually find a side light follow-up from the side area, but still a good amount of damage onto the board here. Again, another weapon toss opening, picking it back up, connecting that neutral light. Finally, the side area comes out into the weapon toss. Good execution. Execution, Laz cleaning up Malavin's full stock. But yeah, Malavin has had no struggle initiating whatsoever. Um, I feel like maybe Laz is just letting Malavin get a little bit too close to him because that weapon toss can be unreactable when somebody is that close to you. Yeah, was doing a pretty solid job though, keeping them unarmed for a little bit. But as we can see, Malavin is gonna be able to get that next weapon drop. Tosses that axe immediately, man. They are just like a juggler. They're just trying to get every possible weapon throw they can. Here's another one. <laughs> And then once again, that is two unarmed side strongs uh, that have ended up connecting. And that's two more than you would typically see in an average set. Malavent, so aggressive at the moment. Once again, that's the nature of weapon tossing, right? It's like, hey, if you're doing this a lot, you're going to be able to initiate like really quickly at unpredictable distances. And then sometimes you let go of it and you're left without a weapon. Um, yeah. Axe on hand, down in daylight. Ooh, it's piling on. Yeah, but it's kind of like their game plan because like, oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, okay, they do find a way to get back on stage. But that's what I'm saying, that's kind of Melvin's game plan is because they're utilizing this weapon toss to try and get you to recover just a little bit higher than you normally would want to. And that's what's setting up to that that, um, that strong to kind of take out those stocks. So hopefully they can keep doing that, but I am going to want to see some sort of adaptation from Laz. 
Oh, coming off stage with that little couple, going back off stage, and that move is so active. Oh, poor Laz, but look at that spacing. Just barely able to sneak back onto the stage with the GCD, like cover a little bit of space, but such a good whip punish. That was such a good whip punish. That was so funny. Malavit just stood there in the corner, was like, okay, great, I'm gonna dodge. Oh, you pressed a button that you really shouldn't have. Um, I'm curious what Laz pressed, I'm pretty sure it was a D-Light. We'll find out in a moment through these replays. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> this battery is killing me. <laughs> okay, oh. okay. So I just saw the replay really quickly. Yes. So what happened was Malavit was literally sitting there in the corner saying, okay, I'm up right now. You are the one that needs to make this comeback. I have no incentive to approach at all. In fact, you're the one with the axe on hand. And Laz's opening was to jump in with the cider. And Malavit just was able to read that timing. So the thing that I really want to see, like if you're getting like dodge punished like that so easily, the thing that you're really looking to do is, okay, how can I start approaching in less committal ways? How can I maybe start fading back with a side? Of, how can I maybe just jump in front of them and then maybe just like jump back and see what they're doing? Malavit stood there, did nothing. Laz jumped inside her, missed, and then ended up losing the stock and the game for it. As a result, look at the predicament that we find ourselves in now. Malavit up to the Oh, Three, two to none two, against Laz. Laz on tournament game at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is definitely going to be uh, a little bit concerning here. I mean, especially going for a character switch, you know, after you're down 2-0, it can always be just one of those situations that like, hey, you didn't warm this character up, so you kind of have to do a lot of catch up really fast to try and get a game back. But I mean, the other side of it too, is that you can't catch your opponent off guard. You know, they have to adapt to a whole new move set. So we'll see if this works out in Laz's favor, but the way that Malavin's been playing here, I don't know. Again, with Fing Malavin coming back down, able to get that punish. Laz looking for the jump call out with the new trailer. Doesn't find it, holding back onto the ground. Okay, what's it gonna be? A little side coming back down as well. Malavin again, so aggressive with all these weapon tosses. Okay, the axe trying to find a way to battle back to get some sort of stage control here but man the way that laz is playing just really just walling them out with movement and just the threat of i can hit you and potentially take a stock if you're not careful i do like that but as we can see malavent battling back oh great weapon toss oh they tried to look for the ground pound to try and close out that stock they just were not able to get it Okay, coming back on, gets that side of, forces out the dodge. I'm really surprised that, that after forcing out the dodge, Malavin didn't go out the TV spike. Instead, wanted to play it safe. That weapon spawn was in the best possible position for Malavin. That was super clutch. And then was able to close out that stock. Looking for that end sig, looking for that scoop. Oh, oh, Patrick's animations are so good. Patrick's yeah, animations no, are perfect. No, I, I definitely love it. I, it it's, it's super great. But the other side of this too is just that like, I feel like Malavin is really feeling themselves right now because they, uh, as, after they got that first stock, they start throwing out those things back and forth, just kind of like flexing a little bit here. And I mean, and for good reason, they are just continuing to play well. And Laz really playing on this back foot, just trying to find a way to battle back, get something going here. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's going to be the side of, that's going to be the stage spike. And Laz uh, now making the stock count even, but now it's about making that damage even. And that is difficult against Teros. Teros, you with, with a couple of buttons, you get hit a couple of times, and then you're like, oh, where did my stock go? So Malavent, once again, just backing off, controlling the ground, looking to get that new trailer, looking for the downer, looking for the side of, pressing so many buttons, and Laz finally able to get a couple of whip punishes in. Feeling confident enough to extend with that side light, I feel like... I am not seeing Laz connect Daylight with Sword at all, or like dash jump down it. I feel like a lot of these really important ways for Sword to initiate are not coming out, and we're not seeing Laz get a lot of combos as a result. We're seeing Laz oftentimes just opt for the side of this over and over, finally gets spiked down to the blast zone. Malavent, an amazing lead at the moment. Yeah, I think it just might be a little bit of just frustration here because, like, like you said, we're seeing a lot of like missed attacks, something that just does not seem like it should be happening here, at, like at this level of Brawlhalla. So I, I'm assuming it's just some frustration. You know, maybe maybe they're getting a little bit tired after a long bracket run. I'm not too entirely sure, but I mean, I, I also do not want to take anything from Malavent. Malavent has been playing fantastic this entire set. Yeah, Malavent has just been outspacing last. That's what's happening here. Malavent has been outspacing last, waiting for the button to be pressed, uh, and then able to just get a couple of hits as a result. That D-Light into the recovery, unfortunately, not KOing that one as well. 
Oh, that's Telios, baby. That's Telios, even deep into the red. That defense just coming in so clutch. Malevent just able to get so much extra credit now as a result. Laz has to work so hard to get this KO. Is that gonna be it? Yes, it will be. But the question is, is it too late? Uh, it, it might be. I mean, it, I think it just comes down to can Malevent get a hammer in time and lo and behold, the, the hammer has spawned and the set may be over here. It's just a couple strong hits looking for that stop. Oh, great signature toss up way off stage. Getting that weapon toss, trying to find a way to close this one out. But no, last getting back to stage here. One last chance because honestly, you do not have another one. Okay, being nice and patient now, just backing off a little bit, waiting for Malavin to be the one to press that button, gets that side light, able to punish that dodge just by backing off and finding a neutral light, really good stuff. Side air, Laz is slowly chipping away at this Malavin, whiffing that neutral light, whiffing that side air as well. Laz is dodging everything as Malavin is getting a little bit more anxious to find this KO. There's no way, right? There's no way. The, oh, their offense is just working out. Their counterplay is fantastic. It looks like Malavent starting to get a little bit nervous here. Not going to lose the stock off the top from the recovery. Goes for the weapon toss. Now you're weaponless here. This could be bad news. Yes, the gauntlet's coming out now. Darn, there's no way this happens, right? Oh, but then Malavent extended off stage with the D-Light. Wift still is able to get back on and now picking up the hammer. What is happening? What is every single time that Malavent touches a weapon is like, eh, this isn't one for me. Finally gets that neutral light, taunting at the end as well, and still Akuma posing. God, that Akuma pose is <laughs> it's so good. Yep, that's gonna be Malavent taking it over Laz, uh, knocking them out of the tournament and moving on throughout the bracket. I thought we were about to see like the comeback of the year. And I, I mean, we just started, but still like that was almost absolutely insane like i love watching malavent play you know uh hammer in general is just i i just love hard hitting like characters so taro's just you know really right here in my heart but they were just absolutely down from start to finish and the fact that laz i feel like was able to compose themselves and really put the pressure back on malavent i think speaks volumes like Hopefully Laz doesn't get too like discouraged here. Like I, I hope that they just continue to like, all right, look, a little bit rough to start. I mean, top eight, like it's still not even a bad run, but hopefully they can continue to push forward with this and just be like, all right, look, mm -hmm. I got this, right? I made adaptations as I needed to. I almost got a huge comeback. I, I need to be feeling good about that. But Malavent, man, what a run so far to get started this year. Yeah, I wanna I wanna see like how going forward uh in the bracket, Malavit is perhaps a little less hungry to find a KO. Because I feel like this is something that we definitely like see like distinguish between like really, really high and top level Blue Hollow players where uh, they make their win conditions and their options a little bit ambiguous and they weren't constantly fishing for it. Malavit jumped in like five, six times looking for the KO, and then Laz like dodged and punished five, six times in a row. Uh, yeah. That was just like a moment of like, whoa, you need to like stop, you need to chill, you need to make yourself a little bit more ambiguous. How do you make yourself a little bit more ambiguous? Sometimes just by doing nothing, not always moving in and always approaching, just taking a second just to play back. And then you can think about how to make the movement a little bit trickier. For Laz to have felt that comfortable to have stopped every single approach and KO option for Malavent, that is telling me that this is a player who can get a little hungry for the KOs. And so I just want to see... Um, how that's going to perhaps change, or how that's perhaps going to get punished by other players moving forward. Malavent is now securing themselves a nice comfortable spot in Elimination Coins. They'll be going up against Keith, so quite the opponent that you have now ahead of you. Malavent going up against Keith here. Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, sorry, I had coffee earlier and it started to just like come up a little bit, so I apologize, but either way, um, yeah, no, a great run, but this could be uh -huh. <laughs> where this ends, uh, because Keith is kind of that dude, right? Uh, granted, uh -huh. they suffered a loss earlier to Sphinx, who we saw get 3-0'd in, in winners, but, like, Keith is also just one of those players, like, you, you can't, I don't, I feel like Malavit can't do the same stuff here like they were doing with Laz, and it's not to say, like, yeah. You can get away sure. with more stuff against Laz. It's just, I feel like Keith has just I got... I think you could say that. I think you could just say that with your chest. You don't have to play. I'm not that trying back. to run anybody down here. But Keith is, like, he's built different. Sure. Right? Like, yeah, like Keith a lot is of these, different. A lot of these hammer swings, like, I feel like there's going to be a bigger punish, like, if if Malavin isn't as careful. But 
We'll see. Yeah. Ooh, the Sentinel coming out here. Ooh, we've got some hammer time going on. Sentinel, that's going to be an interesting one. Sentinel is going to be on the screen for a long time. That is an incredibly high defense set. So this is going to be interesting. Um, Keith and Malevent, they ended up playing once before. Um, let me tell you exactly when they played. This was back um, at the start of 2023. Um, and this was a community event, and that was a 3-0 in Keith's favor. Before then, they played in 2020, and uh, we don't even have to think about that yet. It's just not relevant at this point to competition. Point is, Keith, one of the best to be uh, doing it right now in this entire region, uh, knocked down to elimination side a little bit too soon, and now Malavan has a hell of an opponent to uh, try to take this over. Yeah, I do like the, the showcase of movement at the very beginning of the match here. Uh, it, like, sometimes it just kind of intimidates your opponent because you're like, wow, they are pressing buttons and they are moving fast. I am a little intimidated. And we'll see if Keith can uh, kind of keep that level up here to really make that intimidation, like, mean something. Okay, I like that. Catching that back, get the recovery. Bad spot here for Malavent, and that is going to be an early stock here. I guess it will. The ground pound to close that out, and Keith off to a very, very strong start. Yep, this is the uh, kind of a stock that I would have expected to see in the opening queue. And oh no, getting put into the Katoya Blend. Okay, finally uh, going one way, dodging another, and Keith was just going through the GCD light in an opposite direction, looking to initiate with the side light. What's happening now? Keith just backing off a little bit, able to catch all these landings, able to catch that dodge. You got no dodge. You have no dodge. You're done. You're done. You're done. That's what happens. In the beginning of a Katoya's combo like that, you lose your dodge. Okay, you get hit by that neutral light. You were just done at that point. Keith cleaned up that stock. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh. I, thought, <laughs> I thought we were going to see him carried off the top. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, okay. This is definitely a wake up call that you're at the top of the tournament right now. You are in the top echelon here because Keith is giving Malavent a wake up call saying, listen, I am different. I am him. <laughs> and you are going to learn one way or another. But we do see Malavent re not recover, but they do kind of get some footing back underneath them because man, this was just an absolute slobber knocker in one way. Yeah, it's a little bit brutal at the moment. Malavit now just struggling desperately to come back onto the stage. Keith just able to close it out with that little bit of a knockback, a little bit of push from the downer, and taking out that stock two to O. Okay, here's what happened. Katars are the kind of a weapon that basically asks you, hey, do you know your defensive options in certain moments? Do you know when you have a chance to dodge? And do you know which directions of dodges are really nice to alternate between? By dodging back down after you get popped up and you lose, you know, your early dodge, right? So you don't have a dodge for quite a bit of time after that. If a Katarist player has good execution, they're just able to react to it and they're able to punish it. That is the kind of a weapon that is just able to consistently kill you off stage, especially when that close to the right side of the stage. Three, so two, going forward, Malavan has to watch out for the dodges, especially in that weapon matchup. Mm -hmm. And I, immediate switch to a different character, which I think is the right play. Bringing the Koji out here. Uh, Koji, definitely a very popular character. So I feel like you you need to know how to fight against this dude because it, it's it's a very good counterfeit character too. I always see people bring him out when uh, they feel like they, you know this card this deck is stacked against him a little bit. Yeah, Keith is uh, cooking Malvin at the moment. I don't really know what other way to say it. Uh, every single initiation just leads into more damage. The Malavent still fighting back, looking to slide off, looking to get that down in. Didn't find it that time. Keith being nice and patient, looking to cover the platform a little bit too late with the neutral though. Okay, and light into the recovery. Didn't come out. Malavent wanted that closing with the GCN sig, um, but that is a fairly like precise hitbox to hit. It's not very generous horizontally, uh, especially at the tip of it. Ooh. Oh, yeah, he's definitely looking for a way to close this out here. And after a pretty good start from Malavent, okay. kind of keeps it going here, taking that first stock. This switch to Koji is definitely working out in his favor at the moment. I, I'm a big fan of this right now. The second of the couple comes out, and yes, that is going to be enough to KO. Keep still keeping this game as consistent and as even as possible, not taking too many hits, only just a little bit past the white at the moment. Okay, Keith just making it as difficult as possible for Malavin to pick up a weapon. Finally gets the bow. And now look at the change that we're seeing. Malavin is now just starting to like dodge up after getting hit by the neutral light, which is great because at that point, the only thing you really have to worry about is like, hey, they could possibly like uh, shark this with a recovery. These guys are playing the most dangerous game. <laughs> what? They are the 
the bravest individuals I have ever seen in my life. Both of them could have lost the stock on the right side of the stage. Oh, they were underneath it fighting. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, man. Nowhere is safe. Nowhere is safe. Ooh, can getting the down is really good angle on it, though. But still not able to follow up. Not able to consistently just get Keith and keep Keith off stage. Saito does come out, though. Oh, my goodness. Waited. Clung onto the wall. Nice and patient. And then was able to close it out with that GC side sig. I don't think that option was even in Malavin's, like, consideration of, like, hey, this is something I need to look out for. That is the first time that Keith has even established that as an edge guarding option. And it was incredibly successful. And there we go, evening it up. I, I, I am really loving this right now. Malavent is, because that first game, I was like, oh no, this is definitely the end of the run. But Malavent, with this character switch, this Koji, really waking up and just kind of showcasing, hey, listen, I belong up top here. I, like, I've got the stuff to do it. I just can't play Taros anymore because that dude's a little bit slow. <laughs> no! Getting pineapple, that's so unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, that's a little bit rough, getting stuck under the stage, not able to come back on with the recovery. And that is now going to be another game here going to Keith. Uh, currently up 2-0 to o against Malavent. This is going basically as projected bracket-wise. If I'm Malavent, I'm not really happy about this because it's like, hey, I made like a couple of upsets to get here. I'm in top 8 at the moment. Uh, and then my opponent uh, fairly early on is Keith. Um, so that's just pretty unfortunate. Uh, up 2-0, to o, Malavin has a lot of adjustments uh, they need to make going into this next game. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what? I, I like this as well. Uh, so we're going to see Malavin sticking with the Koji, which I think is the right call. But Keith is going to be switching over to the Asuri, which will also give them access to Sword. So I think there's going to be some decent counterplay, kind of, you know, not having to worry about the hammer. It's going to be quick hits all around. Uh, and, you know, Asuri is just like, she, she's quick. She's super quick, too. Her attacks are so fast. So I, I really want to see uh, what the difference in the gameplay is going to be here. Like, is Keith going to keep up the pressure like he was doing with Sentinel? Like, is he going to dial it back a little bit, go for more of a counterplay? Three, two, we'll see as we get into one, game three here. Uh, Malavin, you got to make something happen or you're done. Yeah, you could be done. You could be out of the tournament. And again, I see Keith. With the guitars, I'm getting a little bit nervous because you know exactly what happens when you just find one D-Light, when you just dash and you cut like one neutral light. Malavin is dodging down again. Oh, Keith. Oh, Keith is hunting for it. That is what happens. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. It's Keith time. <laughs> it is Keith time. I think this needs just like a moment just to like really think about that. Who that's like really settle in. Uh, I don't want to happen. Yeah, that's well, brutal. That's tough. You, your sock is gone. Keith now coming back in with a downer. Keith is just dealing so much damage to Malavent. If I'm Malavent, I am not happy. I am not happy about the way this is going. The thing that I love right now about Malavent, though, is like we've seen that like that entire game one was basically that first stock over and over again. But they are still not afraid to go out there and just get aggressive. And I think that's huge. That is that speaks volumes to, you know, the mentality of like, hey, I'm not scared. Like, yeah, I messed up, but like, I'll do it again. <laughs> I've got no fear. Okay, Malavit though, coming back in, able to still clean up that stock count, but look at the damage difference between the two. I'm curious to see how Keith is going to close it out. Malavit jumping in though, able to get that neutral light. Keith now getting some juggle started and looking just to cover the other platform. Um, you know, just going through the 50-50 of like, hey, I don't know where we're going to land. I'm just going to cover the space anyways. Sliding off, looking for these signatures as well. Malavit is just not having any of it. Okay. Oh, man, just looking for signatures left and right. Just trying to find a way to close out this stock. Just a little bit earlier than maybe usual. But getting back to the stage here, we got a sword fight going on. And honestly, either combo opener could potentially close this out. I think for Melvin, uh, they could definitely lose the stock. But they toss away their sword. I mean, they are a big fan of weapon tosses, so I get it. Look, Keith gets back onto the stage, and Keith is just going to press two more side signatures, and then eventually one of them is going to connect. That is what I feel like is going to happen. Well, alternatively, you just get in there, you get that D-Light, you get that side of, Um And now, once again, Keith has that lead. Malavin has quite a bit of damage to make up at this point, and Keith has already established what he can do off of a single Katar's downer. Oh, look at all that damage. Look at the position that you're in. And the... 
That was crazy. The GC side lights to get back on, and then comes out there with the ground pound, the D light into the down end. That was insane. GC side light with Katarus off stage. That was that was nuts. That was incredible. I didn't know he had a dodge. I didn't know that Keith had a dodge. I could honestly watch these two play the rest of the day. Like they they have no fear. <laughs> they are both going out there again and again. <laughs> Like, Valvin's just like, look, I know you've taken, like, all three of my stocks doing this, but I do not care. We do not care. I'm going right back out there. I'm not learning my lesson. Oh, man, that was that was nuts. I, lo I love that gameplay. I love it when people are just constantly aggressive, especially when you go into those high-risk scenarios and just trying to one-up each other. Oh, that's so yeah. beautiful, man. Oh, I love I, it. I didn't know that Keith had a dodge. If Keith had a dodge, a lot of people in that position, I mean, they would go through things like GC side sig, like sugar's like a nice mix-up option, or they would just dodge back onto the stage. GC side light with the Katarus was the perfect option because Keith had one last chance, one chance and only one tool, which was how do I use this dodge? I have this dodge opening. How do I get back onto the stage with it? Keith not only made it back onto the stage, got all of the tools back, but then was able to combo off of that GC side light into the KO. That last play was insane. And if I'm Malevent, I'm like, wow, yeah, I got kind of cooked, and that's okay because uh, that was that was a pretty cool way to uh, just initiate and come back. Heath yeah. is nuts. Heath is going to be moving out throughout the tournament now in elimination semifinals. Man, I, I am a, I've been a Keith fan since the first time I've watched them. Like they just they're so aggressive in the way that they're able to just kind of like put the pressure on. Again, that no fear attitude, just the way they play. I I, I love it. I love it. And honestly, I, I'm not I'm not being biased here. I, I it's not that I want Keith to win today or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be upset about it. But before we get to figure out whether or not Keith can even move forward, we're gonna get to another set on the other side of Elimination Quarterfinals. But before we go there, we're gonna take a quick break. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everybody. We are now in the second half of top six in elimination side of Southeast Asia. I am, of course, Duramco, coming to you live from the comforts of my own home with my lovely and incredible co-casting skip. We've just had a couple of crazy sets, uh, quite a few 3-0s. In fact, we've seen nothing but 3-0s so far on the street. Henry over Sphinx in one of his finals, that was a 3-0. One side of elimination, uh, Malevent over Laz, that was a 3-0. Keith over Malevent, that was another 3-0. And now, we're on the other side of elimination quarters as we're about to get into Le Plum going up against Tiger. Yeah, uh, let's hope this one's on a 3-0. <laughs> because a 3-0 is never a fun time for the person who loses. So, <laughs> But no, uh, listen, 3-0s, I mean, I, I'm never upset about that because uh, it usually just goes to show that one player is just being really dominant and just playing a, a very, very strong game. And I, I have no problem with that. Uh, it, it's not to say I want one person to get destroyed, but uh, it's cool if it happens. <laughs> So yeah, we'll um, see. Uh, Plum vs. Tiger getting in here. Looks like we're gonna be seeing uh, Koji from the Tiger and Tezka from Plum. So I'm excited to see how this one plays out. Yeah, first time we're seeing Boots on the stream. Um, I'm excited to see how Plum goes about it. These two have not actually fought each other in bracket before. Um, they have never necessarily crossed paths. Um, and they're also both a little bit newer into like this side of the top eight of things. So we're about to get started, everybody. In the trail of Yumi, let's get it. Koji, represented by Tiger Tesco, represented uh, by Three, Plum. Two, and we're about to get one, started with roll. game number one. All right, well, okay. <laughs> just immediately throwing hands, just taking stage control and then getting the sword. Oh, they were looking for a stock to get started immediately. That was just a crazy way to get started. Oh my. Okay, Tiger is now just going to be looking through that side light, looking through that down, and he doesn't find it. Looking to dodge. That was an interesting dodge from Plum. That dodge was basically saying, I'm going to mash him, um, and I'm just going to stall and delay a little bit. But already, extending off stage with that GC side saying, does not connect. Tiger extending off stage just by jumping out there and going through the ground pound as well. Both players looking pretty aggressive at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I, I love seeing that, but like at the same time, like you gotta be a little bit careful because both these characters are capable of huge punishes off stage. So it, it it's good to be aggressive because you can set the tone that way. But like the smallest mistake can really be costly. Look at, right. Oh, Plum is fishing. Plum is fishing. Does he three side lights? And oh, uh, uh, uh. Okay, cool, all the way off stage. Plum just able to secure the stock from below with that side of that angle, so nasty. Um, and now all of a sudden, Taegu has to be the one to try and get this KO somehow. Plum is off stage, doesn't get the downer though. Again, I have seen people complaining about Boots who cover it nonstop on Twitter, and Plum is giving Taegu something to complain about. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, the thing is, it's like, I, if something feels like it's too strong, but it looks cool, it gets a pass. Like that that's just how it works. And battle boots look cool. So I do not care. <laughs> but as we uh, continue to move forward here, we do see uh Tiger trying to battle back, but Plum, uh-oh, scary moment. Uh -oh. Ah, doesn't get the touch. Just a few pixels away from touching, but alas, Plum not gonna be able to touch back uh and get back on. I think Plum threw off Tiger with that. Yeah. I, I was thrown off by that. I was like, is, hey, is there like lag or something? And Tiger was like, oh, you know, I would love to respect my opponent here and try to figure out like what's going on. And then Plum immediately just started swinging afterwards. That was so funny. That was so funny. But it doesn't matter because Plum still loses the stock. Anyways, Tiger just taking out game number one. Um, that was that's, a skip. That's tough to get bodies. Yeah, that was, that was a taunt to get bodied. Yep, yeah. I was just about to say. <laughs> oh, I stole your thunder, my bad. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. I'm not upset. It's okay. Okay, yeah, you're not upset so, at all. <laughs> going into the next game here. Um, that, that game one was a little silly. It no was very silly. We are, we are seeing Plum switch off, though, into the bell. So we're seeing that Plum wants to... You know, stick with the gauntlets. Um, just looking to maybe hopefully get something started off stage early, looking through that new trailer, looking through that D light. Um, I feel like we haven't seen a lot of gauntlet D lights that last game. It was more than anything, like a lot of side lights, like really, really fishing. Looking to get started. Um, we'll see how this game goes. 
All right, well, right now, kind of just, you know, feeling it out here. We got a couple of bows, just, oh, no, that's a sword, excuse me. A couple of, uh, Oh, a sword and a bow. <laughs> it, it looked like a bow for some reason. I don't know why. But either way, yeah, it's, that's a lot of offstage action going on here. That could potentially be a stock. And yeah, that does get started for us here. Tiger uh, looking strong. Like I like that Plum is, you know, being aggressive. But it's starting to get a little bit costly here because I feel like you're trying to be, like, not necessarily disrespectful. But, like, stop you're... playing for the clip. That's what's yeah. going. I mean, they're, they're pressing forward on the controllers, or on the keyboards, and they're holding forward, and they are just ground pounding off stage. Guys, we need to unbun. Uh, we need we need to un, uh, unbind. Excuse me, collectively down and you heavy button. Please, you do not need it. You don't always have to go off stage. Ugh, but they want to. They're not gonna stop. Uh, I don't want them to stop. Uh, I, you you need to go off stage. You need to every time. You need the clip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but as we continue to push forward here, we do see the stock get evened up by Plum. And again, <laughs> the taunt coming out once more. The last time that happened, you lost the stock and you lost the game. So you might want to dial that back just a little bit. Plum going off stage again. Do that down. Is not going to be able to find uh, that stock quite yet, though. Taigu now initiating a little bit. Just keeping him back. Getting so many different hits in. Going off stage being patient this time just by staying on the stage. I like seeing Taigu stay on the stage. That makes me nice and happy. Um, but Plum does get back on after Taigu ends up tossing out the weapon, whiffing that GC sidelight, and getting punished for it. Ooh, okay. I like that. Just getting a little bit of extra damage right there just because of the, the lackadaisical kind of recovery to the stage. He's being a little too high. So, you know, nothing crazy, but you, you give him a little bit of, little bit of damage, kind of let him know, hey, you're not going to be able to do this for free. Uh, but the other side of that is that Tiger still has a lead here, and after that game one, <laughs> that punishment and that final stock, uh, you're kind of just feeling comfortable here. You're not really having to push harder than you really need to. You just kind of let Plum just continue to hold forward, like you said, and just get these punishes one right after the other. He's backing off a little bit, looking to catch the landing. That's what Bo does exceptionally well, by the way, especially using something like Blue Light. Um, it can make it so difficult for you to get back to the ground, but that is going to be the ground pound now, and that is going to be the stock plum, keeping it as even as possible at the moment. Tagu backing off a little bit. Tagu backing off, just looking through Plum to touch. But I love the fact that Plum jumped in and didn't press about an immediate, as Tagu was basically baiting him to do. Nope. Whoa, okay. Dodging back after that, that is so smart. Plum repositioned himself so well though, but then just about out of resources, able to still touch the stage, able to still make it back down. Plum is making this comeback. Dude, Plum just got a little too aggressive there. I think at the point you probably should have gone for that weapon toss, grabbed that other weapon. I mean, Granny, you're not doing too bad right now, but okay, you got your gauntlets back. Thank goodness. I thought they weren't going to be able to get, you know, get that weapon back before uh, they would disappear. Right now, a little bit scary. Gets that hit, sends him off stage, and I don't know. Plum's in a really dangerous spot, Dara. I don't know what that GC side sig was. I'm not personally too enthused about it, but okay. Getting the chase dodge in. Plum is going off stage here, but doesn't actually fully commit to the bit. Doesn't go through the GC side light. Doesn't go through the GC down light off stage. Tiger looking through the side now. Steps it out. Yes, it will. Just about at that damage. Enough knockback to be able to close it out. Uh, Tiger is now up 2 to 0. Oh. Yeah, Tiger's uh, sitting pretty. <laughs> Just to say the least. And I, I don't even think it's entirely just like, I'm not trying to take away from Tiger, but I don't think it's even just entirely Tiger being that dominant. I feel like Plum is being that aggressive and Tiger's just getting these strong Three, punishes two, off of one, brawl. Indeed. So going into game three now, we're going to see what happens. This might just be another 3-0. We might just have four consecutive 3-0 sets back to back to back. You picking up the bow again, getting Plum off stage, getting Plum into the corner, and Plum has now just been struggling to land. Mm -hmm. There we go. They do finally get some footing on the ground, sword in hand, trying to get some strong hits to get something started here. But again, man, Tiger's just really good at just escaping and then getting a couple like counter hits. Uh, but right now, okay, Plum, do it so okay. Plum's gets that neutral end. 
Kagu just backing off a little bit now. Slugged in hand, jumping in, though, gets that neutral again and again and again. Plum getting punished. Ooh, such aggressive options here, especially that GC sidelight. Kagu just being nice and patient, spacing out that D light. Plum does make it back on, though. And now Plum is going to be the one poised to take the stock and then jumps out there for the ground pound. Okay. Um yeah, I love that Punisher getting the sync to kind of create so much space for yourself and then take control of the stage. But not for long, though. Tiger barely surviving on that. Okay, we do see Plum close out that stock. Thank goodness. I think this might be like, I don't know if this is their first lead of the set, but <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter now because it's completely even. It was past tense. Um, that was indeed the lead. So at the moment, Taigu, I feel like Taigu just still has all the momentum at this point. Just getting some huge follow-ups once getting looking for that GC sync, just looking for any way to possibly extend. Plum is off stage, has to eat that side of taking the sweet old time, making it back on, and Taigu is just looking to spike Plum over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Yep, getting that stage control. And now we got a sword fight coming out once more. And Tiger just doing a great job of just kind of really getting these strong hits and then creating space for themselves again to just allow Plum to be aggressive like they've been doing all set. Okay, not able to get the good punish on that D-Light. Plum just dodging back onto the stage here, but then immediately dives back off. Plum wants these edge guards so badly that Plum keeps putting himself off stage for them. You don't always have to close the stock by pressing your side so you don't always have to close your stock by jumping out there and going for the ground pound and him has gotten punished plenty for it um we'll see what happens now just looking for the side light looking just to put tiger into that mix-up situation this isn't looking good for plum yeah it's definitely looking a little bit rough here and i mean i think that's just kind of been the the name of the game this entire set is that things just haven't looked good for plum even when they're getting like a nice combo start they're racking up some damage they took a small lead at the beginning here it's just Tiger finds a way. It, it doesn't matter what happens. doesn't matter how many hits you get on him, how many stocks you take from him. Tiger will find a way to turn this around and just be able to take this game. And right now, it's just one more stock to take the set. And that would be another 3-0 for us today, Dara. But Plum is just slowly working just to find any kind of openings whatsoever at this point. Stuck in a corner, looking for the downer, looking for the side, and just looking to close this on Tiger if possible. Whiffing a signature like that, yeah, he's oh, definitely no. gonna get whiff punished for it. Still has a dodge though, still uses the dodge to make it back on. Plum is pressing buttons right now. Plum is just looking for anything to close. The recovery does it though. Hmm. Here we go, got the gauntlets in play here for your potential last run. You really gotta make this one count. I mean, you're already in the red, so that's not a good spot. You're gonna be able to survive for just a little bit longer but this dark red is really starting to to show itself here honestly you just gotta sneeze on him tiger and you're pretty much good being nice and patient just waiting right, tiger is not rushing to get this ko or anything T uh, plum has now just been consistently dodging but hey you're up against gauntlets you're up against gauntlets anything can happen at any moment plum wanted that final neutral almost just took him and shoved him back down to the blast zone that neutral does not do it tiger the neutral light that doesn't do it either plum just able to jump over the weapon toss touching the stage slowing down the pace of the game tiger looking for these final hits before Plum is just able to pull one uh, out of nowhere. Uh, dude, okay, you know what? I, I got a hand at the Plum because I thought this was basically a game over, but they are battling back uh, something fierce. And of course I said something and he immediately loses the stock. I'm so sorry, Plum. But man, Tiger, woo! Yeah, that's a neutral light. He whiffed that soil neutral light. And then, I mean, like after like neutral lights, like you can typically like act uh fairly quickly but it's just that active of a button that when you press it you are basically just committed to standing in place you are giving your opponent ample time to say hey you're swinging your sword you're stuck in this animation i'm just gonna get behind you i'm gonna get a new blind spot and then i'm gonna be able to ko you for it so that last commitment was not an amazing one on plum's behalf it ultimately led to his demise and that means that we've had another consecutive 3-0 oh, over and over again these matches are quick everybody's just trying to get in and out um and now everybody that means that we have our top four filled out on uh in the grand final side of things is him we sitting winners uh winning side of grand finals nice and comfortable elimination semifinals just got filled up uh that's going to be now keith 
going up against Taigu and sitting in elimination finals is going to be Sphinx. So the, that's who final four flew today. Himwi, Sphinx, Keith, and Taigu. And now it's going to, um, we'll just see how everything falls into place. We'll see who's going to be able to take it all today. We'll see who gets knocked out now. Um, things are getting pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, and our next set coming up here, like you mentioned, is going to be Keith versus Tiger. And I feel like this is just like Keith, the unstoppable force versus Tiger, the immovable mm -hmm. object. Because like the way that Tiger kind of weaves in and out allows you to get aggressive so they can get a strong punish game, uh, which we just saw absolutely showcase against Plum the entire time was literally just like a masterpiece. But the way that Keith plays, like from what we saw from their match, it's just like, hey, listen, he, he's gonna find a way, he's gonna get in, he's gonna put down the hurt. So like, I honestly can't call this one way or another. It's, it's really just gonna be a game of execution and just trying to see like, who can get the one up on the other. Uh, I, I can't call this either way. I can I, call it's it. Just... It's going to be Keith. It's going to be <laughs> in, in, all of the stats uh, and past history. The way that Keith has been playing today has been actually pointing towards Keith. I mean, I would love to be wrong on that, but that is that is the current narrative, right? That this is the person that is the, um, Three, two, you know, second one, in all of South Asia at the moment. Taigu, I believe, is 14. The last time these two played uh, was at a community event, and that was a 3-1 in Keith's favor. They played at the Spring Championships in 2023, and that was a double elimination uh, from Keith both times. So if Taigu gets this win, that will be the first time in any recent history since 2021 that he would have taken a game or a set uh, from uh, from Keith. Well, I'll give Tiger the benefit of the doubt and say they can find a way here, but it's not really a, a good look as we're looking at this game one. As uh, Keith closes out that first knock pretty, pretty well, pretty single-handedly. So, uh, honestly, it, yeah, you might be right. I love being good more than anything. Oh, and once again, <laughs> dodging death. I don't know what it is, but uh, people have been getting punished left and right through like dodging death through they get hit by like Katari's like neutral light. And Keith is just resetting so well. Keith is hitting things like neutral light. Keith is hitting things like down in and is intentionally waiting and not doing anything, right? He's not going through any immediate follow-ups because he wants to punish that dodge and he wants to KO you for it. As we continue to push forward here though, Tiger's trying to find a way to battle back. We got that bow in hand. You know, they utilized that bow very well against Plum in the last set here, but keep the hammer. This movement is beautiful. It's so crisp. It is so intimidating too. Oh my. <laughs> okay, you know what, Dar? Maybe, maybe you were right. All right, maybe. maybe. Maybe you were right. I'll, I'll let you have it. <laughs> yeah, Keith, I mean, Keith is playing really well right now. Um, Keith is, Keith is just well. looking for the side light, gets a neutral light, and then immediately goes for the follow-up that time instead of waiting. Um, Taigu is a little bit more hesitant to just dodge that time around, just taking quite a few hits. The D light into the side who does come out, though, but the question is, is it too late? Taigu is on the last stock at the moment. Keith still has two stocks, sliding off with that neutral light, just holding onto the stage here. Taigu... Oh my god, getting mixed up by that D-Sig. Just not expecting it at all. Goes for it three times. Keith, Keith, please stop. Cut it out. Keith is just flexing at this point. I, I feel like Keith just knows, like, they're like he's like, hey, listen, I, I feel like I am better than everybody in my path, and I'm just going to play like it. As you can see right here, uh, a strong two-stock. And man, you know, it, it really kind of puts into perspective about how big of an upset this must have been for Sphinx earlier because Keith is playing like an absolute monster. So it, it just makes me wonder what was Sphinx able to do that just put them in a position that they were now in, you know, elimination uh, finals. It, it, it's just, it's, it's making me think mm -hmm. it's racking my brain. Yeah, I would be able to tell you. That's a really good point. I would be curious to see like how that happened. That wasn't on screen. Um, well, how players do this thing where they have like a lead or they think they're better than somebody or they're just like, I want to feel something. And they're just going to press like the same move like three, four, five times in a row. Yeah. Uh, that's what happened that last stock. Keith was like, yeah, I have a two to one stock lead. There is nothing that you can do right now to take this away from me. And you didn't expect the first desync. You're not going to expect me pressing it twice. You're not going to expect me pressing it a third time. You're not going to expect me going for the GC side six to catch you uh, landing all the way back down. 
Um, some may call that spamming. I will call that Keith has earned the right to do so. He's built himself up enough of a lead uh, that he can just get away with it. And that's the beauty of having a lead. So going into the next game, we're going to be seeing Taigu on the bin now. Um, man, Keith with these katars. Keith with these katars is a menace. His movement has just been incredible. Crisp. Three, two, Crisp is, the, one, is what exactly four. I would call it. But yeah, we are seeing this switch now from Tiger. I mean, I, it's kind of like a needed switch. Like, like I've got to get something else going here. I've got to see what else I can, you know, get revved up. And the axe doing all right to get started. Yeah, getting a couple of hits in a much better start this time around. Um, then game number one, I'm curious to see how Taigu is going to be able to make this back. But look at Keith's follow-ups. Again, just being so creative with these weapon tosses and now, um, you know, what, not necessarily having a weapon on hand, but still with the Taigu is so menacing. I mean, yeah, that's just kind of the name of the game. It's just, uh, just being dominant at the beginning and just making your opponent feel nervous. <laughs> I thought we are going to see like three more of those. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we do. That dash back into the like aggression just like really just mixed up tiger uh but this brin i think is the right play at the moment they do take a a little bit of a lead you know so having to switch up into uh spear and axe maybe what they needed you get a little bit more reach you're not as involved in the gameplay like you're not as like in uh keith's face but that's probably only gonna last for so long and it is and man keith you know sometimes people get sent to elimination side and they just start playing better maybe that's what we're seeing I just have to see, but already initiating with that side light, coming in there, gets that neutral light, and into the neutral light as well, holding back onto the stage. Okay, Tiger, I don't know why we were pressing a side zip across the stage, but uh, I would say that they're quite lucky that Keith did not have a bigger punish waiting for them at the moment, so uh, definitely got off a little bit then. And now, okay, that's gonna be another neutral light, just waiting for the dodge back down. Tiger has basically stopped dodging back down um, after getting hit by that Katara neutral light. Oh, okay. I like that empty jump. Just kind of like waiting to see what Tiger's going to do. Granted, they didn't press any button. They didn't get a punish here. But like, that is just something that's going to sit in Tiger's head. Like later on, it's like, okay, he just did this. I'm probably going to have to try and press a button just to see if I can get a counter hit out of that. But as you can see, Keith already taking that next stock. D D Tiger just sitting at the edge. Just like, what do I do? And look, he's inviting him. Hey, come get this weapon. <laughs> Come get it, and you will get punished for it, trying to make a jump for it. Okay, that's two recoveries. And again, going through that, that same, like, GC side sync. Doesn't connect at that time around, though. Just backing up a little bit. Side light into the neutral light. Keith is dealing a lot of damage off the Taigu. How do you make it back to the point? Oh, man, I have no idea. Uh, but, I mean, for one, <laughs> like, <laughs> probably another character switch. You're not going to make it back at that point in game two, but game three... Yeah, you do need something a little bit different. Like, you started off nice, you got that first stock, and then Keith is just like, all right, I realize I need to just change up a few things, tweak a few things, and then I just start dominating the game again like I was the game before. Uh, and yeah. here we are, one more character switch. We're going to see the fin come out to play. So you will keep the axe, but then you kind of bring the sword back. So maybe that's the balance they need. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Keith is just playing so, so good. Yeah, Taigu is now going to be on the Jala, aka the Finn, now with an axe and a sword on hand. Hopefully just a couple of more consistent weapons. Hopefully the axe to put on some damage. Hopefully the sword um, to get a couple of KOs. But, I mean, we're just Three, really two, seeing Keith a certain, one, uh, a certain level of dominance with the Katarus on hand. Just winning so many of the different interactions, leading and punishing Taigu with defensive options. Um, but already, a really nice opening for Taigu. Quite a few big hits. My goodness. <laughs> There we go. Finally gets a weapon in hand. I mean, Tiger definitely started off hot, but man, it's just like once Keith gets a hammer or the guitars, you know. Wow, that was almost a very early stock. Wow. And yet, just continues to put out this pressure. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just going to say Tiger is jumping in the Keith. Oh, once again, closing out with that side sync. Keith has been making Sentinel side sync work for him. And Tiger has just not really anticipated it at high, um, you know, sort of like damage points in the game. That is going to be the KO as well. Tiger now just playing better than before, keeping himself, um, you know, just as even as possible here, making sure that Keith doesn't build up too big of a lead. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Uh. 
This is getting so... Oh, it's Tiger. Like, listen, I appreciate the aggression, but please just get back to the stage. And he does. Tries to find a way to kind of keep that uh, stage control. But man, <laughs> Keith is just finding their way through. These guitars are just so insane. Gets that side leg, gets that neutral light, and Taigu this time just dodges up and out of there. Make sure that he doesn't get put into the blender. The stage spike with the side is, and the weapon toss was just enough to close it out. Taigu did not get that dodge back up until the very end, and by that point, he was down a little bit too low. All of a sudden, Keith has once again a big lead and is looking to initiate. Down and side lights galore. Uh, this is just terrifying, man. Keith is just, he is a man on a mission. And that mission is winning this entire bracket today. And so far, I mean, I, I believe that that could very well be the case. But looks like we might have another 3-0 in the books today, Tara, as we uh, continue to push forward. Okay, keeps that stock alive. Oh, wow. he is so lucky. Yeah, that dodge <laughs> came back. Just touched the very edge of the stage thing, but it does not matter because still, Taiku did a good job of cleaning up that stock. They won 2-1 right now. Um, Taiku can do this. Yeah, Tiger can't do this, but like, <laughs> my belief is is not very high, and that has nothing to do with Tiger. It just has to do with Keith. As long as Keith is on stage, as long as Keith has some sort of weapon, I mean, even the hammer. But the guitars, like, it's like game over at that point, right? But the weapon gets knocked off. Here. Oh my God! Able to get that catch, Tiger picking up the sword again. Keith took. So many different hits, still being denied from picking up another weapon. And Taigu, a little bit too hungry for that KO. Keith was able to pick up the guitars. The D-Light into the side who comes out. And Taigu said, hey, that's enough three O's for today. I'm at least going to take out one game here. Really good stuff. Really good job just denying Keith from getting back onto the stage over and over. I loved Taigu's sword gameplay that time around. He had his basic follow-ups down, but the thing that he did best was just keep Keith out. Yeah, that's definitely huge. And... And, you know, I guess Finn is that kind of mix-up. But, listen, I'm glad that that mm -hmm. Tiger got a game because this was almost a 10-minute set. Like, that is how fast these first couple games went uh, because Three, Keith two, was just one, killing it. Four. But it seems like Tiger has found some sort of answer. However, I'm not going to count Keith out because, like, he's still got plenty of time to make adaptations. Like, if this is to go to a game five, that's two games worth of data that Keith has to work with. But... I mean, you still got to execute. And maybe he's, like, going to dial back in. Maybe he was messing around a little bit that last game. Uh, but let's see what happens. Taigu just, again, really good spacing. Just playing second beat. This is what it's called, second beat. Like, you're not the one that's initiating. You're waiting for somebody else to press something. And then you're playing reactively. Taigu cleaning up that fully stock. And now with a... In that is a comfortable lead. That is a comfortable lead if I've ever seen one. Keith is looking a little lost for now on how to actually approach against the sword. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw a character switch from Keith earlier. I mean, I'm not going to say, you know, he needs to make a character switch right now. We still have the whole game to go through. And there we go. Closes out that stock, taking minimal damage as well. It's not as as well as, you know, coming back, clean stock, taking, uh, taking the stock right back immediately. But this really is not that bad either. Jumping in there, such an aggressive opening there just to come in with the neutral but doesn't find much else off of it. But finally finding a couple of recoveries, finding a couple of downers, and Taigu, really good neutral is just a get off me option, right? Because he wanted that edge guard and it was denied from doing so. Okay. That's a little bit of a scary spot here. You have to deal with these guitars just racking up damage very fast. What an aggressive burst option there. Taking the stock. My goodness, Keith. That was so fast. That was so crazy. The final side of that angle is just so funny. It's just, it's nasty. It's so difficult to actually come back after getting hit by that move. Um, but now at the moment, Keith is just, uh, just dealing so much damage once again, getting that side light. Taigu finally just able to swat him away for a temporary amount of time. But you're going hit for hit right now when you have a deficit. And if you go hit for hit when you have a deficit, you're just going to end up uh, running out of pawns. You're gonna be the one that ends up losing that game. Keith, getting that side light, getting that end light, dealing so much damage. Oh, okay. Okay, some great damage to kind of rack up the damage on the stock. And Keith, wow. I I couldn't really get a thought form because Keith was just going insane. These guitars in his hand, that's a different beast altogether. What is that? Yeah. Man? 
he he bites and he doesn't let go. He just really keeps up the pressure super well. He's making sure that he's like constantly on top of the defensive options. He's constantly like alternating the things that he's going for. He's mixing up between um, immediate follow-ups and then of course sometimes, you know, hitting something and then just waiting. Sometimes if your opponent is always mashing out an immediate defensive option, all you have to do is wait um, and punish them. What I really like that Tiger was starting to do at the end of game three and into game four, um, Tiger was getting a little bit more patient coming back onto the stage, especially with Sword on hand. And then when it actually came to uh, the neutral game between the two of them, Tiger kept uh, Keith like out. Um, especially like that game three, it seemed like Keith could not find that opening. Uh, but then as soon as Keith does find the opening, he does lap Taigu uh, in terms of damage pretty significantly. Every single downer that he connects, every single sider that he connects with guitars, it always leads into at least one more hit, typically two to three other hits. Um, his advantage state was just pretty incredible and it was difficult for Taigu to keep up with. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're 100% on all of those, man. It's just... Keith is just playing like a man possessed and you know, it's probably partly due to the fact uh, of their next opponent the person who sent them to the elimination side to begin with and while I'm mm -hmm. very excited to, to get right into the set We are gonna take a quick break. So don't go anywhere because this is about to get hot
I hope you guys haven't left your seats. And if you did, I hope you're coming right back because we are getting into our top three of Southeast Asia Brawlhalla for the Trials of Ymir 2024. I am excited. If you have not uh, been paying attention or if you're just tuning in, I'm Skiff. With me is Dara. Dara, how are we feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. I am excited about this upcoming match. Um, so this upcoming match is going to be Keith going up against Sphinx in um, the elimination finals. So Sphinx was the one that um, uh, ended up knocking Keith into elimination side to begin with in a fairly unprecedented upset. Um, and that would be a little bit surprising if you were also taking a look at the way that Keith is playing today. Keith is aggressive. Keith's movement is pretty incredible, especially on the Qataris. We don't know what happened back on one of the side because that was not a set that was streamed. Um, but now these two are going to have a run back. So is this going to be the double elimination? Is this where Keith uh, just gets knocked out and then has to take home a very respectable third place. I would actually say, I don't know what happened on winning side. I can only judge Keith by the way that they were playing it now. I think this is going to be Keith's set moving into this. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hope so. Cause I, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm a big Keith fan. I love the way they play. I love the aggression, but like, I'm really interested to see what Sphinx did to push Keith to the limit. Mm. And like, it'll send them down here in the first place. Uh, so we're gonna see what happens. Looks like we're gonna be locking in that Val, which uh, mm -hmm. I believe we saw them play earlier as well. Uh, I can't tell right now. <laughs> but here we go, get into this. And obviously we're seeing Sentinel locked in here for Keith. And uh, man, this Sentinel, <laughs> he is yeah, going Sentinel's crazy. Yeah, uh, Keith has just been making the most out of Sentinel's side sig. And then also we have to talk about Sentinel's survivability. I mean, you have that really high like defense that um, you're going to just be on screen. You're going to be on the stage for quite some time. And especially because Keith has been using a weapon like Katari's, you don't really necessarily always need like super like traditional like high force uh, to get KOs. Sometimes you can just drag people down with you all the way to Three, the bottom blast zone. So one, everybody, one. let's get excited. Let's get a little bit of energy. Elimination finals of the first tournament of the new year. As soon as I started to, oh, Sphinx, they're gonna restart the one time I try to hype this up. <laughs> uh, isn't it great, Dara? Isn't it great? Uh, I wonder if it was I like I jinxed a, myself. I wonder if it's like a, um, a wrong stage. Is that potentially what was going on here? I was so excited. I was like, yeah, no elimination files. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We'll take your time. That's okay. At the player's pace, I suppose. May have been the wrong stage. I don't know quite yet. They're getting into the bands. So sorry about that false start. We're about to get started um, in just a moment's time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, really, Keith is like such an aggressive player that you have to know, hey, I know the boost changes. Um, am I going to be able to effectively p uh, play back and with punish you? Right, if that's going to be the dynamic of like the cat and the mouse, um, and Keith is the one that is constantly approaching, will Sphinx with the Val, especially when you have a sword on hand, you can play defensively. You can play at that mid range, just sort of wait out and space, uh, especially with things like your D light. You can space out with your side, Three, and, or two, Keith can one, find that opening four. and completely just demolish your stocks just by finding a single Katari down here, by finding a single Katari neutral light. All right. Uh, not entirely sure what the reset was about, but you know what? I'm not gonna tread on that too much. I'm ready to just get right into this game. And as you can see, Keith just keeping up that aggression that we saw from earlier, putting on some solid damage, but Sphinx also answering back with these gauntlets. Putting that down in, Sphinx just able to get a little whip punish, finds that down in, but then that was a bit of an awkward interaction. Keith ended up slipping off stage into full multi hits of the down who did not connect. Um, goes for the side light, doesn't get a follow up after. They're just going blow through blow right now. Okay, there we go. Diving in, putting on some solid damage. Trying to get these guitars working basically overtime at this point with the way that they've been playing all day today. Ooh, that was an option. And what a reversal there. I feel like Sphinx should have had that stock lined up. But, I mean, Keith has just, you know, got the aggressive end on the other side of it. Oh, whoa! Sentinel, baby. Olay! Lived and survived uh, that, that recovery. 
and just was able to make it back down and then just found a ground pound of his own. You can keep cleaning up that blue stock, but now just a couple of hits away, um, especially, you know, if Sphinx picks up a sword or maybe the gauntlets at this point, you get a single D light, that's gonna be the stock, right? You get a side light, you put them into a mix-up situation. Well, alternatively, Keith is just able to hunt down your dodge, gets that Katana neutral out. He's putting on a lot of extra credit at this point. Right. Okay, finds a way back down to the stage. <laughs> Tries to throw some fisticuffs with no weapon. <laughs> All right, I mean, you had a weapon right above you. I'm, I'm not sure what the thought process was, but you know what? I'll, I'll let Keith rock, man. He, he knows what he's been doing. He's been doing really well all day today. But now we got that hammer coming out. So after seeing Katara's versus Gauntlets, we got hammer versus sword. Uh, let's see how this works for Keith. See if they can find a way to answer back after losing that last stock. Just spacing out with the hammer, being nice and patient, nice and slow, coming back onto the stage. Sphinx, you have to be so careful when it comes to actually educating hammer, because as you may know, you get hit by that Ukabu, and then you just get popped all the way back down. Finds that neutral light. Ooh, bit of a commitment. Keith doesn't find the whip punish with the Ukabu in time, ends up misspacing it. Looking through the D light, looking just to catch this landing. Okay, is that gonna be it? Not quite. Just good damage. Yeah, good damage as we see. Keith find a way back to the stage at least for now I mean they are in a little bit of that danger zone yep there goes that stock man that red and that used that recovery to kind of close out that stock there uh Sphinx is just doing a really good job of containing Keith really Keith just looking to pick up this hammer now. Um, just going in, initiating with that weapon toss. I feel like Keith has not been allowed to stay on Katara's for too long, but what a follow-up. Able to get the D-Light into the side of Sphinx down a little bit too low. That is just hammer sometimes. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you just have a lead like that, Keith was just able to pull it away at a moment's notice. Yep. And now we're right on the Katars, which is actually what Keith wants here to rack up some fast damage. And they get a little bit going there. Now potentially taking the lead on that one. I'm not entirely sure these two are really close in terms of damage at the Ooh. moment. And yeah, they're just trading shots back and forth, are. Yeah, that was really dangerous to fix the moment. Luckily, does move back on. Gets that end light. Gets that neutral light now. Coming back in with the down. Keith is not finding any really long extended strings or anything. They're just going hit to hit at this point. But then again, just catching that dodge. Keith has just been going for like a really simple neutral to catch anybody's dodge after getting hit by the end light. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, has put on a lot of good damage. But now at this point, this can be anybody's stock. Ooh, okay, there we go. Gets that stage control again. Keith, that was an option. You almost lost the game for it. <laughs> like, you gotta settle down just a little bit. Now just being a little bit scared, just dodging in the air occasionally. The end light does end up connecting. That's going to not be it still. Holding onto the stock, picking up the hammer, and now fishing for that daylight, looking for that neutral. It's going to take anything. It just takes one hit from hammer, is what I would say. <laughs> Actually, never mind. Great recovery, Dara. But can't say too much about Sphinx there as uh, they get sent to the blast zone. For that last stock, game one, now going into Keith's favor. And if we look back last time, Sphinx took game one and then they traded games back and forth. Maybe we get the same thing happening here. You know, just going in the opposite direction. I wouldn't be surprised if we go into game five because I feel like everyone so far in terms of the elimination bracket, Sphinx has done the best containing Keith's like burst of damage. Just the, the crazy like combos they've been putting out and just closing out these stocks. Sphinx is doing a really good job containing that and playing their own game. Indeed. This was also the closest game that we've like had so far because I feel like up until now, I mean, we saw consecutively quite a bit of 3 O's. Uh, we had like 1-3-1 one, one, and that first game between Sphinx and Keith was just the most competitive one so far. Like we did not know who was going to take it up until like the very last moment. Yeah. Um, it seems like Keith is rejoining the lobby. I know there were some complaints of perhaps like some connection issues and lag issues uh, the last time that Sphinx, I believe, was playing up against Himwe. Uh, I know that definitely came into play, so maybe a little new connection, um, and then we'll just get back into it. Mm. Well, hopefully uh, we don't have too many more issues moving forward, because uh, you never, it, I mean, it's kind of the one thing about playing online games is just that, like, especially when it comes to, like, fighting games, like, so many things are so precise that, like, the smallest, the smallest change in like a delay or, or anything like that can really mess up the flow of an entire like
combo or just a game in general. So we can hope for the best possible connection. I hope that's what's going to happen here the rest of the way. So uh, we'll definitely see. We'll just have to see. That's good. So we'll uh, be waiting for them to jump back in. Keith is now finding uh, themselves get back into the lobby. Um, so that game was interesting because I feel like, you know, in, in the last few uh, games that we've been watching Keith play, you know, the last few sets, um, we didn't see that much Hamu action. Um, and now we're seeing that Hamu come into play a little bit more, uh, going up against Sphinx. And Keith, <sighs> there is a certain difficulty, I guess, like with Hamu innately, like you can't get as long of shootings as you can with guitars. Um, Keith wasn't really finding a whole lot of like ciders as it is, was struggling to KO a little bit at the end. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen this, uh, this next game. Well, you don't have to be curious much longer because we're getting right into it here on Miami Dome. And we'll see how this plays out. We do see Sphinx get the first weapon here. Sword in play. Oh, we also see Keith get those Katars. And man, these Katars have just been lethal for so many today. Looking through the sidelight. Ends up whiffing it and just eats a neutral light foil. Not too big of a punishment at the moment quite yet. Keith is Keith is now getting a little bit hungry initiating with these side lights. In neutral when both of them are just like sitting on the ground. Uh, Sphinx has just been sort of jumping up um, and not really getting hit by quite a few of those. But finally, that's going to be the follow-up. Gets that neutral as a finisher. Keith is putting on good damage. Nope. Keith! <laughs> you gotta be careful. That's actually twice now, though. That we've seen that exact play happen, and Sphinx was not able to punish. Uh, that's just kind of leaving Keith to, to be aggressive and just get back to stage for free. You can't keep doing that, and that's nice. a stock to get started. Woo! Yeah, that was really good. Um, Sphinx was basically out of options at that point. Keith just hugged the stage, waited for the down and waited for the option. And then just because of how big hammer recovery is, I mean, you can just cover a lot of space quickly. Keith still holding on to the stock. Sphinx is going to need another D-Light. Sphinx is going to need another Cider if they hope to at least even this one back up. Connects that side light. Keith has been dodging down. Sphinx is able to hunt it down that time. Was able to connect it. Really good follow-up. Mm -hmm. Now we just gotta see if he can get a weapon here. Oh man, Sphinx off to the hot start there with the gauntlets, trying to put on some solid damage, chasing him down. Fortunately, Keith is gonna get that weapon, the hammer coming into play, but the gauntlets just continuing to put the punishment here, man. Just looking to initiate with some of these side lights. Doesn't fight it quite yet. Sphinx is juggling. Sphinx is making it really difficult for Keith to be able to just get back down. Just saying, hey, I need a little bit of space. Please just get away from me for just a moment. But now picking up yet another set of gauntlets here. What's it gonna be? Keith, I think let's get that D-Light. You need that D-Light if you wanna get those follow-ups and that's gonna be Sphinx cleaning it up with that side sick. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I wanna see for an answer back from Sphinx. You know, that game one really came down to the wire here and this one could also do the same. Oh my God, dude. Keith's movement there was impeccable. Just weaving in and out finding a way to those weapons, getting those guitars, and just starting to rack up that damage. That was insane. That was so beautiful. Keith right now just needs any way to close at this point. He needs that recovery. He needs that offstage down. He needs that side out. He needs something. Because right now, Sphinx is just slowly chipping away at this and building a bigger and better than for themselves. <laughs> okay. Gets that hammer in play now. Gonna be looking to try and close out the stock. And we know... One hit could be all it takes. And now, even game. A little bit of a damage difference, but you got these guitars in hand. You could really find a way to even this up and even take the lead off one hit. But, oh, Sphinx getting those gauntlets started. Racking up a little bit of damage for themselves as well. That's that side light. Looking for the recovery as an immediate punish, but Keith just ended up jumping away and to safety. That's just side light. Side light's always going to be that 50 fit. It's always going to just put you into that mix up game. Started something off stage with the down and doesn't end up fully finishing it though as Sphinx finds his way safely back onto the stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice damage. Get started up here. Jumping around. Just trying to find a way in. Sphinx is getting onesies, twosies, but. Nothing too much anymore. I feel like Keith's uh, movement is just a little too elusive here. Gets that neutral light, waits a little bit, but then um, just ends up recovering and whiffing. Looking for the dodge punish though. 
Holding back onto the ground, looking for the side, just punishing some of these side lights. You have to be careful to not overcommit to those gauntlet side lights. But then Sphinx with the jump call out. That was good. That was incredible. Sphinx put himself out there. Sphinx put himself off stage and was just like, okay, I'm gonna go for the lead. You're gonna jump here. Great, I will cover you with your name on it. That was incredible. Um, yeah, Keith was basically in a position where it's like, hey, you either go above this or you go below this. If you go below gauntlets, you're always afraid of eating a side early. You're always afraid of eating something like a downer. If you go above gauntlets, they have, of course, that recovery um, just to be able to take it off the top. So um, one to one, once again, this is the most competitive mashup between two players that we've had all stream thus far. Uh, we are getting a character switch from Keith. Uh, going to the Jayun. Interesting. Uh, both two very different <laughs> weapons here with sword and great sword. Dar, how do you feel about this, especially going against Val? Yeah, I've seen Keith play uh, Jayun quite a bit before. Um, I was actually curious why Kate, uh, Keith wasn't really opting for it up until now. Um, so we're going to be seeing some Great Sword action. This is going to be pretty exciting. Three, two, um, one, great Sword can sometimes just have a ridiculous damage output, but sometimes you can also struggle with initiating with it because you don't really have the privilege of pressing a lot of ground and moves here. Um, I'm curious to see, like, I need a little bit of a refresher on, like, how Keith plays Great Sword stylistically. We'll just have to find out, but at the moment, only a Sword on hand. Sphinx, though, coming back up, looking for the down and follow-up from the neutral who doesn't find it. There we go, just trying to find his space here. Putting on some decent damage, nothing super crazy right now. I like that, good opening, just a couple of hits. And really trying to establish the stage control here. Again, Keith with a super aggressive play off stage. Tossing up the weapon just to make it difficult for Sphinx to go up and through the edge guard. Looking through the neutral light, looking through the side light. Okay, D light into the recovery, just really good damage at this point. Wow, that was almost a stock. Just barely living here. And there it goes. Wow, just kind of kept them juggled up in the air as well. Uh, Sphinx is really sitting pretty. I mean, that was a pretty pretty good game too. You know, they feel strong. And I mean, strong enough to the fact that Keith's switching characters here after basically dominating with Sentinel all day today. And Sphinx just continues to just rack us up and just continue to put this pressure. Yeah, Keith is struggling to initiate at this point. Sphinx is just sort of, um, you know, playing in the face a little bit. Keith has not found any of, like, those really, really big great sword openings at the moment, right? But as soon as I say it, tries to go through the neutral light after the D-Light bridge, um, just to maybe cover behind them. Doesn't actually find it successfully, though. Sphinx still holding on to this for the stock. Still not able to get that conversion to try and close out the stock here. It's a little bit rough. Yeah, like, you, you are getting some hits now. Like, you're starting to kind of, you know, okay, I need to throw out hits a little bit earlier with the great sword, you know, just to try and, you know, find my combos. And there we go. Finally gets the stock off of one recovery there. But, yeah, it, it's definitely looking a little bit rough in terms of, like, just trying to keep up with the pressure that Sphinx is putting down themselves. a second both of them just slowing down the pace of the game nobody pressing anything really just good safe distance for that side like you can't be any closer because otherwise you'll just find yourself getting with punished popping him up with that neutral light finisher okay and just able to get a good cover lead. that's a lot of really good damage at this point but sphinx finding that side Ooh. sphinx over committing off stage and ends up getting swatted away with that side and the recovery doesn't clean it up though sphinx still holding on to the stock and then finding one on Keith. Incredible. I feel like Keith had that stock. Like, just he needed to just get one more hit and didn't just wasn't able to get the one they wanted and put Sphinx back on stage to be able to get the stock for themselves. That's super unfortunate. And now they're gonna have to sit here and struggle as they try to find a hit on Sphinx here. And man, Sphinx is not making this easy for him. Sphinx tried to go below him. Sphinx tried to find that neutral link. Was not successful, though. And now with the weapon toss, doesn't pick it back up, though, and now just has the sword on hand instead. No with punish on that signature, though. Goes off stage for the ground pound. That's one. Wow. Keith has no jumps. Keith, he used up that dodge and down a little bit too low. Sphinx taking out that game in a confident two-stock fashion. All right, and they're going to be sticking here with the Jayun. Uh, I don't blame him because like there there was some moments there I'm like okay this is actually working so again probably needed that one game to try and get the engine running here but like I'm still a little bit worried like I, I feel like Sphinx has kind of got you know Keith's mm -hmm. number here and I, I 
I don't know if I can see Keith making the comeback. It, it's it's just looking a little too rough. Yeah, Keith was having an issue closing that game. Um, as good, so the ways that you have to close, you can get try to get a recovery off the top. You're looking for the edge guard to inside him. Or, you know, you're just trying to get a combo, like, on the ground or so. And it just seems like Keith was never in a position to land any of those buttons. There was that one pivotal edge guard that Keith ended up missing. Sphinx got back on and then was able to close out the game. But then look at this damage output. Look at how much damage Sphinx just took. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's just the power of the great sword, you know, just put down a lot of damage. Jay Yoon is just a great character for putting a lot of that out there. But here we go, Sphinx starting to find a way to battle back, getting a little bit for themselves, almost losing the stock there and losing the gauntlets in the process. Yeah, Keith has made it really difficult for Sphinx to pick up a weapon up until finally getting that opening with the unarmed sidelight, picking up the sword, and now you have to find a way to get back onto the stage. The recovery misses, the downing misses, Sphinx commits to that ground pound and then puts himself in a precarious position, and Keith was able to close it out off the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Tacking on some damage there with the onesies, twosies. Just getting the fists and kicks going. And now the gauntlets here. <laughs> just, I, I love that move because it just looks like you're just pounding on their head. <laughs> it just looks terrible. Oh, it's so good. Absolutely. But, oh my gosh. A side zig boom across the stage. Keith was not ready for it. And now Keith just clearly able dodging that gauntlet recovery. Makes it back down. Really good catch on that dodge. That's the kind of a down that you want to look for. That could have been huge. And then Keith went through a bit of a gamble with that weapon toss. Dashing in. The, the recovery does not do it. Still just enough to be able to hold onto the stock. The neutralite whips. And that's going to be the whip punish for Sphinx. But look at how much damage you have to make up at this point. Yeah. And I, I think this just comes down to the fact that Keith is starting to find their rhythm here. Uh, with Jay Yun, which is honestly fantastic. Like, it's what they needed. But at the same time here, I mean, Sphinx is, it's still got a, a lead, uh, a one-game lead. And they're starting to look good. They're starting to find their hits in this game. Oh, but not for too much longer. Can they find a way back to the stage and get the wall touch? That's huge, but it does not matter as Keith closes out that stock. And we are one stock away from a game five situation once again. Yep, just classic off-stage edge coding when you have no weapon, the GC D-Light into the ground pound. Okay, what's gonna be the game plan here? Goes for the D-Light bridge, doesn't actually, um, you know, get that follow-up there. Sphinx, okay, there is a tell here. Sphinx is doing something. Sphinx is consistently dodging out after he hits that sidelight opening. It is now your duty as, um, you know, a combo-based weapon, right? Where you have to just be like, okay, I know where you're dodging out of this. I need to stop after my sidelight, maybe dash in, and then try to get the punish on your dodge afterwards instead of going through that immediate follow-up. Sphinx has established that that is potentially a habit. I want to see Keith now exploit that. Because again, Sphinx got out of it in the same exact way. Oh, okay, that was certainly a play there. Uh, <laughs> that definitely an aggressive call out that they're not gonna be able to find. Oh my goodness. Oh, no weapons now. Can they find a way to close out this stock? That is a dark red. Honestly, just a couple hits from anything. Should be able to close out this last stock. Ooh, almost finding the air. They do get the recovery. Oh, man, oh. This is going to another game five. That was... This is exactly what happened in Winner's side, in Winner's semis. Mm -hmm. This was a game five. Sphinx made that upset over Keith. And now the question is, is it going to be difficult this time around? Is it going to be Keith um, taking this one home? Or is Sphinx going to get this double elimination? Well, we're about to find out here as we get into, again, our game five. Jae Yoon sticking with it. We'll see if Keith can find a way. But I don't know, Sphinx... That was, that was the worst game Sphinx looked in, and it didn't even look bad, right? Three, I, I think two, that's just part of the fact one, of Keith just draw. starting to find that rhythm with Jae Yoon, you know, getting that engine revved up. And now it's just up to Sphinx just to make a couple adaptations because, again, they didn't even look that bad. But that was, they lost that. They, that was probably the worst they looked, which, again, not bad. Okay, but already gets that neutral <laughs> off stage, gets that second one, gets that third one, over and over again, and yet still Keith makes it back on each time. Uh, despite taking a couple of hits, despite taking some damage here. Hitting that neutral it, looking through the sidelight afterwards. Sphinx is, I mean, Sphinx is on top of Keith right now. <laughs> like, come on. He's just doing the same move over and over. It's like a small flex. I don't think they're like trying to do it to flex on him, but it just, it feels like it. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's connecting, it's working, he's getting that damage in, and now, just slowing down the... 
I don't know what to really describe that. They both just kind of moved around to do each other for like a solid five seconds. Nobody really pressed any buttons here. Oh, uh, okay. Sphinx going through the GC sidelight and through the police sidelight. Just looking for any way to get this follow-up here. you got to be careful with the great sword sidelight on the ground like that because you will find yourself getting with punished. And just the very last hitbox of the sword recovery was enough to take Keith up over the top. The very last hitbox. That was like kind of cutting it close here a little bit. But... I mean, hey, it's a great start. You got that stock out of the way, and now you kind of just play your game. You know, you don't have to aggress too much. You don't have to continue to push the, you know, pedal to the metal. You got to allow Keith to just get aggressive with you and try to find some punishes there. Because you were doing it earlier, too. Because especially with Great Sword, you kind of have to do these hops because that's kind of like your best option. And you just get the punish out of that with the gauntlet. So we'll see if uh, they're able to keep that up. But right now, you're in that dark red. Uh, Keith just needs one hit to try and close this out. It's looking for the recovery, ends up whipping. That recovery finally does end up connecting, and that is the beauty of Great Sword Recovery. It has so much quarters on full reach, and then you can either lean into it if you really think somebody's just going to fade out, or you can fade back with it, right? So you definitely have quite a bit of, um, you just have quite a bit of options with it, is the reality of it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. These two dancing around each other now, trying to find those openings. Get one solid hit. Nothing super crazy. Both ways, actually. Okay. Gets the uh, side light, D light bench. Just holding onto the ground, playing a really grounded play style. Just looking to get Sphinx across the stage with that D light. I mean, that D light, that Great Sword D light, it is huge. It can just catch you sleeping. It can catch you landing improperly as well. Goes through the reverse neutral light after the uh, down light bridge. Okay. What's it going to be? Sphinx fishing through that side light and ends up getting punished for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're doing a great job of kind of dancing around here. I mean, they do have a small lead, especially with the fact that Greatsword is out. Like, you are maintaining a damage lead against Keith with that. That's actually, like, huge. It's a real testament to the way that you're playing right now. But now it's kind of like just a couple small hits from Keith and, like, it's already evened up and almost losing the stock. Like, that's how dangerous Greatsword is. Gets a recovery. That one doesn't do it quite yet, though. Just looking through the juggle, looking for it pretty desperately, whipping the recovery, whipping the down out. Sphinx, though. Ugh. Yeah, Keith wasn't having any of that. Finally found that recovery. And now Keith, two to one stocks, super deep into the red, left off stage weaponless. And Sphinx, just with the haymaker, with the unarmed side strong, closing it out. This is game five, elimination finals. And last stock each completely even too like that's that that's how crazy this set is going right now we could be seeing a rivalry just kind of build right before our very eyes with the way that these two are playing right now but as we can see both of them trying to jockey for position here okay there we go Keith with a lot of damage there that was huge okay get some recovery looking for the neutral layer. Just looking through any way to be able to keep up the struggle. Sphinx, no oh, punish no. on the whiff sidelight. Keith has Sphinx offstage. How does Sphinx make it back on? The answer is slowly. Keith was looking to cover the platform, didn't cover it in time. Sphinx still struggling to make it back on. The cider comes out, but that's not going to do it quite yet. Sphinx. Oh my. Oh no. Sphinx dodged through it. Sphinx made it back on. Right, this really comes down to if Keith can land one more hit with this great sword, that's probably going to be the game. Like, Sphinx has to play so careful. Wasn't able to convert. That's so unfortunate. That's so crucial. You really needed that. It's always going to be a mix-up, right? You hit that slight, but now Sphinx going up the, after the recovery, just looking for any way to be able to steal this. But then Keith clutches it out, picks up that sword, gets that cider, takes out game five, making sure that he is not double eliminated by the person that sent him to elimination side to begin with. Um, that was insane. That was, that was definitely insane. That was terrifying, to say the least. <laughs> like, I thought that Keith had just flubbed it entirely. Mm -hmm. Uh, just dropping that one combo, but they're able to keep it together. A Sphinx ended up missing on a few opportunities of their own, and Kate just took advantage of that. Got that sword, and just closed it out, man. That, that's literally all it comes down to. I mean, beautifully played, but now you've got one last person standing in your way, and if you want to win, it's not just taking one set. You got to take two, and that's against Himwee. Yeah, so this is Southeast Asia, everybody. These are the two players that we see so often. We see them all the time. Um, we have Himwee going up against Keith. And I would love to take a little look 
um, at like the recent set history between um, one another. So this is number one, number two in the region, Henry and Keith respectively. Uh, the last time they played, it was a community event. This was a set 3-1 in Henry's favor. Uh, the last time they played at an official event, which was the Autumn Southeast Asian Champs, um, this was, I mean, Henry, like, Henry just won. Henry won uh, two sets against uh, Keith. But Keith ended up getting one set, so they ended up playing three times in total. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so yes, it is it is Henry who is favored. Historically, um, it is a 12 to 6 set record. So Keith has a bit of a comeback to make you, right? Especially because you're coming in from elimination side. You need to win two sets, whereas Henry only needs to uh, win one to, you know, to take first place. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, now we're going to be getting into this final set, potentially. Uh, it's definitely the final two mm -hmm. players. And what I'm interested in is Keith has been on the run of runs today, right? Has ran through the gauntlet through Malibut, Tiger, Sphinx, and now Himwe. Mm -hmm. And Himwe's been sitting there for a little while. I don't know. You know, they've probably been scouting the competition. Hopefully they've been staying warm. And granted, you have a set to play with, but I feel like with a player like Keith, that's not something you should be willing to take, right? If you give Keith an inch, he's gonna take a mile every single time. So I'm really interested to see how Himwe is gonna be coming into this mm -hmm. first game, uh, just dealing with this energy, this aggression. Uh, but again, Keith's been playing four straight sets now. Yeah, four, four straight sets. Yeah, Does Keith he has been the in the gauntlet. Yeah. Keith has been fighting for his life and we're going to be seeing Keith open up with the Sentinel. So. Um, yeah, the thing that was established pre previously in that set is like, hey, is the Sentinel not working out? Then I'm going to go ahead and switch up to the Jayun. So you have a very huge variety of different weapons that you could be possibly going through here. Uh, Sentinel up against Fate. Uh, in Winner's side, we saw the one set of Henry that we've seen today. I mean, just like a certain mastery, especially with Orb. The way Three, that Henry was just two, constantly keeping one, people out. Oh. Henry's combo game, Henry's follow-ups. I mean, they are, you know, world class. They're top of the line. So, everybody, game number one of the Grand Finals. This is the final match, uh, potentially one of final two sets for all of Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia for this tournament. Yeah. We got that hammer in, in hand. And man, I feel like it's been years since we've seen him we <laughs> on the screen. It, but it's really only been like a couple hours. But either way, getting started right now. This hammer putting on some solid damage. But this orb is just really crucial for the way that him we wants to play. We've seen so many damage. Like so many damage, so much damage, so many stocks taken today uh, using just this orb alone. Uh, him we is definitely controlling the space very well with it. Yeah, Henry is undershooting a little bit, so some of these downers are not actually connecting, but more than anything, these downers are actually just going unpunished. Like, Keith is not able to whip punish any of these, which is pretty huge. That is what Orb does. It plays this keep away game from you. Sidelight into Sider, and now you're going off stage, and the question is, how do you close? Henry just looking to land back down, finds another Sider, just keeping Keith uh, stuck in disadvantage for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Here we go, having to find a way back on the stage. Both of them in a pretty deep red at the moment. Himwe does have a little bit of a lead, but now this hammer comes out to play, and it's just like the lead just completely shifted. It just takes one hit. They were so lucky that they were on the other side of the stage because any closer to the right side, they would have been gone, but we do see them close it out, and Key taking the first stock here. But, I mean, that was, a, that, was, that was crazy. That was just keep dashing in and then just pressing like an unarmed like neutral strong right that was that was crazy uh, but right now keep off stage looking for a way to get back on safely Himley was going for the jump lead and didn't find it wasn't able to connect that side in Oh, this is dangerous. You have already seen the kind of damage output that Keith is capable of, and he is beginning to get that going. These Katars are no joke. <laughs> okay. There we go, trying to find a way in. Weasel's way in for a little bit of extra damage, but we do see him we find a way to close that stock out. And man, they are in the orange too. Like that is just how well Keith is playing here and trying to take advantage of this lead as much as possible. Wow, that's a huge stock to get started on the second here. And we now has an entire stock to make up for. Keith is basically unpunished, undamaged, still really, really fresh. This is the kind of a lead that you want to open up the grand finals with. Mm -hmm. Himwe is slowing it down, looking through that sidelight, but then you get put off even at like such an early damage. Getting put off stage by Katarius, it feels so bad. Keith can easily just drag you back down off of one dodge. 
Okay. Dashing around here. Both of them trying to find a solid combo to get started. Both of them in the yellow as well. And I mean, Himwee's just continues to stay about a stock behind here. Damage and all. We're starting to find a little bit of something, something, but not able oh, to stay oh, on the ground. What was that combo? What was that follow-up? Ew. That was pretty cool, but also kind of ill. <laughs> Can we now just make it back on with the good combo? He doesn't actually connect it. That's the Hamley side of coming out. That is just enough foils to push you all the way back down. But Hamley still makes it back on as Keith ended up missing that down and that you needed to close out that game. But still left with no weapon. Ke oh, Keith is waiting. But wait, he missed that? He missed that follow-up? I guess so. Keith, what are you doing? Keith, I need you to close this out here. This is, this is a little bit terrifying. All right, there we go. Get started. Oh, that side off stage, and then dashes off with, oh my God, that's a slide off dancing. That is so funny. We saw Keith do that before well, at some point, uh, just like a switch flipped in his brain, and then he decided to do that three times in a row. Guess what? Keith is just showing off something that is essential to fighting games, which is you don't want to necessarily reveal all of your options immediately right off the bat. Henry was not playing in a way where he was even considering Three, that was an option two, from Keith. One, Why? Roll. Keith didn't establish that he was going through that with a hammer in hand. You know, he'd be going off stage for a cider with Katarius, he'd be looking for downers. He did not do this this game against Henry. He wasn't expecting it, and then he got hit by it. And this is something that everybody should take home. Like a lot of you powerful KO options, you don't want to show them off immediately, and you don't want to always throw them around. All right. There we go. Both of them taking their time. And I feel like this is something we didn't see a lot of last game was the scythe. I feel like that's something you should probably try to incorporate a little bit more here. It probably helped with your combo game. It probably helps dealing with some of what Keith's throwing at you as well. Especially for stage positioning, that would be a huge boon for him. Then we just kind of keeping Keith out, but not finding any huge openings at the moment. He'll, he gets that neutral link, but it's not really anything else. It's just that one off hit. Side light side is going off stage. What's it going to be? And we just chooses to stay on the stage. Nothing too crazy, nothing too committal. Okay, Keith makes it back on. <laughs> All right, there we go. Just continues to keep this damage racking up. There we go. Beautiful opening. Tries to look for the dodge. Tries to get a read on it. Just barely misses out. Being nice and patient. Jumping out there. Looking for the jump call out. Side light side. Yep. Classic orb B and B. That's the confirm. That's the way that you actually get KOs with this weapon. Um, and him we found it. So you have a lead. You have a very gentle lead. But Keith has established that at least last game he did close. Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, very well done. Let's try and even things up here a little bit. And I, honestly, you're barely behind. A, a, a couple solid guitar combos. And you should be able to even up damage here. But now that you're going to keep taking these orb hits. <laughs> there we go. Keeping them towards the edge of the stage. Trying to find a way to just keep them over there. But Keith ends up off stage once again. And I feel like that's just something we've been seeing a lot today. Just keep off stage and then kind of giving up that stage control. Tugs in hand, backing off a little bit here. What's it gonna be? Keith is just being really nice and patient with his next opening, falling back down with the new trilogy that ends up getting whiff punished, but no D lights, no siders, no side lights to be found. No weapon. Sido, is this gonna be it? Is this gonna be the stop? Yes, it will. Wow, excellent. All right, yep. Do well to get started there. You're sticking right with the orb. Doesn't want to do anything, want anything to do with the scythe, which, okay, I guess. I mean, it's working out for you. You do have a little bit of a lead here, but with the way that Keith plays, that lead ain't going to stick around for too much longer. We'll see if he can find a way to keep that energy going because you need to have a strong start on this final stock here against him, we, or else you're just going to drop this game in general. Looking for this downer, looking for the new trilogy right now, and Keith is just... I mean, just struggling to find any opening here that's not just like a one-off opening. Katara is a combo weapon. If you're not finding like those grounded side lights, if you're not finding those neutral lights, which, it, okay, starting to get that uh, now, but it might be a little bit too late. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, starting to rack up this damage. Called out these dodges as well. But I got to hand it to him where he's finding, uh, you know, doing a really good job of just kind of getting out of these combos and getting some strong counter hits. 
And oh. is that going to close it out? That might be. Wow, he barely touches the stage. And him, we didn't want to risk anything. Him, we just sat on stage, was like, okay, you know what? On the off chance that you hit me and get a chase dodge back on, I'm not going to touch this at all. I thought that was going to be the stock. And now, all of a sudden, Keith has a fighting chance to be able to make this comeback, but there was two orbs on the screen. Really dangerous stuff. That's going to be it. Himui keeping himself afloat. Now taking total set count and total game count uh, one to one. Uh, Himui was playing with fate there for a little bit because, <laughs> literally, <laughs> because I think they thought they had that line, like that game done, and they weren't expecting Keith to be able to uh, get that that wall touch to be able to recover back. So, mm -hmm. uh, finish your food, <laughs> first of all. Make sure they're not coming back. Because you because you went back to stage, you just ran to the other side, and granted, you know, picking up a weapon, but, like, I feel like you just gave too much up, and you could have really secured it. So, thankfully, they got that W, but let's make sure... Yeah, I, I will say, though... Let's make sure games are like, games. In general, in general, you don't really, like want to like go off stage unless like you know functionally like hey that they'll make it back on it was so ambiguous and it was so like obviously that like Three, he isn't two, gonna make it back on one, that like i think everybody watching was like oh yeah that's the stock right that's uh they're gone the risk of going off stage to finish like chewing your food like that is that keith can find a hit and then get a chase dodge to come back on or even find something like a stage spike mm -hmm. and then just completely knock out him right so I don't disagree with him we for uh, necessarily staying on stage, even if it didn't turn out to be the correct play. Right. He still got that game, he still won it, and now it's one to one. I think bigger, my bigger issue was the fact that it was just the fact that they kind of ran to the other side of the stage. Like, you could have just kept that pressure just by standing there. But it is what it is. That's last game. This game, these two are battling it out relatively even across the board here. Now we do have that hammer, and I feel like Keith just hasn't been able to utilize this hammer quite as much. We know there's a lot of big damage that can come from it. It's just a matter of getting it into play. Ooh, ooh. Hey, Keith, slowly but surely making his way back onto the stage here, and now just patrolling the ground, looking for that D-Light, hunting for it. What an unconventional option. Keith was just not ready for it, just had to eat that. Find himself off stage now. This could be pretty huge. Oh, keeping this hammer in play as well. That, oh, wow. Barely living that. I mean, you're not going to be living the next one, that's for sure. <laughs> but, yeah, you are deep in the red. And there it goes. And, yeah, him, we, you know, after that first game, you know, dropping it. It was a competitive game as well. Getting that second one, they seem to be in control here. And he might need a character switch to try and change some things up. Now, granted, I'm calling this a little too early in game three. Ooh. But I just feel like him, we's just really on top of everything. I can't believe that down it didn't connect. I feel like that was also like the correct play. If you were to look at it, it was super, super close. And then by virtue of whipping that down it, Keith was able to get that punish, uh, that whip punish, excuse me, and that KO subsequently. But now, this is Scythe off stage. Off of just a single read, you can make some insane stuff happen. Keith has been so patient holding on to that dodge. You needed to hold on to that dodge to make it back against Scythe. It's okay to eat 20 hits, but if you use up that dodge too soon, then you're just done. You're gone. You're gone. It's over. But finding a way back to stage, despite looking at uh, what seemed impossible. And still racking up some damage very slowly but surely here. But, man, that that orb is just doing so much for him. We And tosses the scythe out there, trying to find a way to close out that stack. Both players unarmed. Ooh. Yeah, and, and that's the difficulty with Scythe. I mean, it's, it is it is difficult to get, like, your KO confirms with Scythe because it's such a lead-based weapon. Um, getting it again, though, but you don't need a lead if it's just going to be, hey, you got such a high damage that all I need to do is just connect a side of it at this point. Himley, once again, holding on to a gentle lead here. Keith needs any way to close out the stock. You have Hammer, so you gotta look out for D-Light. D-Light into Saito, putting you off stage, and now tossing out the weapon, but Himwe comes back on aggressively and punishes Keith through that weapon toss. <gasps> Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, God, terrifying spot to be in here. Can Keith find a way back? Ooh, okay, gets the wall touch, and is back on stage, and this is kind of where Keith makes his money, you know, trying to find a way back to even things up here, at least in terms of stocks, Keith but- Keith committed. 
Keith oh. put himself off stage too low. Himley was just able to get a free pass to get back on stage by going high. The side of the stage spike does come out though, but that was really scary for Keith at a couple of moments. This comeback is possible, especially with Katari's. We have seen time and time again what Keith can do with them if he gets that right opening, if he gets that chase dodge up, and he is trying his best to get that started. Oh my, dude, this Scythe gameplay has been fantastic. And I think it's been a really good reason why they've held a strong lead uh, this entire game three. And I know that they're like, listen, give me the orb, let me do everything with the orb. But this Scythe is definitely doing a lot for you. And they should continue to play with it a little bit here. Then we off stage being nice and patient. Oh my God. That down is getting crushed by Henry's down in. It was just like so slow up until it wasn't. Both of them so deep into the orange now. Uh, Keith really deep into the red. This can be anybody's game at this point, but Henry has that slight lead. Mm -hmm. Okay, tried to look for the recovery, tried to call out a jump that never came. And now you got him off stage. Henry, can you close this one out? He tries to look for a down arrow too, but not able to find it. Ooh, GC side light, that is committal. That is a commitment and a half, and he got punished for it, but Keith still finds himself off stage. He wasn't able to get that K off of it, but that's gonna be the side light side. That's going to be uh, it so far. And now Hemwe is up two to one against Keith. One more game, and that's going to be Hemwe um, as your trial of Yumi champion. If it's going to be two more games on Keith's behalf, then we get the bracket reset, and then we have another set coming up ahead of us. I will say though, Himwe has been the one that is just keeping Keith out, especially with Oil, especially with Downer, and especially with Sidelight. You can make it really difficult to get uh, a clean approach. And similarly, I feel like Keith has not been able to make the Katari shine as much as he was earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Kataris can get like such a long, powerful string off of one dodge read, and he hasn't found it. We're seeing Keith swap over to the Terrors, or rather to the one, Patrick. Brawl. Whoa. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how this works out for him. I mean, like, the other side of it, too, is just the fact that, like, Orb, I, I think, has just been that good for um, for Himwee. Like, just kind of dealing with with guitars. Like, it's, it's a nice close-range weapon. It's pretty quick itself. And, like, as soon as you're able to get those hits, you put them right back out. So they have to continue to try and find a way in. And Himwee, all day today, has been doing a great job of just, hey, hey, you come to me, and then I punish you, and we do this again. He's slowly taking his time to get back onto the stage. Himwe controlling the space. Another side light side in. Okay, how does he just keep finding these? He's just... Himwe is not always committing off stage. He's playing it safe. And that is the beauty of Orb. It lets you do that. It lets you just space out all of these different dish joints. And Keith is sweating on the way back down. Finally able to get that landing. Yeah, and uh, honestly, they got a little bit lucky too. Because Himwe kind of dropped the punish on that. They just called it out the wrong way just barely but you know still finds a stock early here and man that is one stock closer to being the trial of ymir champion for southeast asia but they got two more to go okay really huge it's gonna be the new trilay coming out now and then hopping off stage and able to get that side a really good edge guard um and that is what's really nice about telios he does not struggle to ko he has a lot of force, and then the kinds of weapons that he does have specifically in the form of axe. All you need is just like that one good hit, um, especially in edge guns. What an air dodge there. And a nice little punish to go with it. Nothing super crazy, but it's enough to kind of like make Keith think twice about being that aggressive again. Oh okay, really my. Really huge combo, really huge follow up, especially with the recovery. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh my goodness. Ooh, okay, barely living there. You do get a second chance to try and keep the stock alive. And I mean, with Taros as well, uh, you do t rack on a lot of damage very quickly. As you can see, actually taking the lead after those couple of hits. Ooh. Being nice and patient, coming back in with the side. Ooh, that's not going to be the stock quite yet, but now Hemway's in a really good position to take out the stock. That's not enough knockback to do it. Yes, it will be. Hemway now only needs one more to take the whole tournament for himself here. Keith has to make quite a bit of a comeback at this point. Hammer on hand, looking for the downer, looking for the sider, gets him way off stage. Can you finish this off? You burn the dodge, and you get the punish too, with the GCD light into the recovery. Amazing stuff. Yeah, it is do or die. Keith, you gotta show us what you're made of. Do you have what it takes to take this game and keep the set going, or are you gonna flounder in front of everybody? We'll definitely see what happens. Right now, as Himwee continues to rack on some damage using this orb, it's been their answer all day today. 
But Keith's trying to battle back with this axe. Okay, looking for the D light, just looking to patrol, looking to make it difficult for him to get an opening kill. Dashing in, dashing out. Keith has tightened up his gameplay. He has made it really difficult to approach, and Henry is swinging. Henry, like, look at the amount of buttons that Henry is outputting. Keith is now connecting everything that he is going for. Gets the recovery, just looking through the side end. Oh, oh, he is swinging and he is connecting it. Hey, you know what? <laughs> when in doubt, mash, right? Press those buttons, especially when you got something that hits hard. You're gonna find the hit that you need, and he That's gets it to close out the game and stays alive at least a little bit longer. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, I, that was pretty fascinating. That, in that kind of like a moment where it's like a last stock, last hit situation for like both of these players, especially when we are in grand finals. Um, those are world champions are made, and specifically who is more patient when it actually comes to finding KOs. Himley approached unsafely a few times in a row and Keith was able to get several whiff punishes, even out the damage. And he got that final, Three, uh, two, you know, I believe it was the uh, side of the neutral that I can't remember at this point to close it out. Game number five, if Keith gets this game, we're going to be going into a second set here. If Himley takes this game, then Himley is going to be the champion. Yep. And it's just a matter of just kind of getting it done. But, man, you just dropped the game to this basically game one Taros that <laughs> Keith is pulling out here. Uh, now this is their second game with it. So you got a little bit of time, you know, you, you got some data from last game. You can make some adaptations as needed. Ooh, and that could be a one. huge start here. But can you find a way to keep him off stage? And he finds a way back on. Oh, that whiff is huge. And Keith is taking full advantage of it. Able to get that daylight into the side and popping him way off stage and getting that neutral as well. This is Cameron. This is Telos we're talking about. One more daylight side and that is going to be able to do it. The beauty of the weapons that Keith has now chosen and the character that he has chosen, he is now a lot more consistent than uh, he was with the Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like, well, it's also just because I feel like he wasn't getting all those hits with Qatar, right? He was getting those onesies, twosies, and that's like a little bit of a rough spot to be in. But if you get onesies, twosies with axe or with hammer, it goes a lot farther. <laughs> so he's getting a lot of damage racked up. We do see him lose the stock there. But yeah, he is performing better because he has these stronger hits behind him. He's just backing up a little bit here, looking for this neutralite. Okay. Hammer on hand. What's it gonna be? He's looking for just like a D light now. That's what Hamley's are always looking for, right? Because you can just get D light into any follow up that you're looking for. Hamley just backing off a little bit. Hamley has not been able to keep him out as effectively as he did in the beginning of the set and as he did uh, as effectively with other opponents. Mm -hmm. right? That is what made Hamley so good, is the fact that he was just so difficult to actually get a land on, uh, a hit on. Yep. But now, you know, you go with the Taros and it just seems like every hit you, you were landing matters and it feels like you're getting all your hits you're really not but it just feels that much more impactful and that's a huge thing for keith here here we go or putting down a little bit of solid damage in? close out that stock beautiful no dodge no nothing just jumps on into it and it's actually him with the lead with the way that it was going that's not what you'd really expect you would think that keith would be the one with the two to one stop it now but GC sidelight into the side and goes off stage for the downer. He wanted to set up that edge guarding situation. Himui is, I mean, he's doing amazing at the moment. Wow, what a combo there. Getting some pretty solid damage, keeping him off stage a little bit too. And again, just racking it up. Oh, Keith is in trouble right now. Keith is in a lot of trouble. And I feel like it's just that Himui has just found the confidence he needed to close this one out. And it's just a couple more of those and he's got it. Waiting a little bit, slowing Ooh. down, and then able to pop out there and able to get the spike at the very end. Everybody, Henry is going to be a champion. He is going to be taking first in the trial of Emil here, and Keith going to be taking a close second. Keith, after getting knocked down so relatively early, still in top eight against Sphinx, was able to go on an incredible run, played five consecutive sets, and then finally met his match. Uh, Henry knocking him out, and there you go. That's your number one and number two. That is indeed your number one and number two. But, like, just the last stock there, that, that was an option that we have not really seen him we use at all today, I'm pretty sure. But just throwing it out there, last second, closing it out, making the aggressive play, kind of actually taking a page out of Keith's book, honestly, to close that one out. So that was just, you know, there's just, it was good. It was good. The storyline was there. I love it. 
Yep, yeah, that's Hemwe. Hemwe continues to just run this region. Hemwe is the one that continues to be the champion. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, everybody, uh, thank you all for watching. That is going to close it out for Southeast Asia for this weekend. But this is, of course, just the start of a really, really huge weekend for Blue Hall. This is the first event of 2024. Uh, we have some really, really exciting stuff happening. Um, and then taking over the side stream soon is going to be uh, of course, Flambo and Polly. Uh, and which region will they be doing today? Uh, it's going to be the Middle East, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, we've actually mm -hmm. got a couple players, I believe, in Middle East uh, that are normally NA players. So that should be interesting as well. Yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. This is not a region that we have uh, actually, I believe this is the first time that they're like on an official broadcast, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, there is going to be some players that I don't know, so I will be tuning in. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to us talk about video games. Skip and I will be on all weekend uh, with some NA and EU and SA action later on. But for now, Flambo and Polly are going to take it away from us. Um, but until then, we're going to go on break. So get a snack, get a little something to drink, and... Um, They'll be they'll be seeing you really shortly. Bye bye everybody. Earlier with the great sword, you know, just to try and you know find my combos. But there we go, finally. Sphinx still holding on to the stock and then finds his life. But now, Sphinx going up the after the recovery, just looking for any way to be able to. All right, there we go.
I'ma keep it real with you. real with you. Thank you. 
Welcome everyone back to yet another Brawlhalla cast today. I am Flambo joined by the amazing Polly on my side and we're going to bring you guys the first ever Middle East North Africa Brawlhalla tournament. I'm excited. I need to know what these people got going on, Polly. Yeah, I mean, it's of course very exciting. We're going to see a lot of new names, hopefully, for the first time. I mean, I've, I've been looking at the bracket. We've got a lot of exciting competition coming your way. As you mentioned, the first tournament ever, not only, well, not the first tournament ever in Brawlhalla, the first tournament of the year, esports uh, year nine. It's going to be the trial of Ymir, and we have the first tournament for ME NA. It's going to be absolutely crazy. We have. Uh, also, I'm just gonna go ahead and address the elephant in the room. We do have uh, we do have some tomfoolery in the background. <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna find out. I'm sure we're gonna find out about that in just a second. Yeah, no, I mean definitely. <laughs> what a way to to make a splash, because uh, you know some hobbies are in Dubai, and so that definitely allows for you know a little bit of tomfoolery, as you said. But I think it also does a really good job of kind of allowing us to know as kind of the peanut gallery what the bar is like right we haven't really had much exposure to this region yet and so we're kind of learning the same way a lot of our viewers are but the fact that we do actually have some representation from some people that are generally in eu means we're gonna have much better of an idea of kind of trying to weigh what the meta is like how good are the players are they able to keep up are they better we don't know it's gonna be exciting yeah, this is completely uncharted territory right now on the stream. And uh, yes, we do indeed. We have some homies that traveled from EU to Dubai to compete in this tournament. And those players are Fridas O, Hermeson, the Ninja 79, and Hyrulean, which is so far all of which are in the elimination side. So, uh, I mean... The 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 MENA players they've been they've been proving themselves quite well so far, and it's going to be very interesting to see how things develop from here on out. Yeah, no, I mean even myself, I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek at the bracket here, right? We already have, uh, on the winner side of things, you know the the top eight is looking pretty locked in there, but on the elimination side of bracket, it looks like there's a couple of matches that do need to be kind of played out, but we're looking at it's like Hermeson is currently up 2-1 against Kingdom CF. And then it looks like we have Comer versus Voter. And then the Ninja versus Taher is going on. And then Dens, I think, is waiting on the winner of the match prior between Sao and Edit 1. So all very, very fresh faces outside of the EU people that we've come to recognize and love over the years of Brawlhalla Esports. And so it really is going to be like a, what does this person have to bring to the table? I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Let's find out together. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And uh, I have been talking to some EU players about uh, what they are expecting from this tournament. Uh, I've heard that the meta tends to be potentially slightly different in uh, MENA, uh -huh. uh, with them potentially favoring a little bit of sword. We might see some sword players, although don't, don't quote me on that. That's in no way I promise. Uh, and of course, I mean, so many of these players coming out from the Middle East and North Africa have been playing on EU for the longest time with, I mean, let's, let's, let's face it, with, with a bunch of ping and they have been playing well. Like FXL got, I believe, like 26th with ping from the Middle East to EU. I want to see what that guy is capable of when he's on his home turf. No, I'm with you on that one, especially for me. Like, I know, historically speaking, uh, if we look at some other games that exist just in like the fighting game sphere, right? Tekken, for example, was kind of one of those games where North America was like, yeah, we're so good, we're so good. And then they went over to the Middle East and then just got like absolutely obliterated, right? There were people who had been playing the game for years, years and years and were like so skilled, but we just didn't know because we never got that exposure on the mainstream. And so now I'm thinking, all right, what if it's the same for Brawlhalla? What if they've just been like cooking there for a very long time and we just just didn't know it's entirely possible the fact that you're talking that they might 
lean into sword a little bit is actually exciting to me because at this point it might be two or three years since boomy made this video but there was a video that boomy made where he was analyzing all of the weapons to like win tournaments and which weapons won the most tournaments and sword was up there by far yet when you go on twitter and you look at people's tier list about what's the most broken on the list people never have sword and s tier i'm like but it got the most championships bro like what what are you talking about yeah, I think right now in general, Sword is kind of slept on, but it's also like Sword is Sword is slept on in the way that a lot of weapons in Brawlhalla are slept on. A lot of weapons in Brawlhalla are just always good, but people only call them good whenever they're a problem, right? And I don't think Sword is a problem right now, but I can't tell you like one a time that Sword wasn't in the upper half of all of the weapons in uh, in the roster. It's consistently great. Uh, and again, of course, this is just speculating. We don't actually know. I mean, maybe there's not going to be a single Sword player all tournament. Uh, as you mentioned, with uh, you said Tekken, the players moving over to uh, the Middle East and playing there, getting destroyed. I, I mean, I do not want to, I do not want to make any like too far conclusions. But we do have some really strong EU players that none are, are in the winner's side right now. So hey, I don't, maybe that's foreshadowing. Who knows? There's a lot of stuff left to play out. We have two players in the lobby here. I don't know if we're getting ready to uh, to play. Right now, I'm taking a peek here. It looks like at least I see in the lobby we have Poe and FXL. And so that probably means we're hopping right into that winner's finals, potentially to see what we have to offer in the Middle East and North Africa. Let's get it popping, Polly. It's going to be a big game, and we're starting off straight away with FXL getting a great string onto Poe. Poe's orange, it's eight seconds into the match, Flambo. Yeah, it looks like we're starting off very fast here, and FXL looking for that end sig near the top of the screen to potentially get that early KO. Poe can barely find the hits right now. Finally, actually, gets a nice little response right there, and this okay, is what we're talking okay. about. This is Zul Force. Yeah, right there. Poe, all he knew all he needs to do is just keep that composure, play calm. You have Zol, just get a couple of good hits, and you're going to be able to even this uh, uh, damage out quite quickly. FXL, I mean, I'm kind of getting the sense that this guy, he was all about that initial shock factor because he too, he's starting to kind of call down a little oh. bit now. Oh, what a turnaround from FXL. A perfectly timed dodge on the ground pound to get the reversal with the orb down air. And when was the last time we saw Fate that, like, wasn't fried us all, right? Like, it's actually <laughs> kind of refreshing. I was just about to say, yeah, fry, but yeah, no. There's not a lot of players on Fate. That is, that is definitely true. FXL out here representing that uh, player base. Uh, I do also want to mention, it's not too often that you get to see Orba players in general. Scythe is common, and Orba maybe not so much right now. Yeah, it's true. Outside of like Raidish, I really don't. And Fridasol, get... yeah. Fridasol, right? It's like that's the most you get. But FXL is showing that, hey, maybe there's another Orb player you guys need to keep your eyes on. Throwing out that down sig, that Botai Poe, not getting hit by it though. And just kind of looking to see if maybe we can mitigate the bleeding a little bit. But FXL with a well-timed weapon throw is able to go ahead and tuck in that penultimate stock from Poe. Looking incredibly strong right now, and it's going to be clinging onto that side that was able to make wonders the first stock. I want to nice. say that, okay, Okay, FXL was looking so comfortable, but that, that's what happens when you get a little too bit comfortable around a 9 string legend. Take a couple of hits and you're down to orange. Might take more work than that to be able to even this out though. Yeah, it, it, it's tough because Poe generally is losing a loud... Uh, on these neutral exchanges... Oh, that's gonna be the game. Yeah, just chase out there with that side air and FXL is gonna win game one. And honestly, pretty convincing game from XF or FXL for that game one, right? Like Poe, I think had burst, where it would be like, all right, I get a side light. And it's actually been kind of weird. We haven't seen a whole lot of side light nair from Poe. We actually see like side light into wait, into follow the dodge with like a down air or something. And then at least like a four hit string. It's really cool. Usually most people, especially North American EU, if they get that side light with ax, they're just going for the nair. They're taking the guaranteed damage. But Poe seems to be a little bit more wary on, you know, especially if the spacing isn't quite perfect, tries to go for a reaction off the dodge. 
Yeah, I mean, in a situation like this, you have so many things that you need to figure out about your opponent, and you have no time to think because he's just like run in, dare, side light, side light, side sig. FXL is giving Poe no time to think right now, but it looks like Poe actually is controlling this neutral space a little bit better this game around. They're taking a pretty clean start here on his way to take out FXL's first stock potentially. Okay and throws away the cannon. The weapon throws haven't been quite on target, but Poe has had the advantage the majority of this game, but fighting the KOs, the knockouts, seems to have been a really big issue. But when you have so much force like Zell does, if you get enough hits, you really can just lean into the end lights, the down lights of the ax to get the job done for you. Ooh, that's dangerous. Oh, my heart skips whenever I see a side offstage in these situations, but Poe is able to get back. But the recovery, the recovery made him go down. I think maybe like the first couple of frames of that move, you move your, your hitbox moves down a little bit. That looked kind of strange, but nonetheless, Poe is going to be one stock down here. Still, I want to see a lead, but... Okay, so let's pick that weapon back up. It's still still pretty, pretty balanced out position for both of these wow. players. Just got yoinked out of the side air right there. Perfect dodge oh on the Lord. recovery. Puts FXL in the great no position. Oh, that should have been the edge guard right there. Oh, close. So able to so consistently to get back against Poe's edge guarding. And as soon as he does, he throws Poe off stage. Oh, nice attempt here. FXL looking for the final blow. Poe, probably one more nair should be enough, especially if combined with the D life. FXL leading into these weapon throws a little bit more and right into the end sig off of the side light. And that's why that's so tricky, right? If you don't go for that harsh side light that sends to the side, instead goes for the input that sends them up, you can set up for those signatures. And now FXL is running away with it. What oh happened? That Lord. stock was brand new. Yeah, FXL just keeps finding not only the movement reads, he finds the movement read, and then he finds the dodge read. He gets another dodge God. read, and then gets the third movement read. Poe is unable to move around FXL right now by the looks of it. But Poe able to sneak in a dare there real quick. He's still clinging onto the stock. I mean, Poe, I wanna, I wanna see Poe cling onto that cannon. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's a dream, but I've seen cannon take stocks quickly. Yeah, especially with a character like this one needs to get the read. You can see FXL just takes the hits there. Doesn't burn the dodge early, understands the risk of burning that dodge against Cannon. But Poe still able to get good damage there. Maybe two more interactions of two to three hits could be enough to bring Poe back into the game. But that weapon throw is going to tuck Poe into bed here as FXL wins yet another game, putting them up 2-0 in the set. FXL is just consistently delivering super high quality gameplay right now. I want to say beating Poe in a lot of different aspects of the game at the same time. Poe is really going to have to Poe is really going to have to scrape the bottom of the barrel and find anything within him to be able to adapt to FXL right now. Yeah, and I mean FXL did end up taking out Fridasol in the winners semifinals 3 to 1 right and so clearly this guy is here to play poe I, I would like to see a little bit more from and, you know as i was saying before we kind of see these bursts these Three, spurts of like two, brilliance but one, really four. has not quite been able to keep up i'm wondering if fxl is just going to be one of those household names that we're gonna have to put respect on for the rest of brawlhalla history like do you just got it like that in mena <laughs> yeah fxl I, I, I don't know what's going on anymore He's getting so many of the he's getting so many hits, but still the damage doesn't quite reflect that just because not only does Scythe not deal, you know, great amount of damage, especially not compared to Zol Axe, but FXL, it's about the control. He's working twice as hard for his hits, but he's also getting like three times more hits. And it's been a while since we've really gotten to see Scythe do some damage in this manner. Of course, you know, Mordex always a popular pick, but I feel like generally people have been leaning into some of the other legends in the game as of late. And so it's really refreshing in a lot of ways to see a Scythe here, but Poe still trying to stay relevant in this set. Doesn't want to get sent down to the elimination bracket. Has to win three straight here, and that's going to be a fantastic start to go ahead and bring things back to even, but there's still more work to be done. Still a lot of work to be done indeed. 
protect themselves, patrolling the ground. Bo playing it very reactively now, trying to respond to uh, FXL's movement, trying to stop him in his tracks whenever he's able to. And there we see it, Sidelight Nair coming out. Racking up this damage. I sense that Poe is controlling controlling the pace of the game a little bit more, but just as I say, that FXL gets just two hits, throws Poe off stage, and now it feels like Poe is fighting for control again. Yeah, but luckily Poe's finding the hits right now. He's gonna lean into the cannon. I haven't been able to see this cannon really lead to too many stocks. It did get one down air earlier though, so that isn't to say that he can't do it, but FXL with the unarmed edge guards, that unarmed down air has been snatching stocks like that for years, Polly. Years, <laughs> It's it's been so good for so long. and. For great reason, right? It allows you to make these little pesky plays, get these edge guards that you feel like otherwise shouldn't be an issue. And because of it, FXL is that much closer to closing out this set, but Poe does find a moment to retaliate. Yeah, you're seeing more and more nowadays people being like, yeah, guys, maybe we should put, you know, unarmed in S tier. People, I mean, being good at unarmed is definitely becoming a very crucial skill to high level gameplay. These players showing that they definitely have those capabilities within them, but Poe? With a pretty big play, is it going to be enough? FXL, he misses the dare, gives Poe another opportunity. He's able to get back up, but just like that, I mean, that side for you, he's gonna throw you back down. Nice catch okay. with the end sig! Wow! Had it burned any sigs all game, I don't think. At least that end sig, that was the first time we were seeing that one. What a read, what a call out. But those are the kind of plays you need to make if you want to stay relevant in the game. I mean, FXL clearly, obviously, did not expect to see that one coming. Poe doing a fantastic job of staying alive in the set. Yeah, FXL, as we mentioned time and time again, consistently putting out this high-level gameplay, but Poe, I said Poe's gonna have to scrape the battle. He's gonna have to look within himself and to see what he can find to be able to beat FXL. It looks like in that last stock, he took everything out. Three, that was hilarious, two, too. Like, one, FXL four. is probably light orange, like, you know? But <laughs> when you get caught by Zul, that's kind of what's gonna happen to you, and so... Being able to force the game four and maybe even the game five were able to keep things up, but it kind of felt like a, a you, you get one of those in the set, you know? And so Poe used it at the right time, but otherwise FXL still seems to largely have the higher wins in the neutral exchanges. It's always so hard to tell. Was that a knockout? Is this the turning point? Is this where, you know, whatever? It's always super difficult to tell. But I will say one thing, and that is after a win like that, massive for Poe in the way that he has like a reinvigorated, uh, like, enthusiasm that this is possible. Yeah, sometimes you just need to know that you can do it, right? And that one yeah. dub on the board is the little bit of confidence that you need in order to just go on ahead and keep on pushing. And Poe getting the first stock this time around. I want to see how much of a little lead you can create for yourself while you have this opportunity. Or is FXL going to go ahead and try to shut that off immediately? We saw that setup before. This time there was a back step added to it. But Poe not falling for it. And so that's good adaptation, not allowing your opponent to use the exact same setup to take away your stock. Excel able to pick up that end light. Gotta take off this stock quickly. Swapping over to the orb. Gotta find something. You gotta find something. Now you can't afford to take any more hits, but the cannon Sayer oh. comes out. The, the Sayer comes out as well. Sending FXL down, but he's still able to sit atop that ledge, trying to find just a single hit. He's been one hit away for so long, but Poe is able to just what? run away with so many of these extra damage. Is he gonna be able to find the, another stock? Poe has done so much damage here. Even if you lose the stock, you're one hit away from sending down FXL to the final stock. FXL does find that side light side air to go ahead and get rid of that first stock of Poe. But at this point, Poe's like, oh, what? oh no, not like this, oh, no. not like this. Oh my god, <laughs> this side off stage, my heart skipped. I heard it in your voice too. Jesus, <laughs> that was okay. insane. Ground pound okay. doesn't even need yeah. to do it. Yeah, no, wow. able to take out that stock very quickly. Full stock lead, basically. You got that weapon advantage as well, but FXL blessed with a pretty good weapon spawn. Ooh, okay, Poe just looking to rack on that damage now. Gets stuffed out on the down air by that neutral light from the orb. Just comes out so quickly. Poe with the perfect dodge through to go ahead and get that turnaround neutral light. Gets the down light as well. FXL is falling apart. Ground pound could close it out That's here. That's it. Doesn't even drift into the wall. He knows it's over. Game five, Polly. We're going to game five. 
game five. Indeed, Ho turned up, but it looks like... Oh my god, Flambo. I, I mentioned Sword earlier. I saw FX on the Fate. His Fate was like level 86. It's like, yeah, people people know you for your Fate, right? Level 86, I mean, that's that's a lot of hours on Fate, right? FXL locks in the level 100 bell. It's like, okay. right, it's time to get serious. We're locking in. You know what? If there's a time to lock in, why not do a game five of winner's finals? Get yourself that guaranteed top two. Val, I don't think there's a stranger to anybody at this point in Brawlhalla Esports has gotten so many dub skins, right? I mean, even if we're talking about meta dev skins, right? Val, the most recent addition to the roster here, just kind of showing that, like, I mean, you, you can't talk about Val without talking about Addy Messick, right? Like, I mean, that's yeah. the first, that's the first person who comes to mind, and that sword gauntlet combo, that neutral sig on sword as well. We were talking about sword beforehand, and maybe this is why, Polly. Look at this sword. This is probably what Fry was okay. dealing with in that winners. I wanted to say last game, it felt like Poe was controlling the ground in such a different manner. FXL was winning, I believe, the first two games because he had a really strong dominance on just constantly throwing Poe off stage, taking that stage control. And I mean, if you're a scythe and your opponent is off stage, I mean, you're you're the happiest man alive, right? Poe started playing a lot more grounded, yeah. started How? maintaining that stage control. But FXL with a sword in hand? I mean, tell me a stronger... Tell me a stronger grounded weapon. It's it's kind of up there. Yeah, no, for real. It really do like keep you on your toes here. I mean, FXL looking so confident. Down sigs coming out, and it's so safe to throw out those down sigs as Val, right? Just throw it back. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You can tell Poe is fighting a completely different player at this point. Doesn't really seem to know how to navigate around these gauntlets. Is staying with the cannon though. Is going to leave that weapon spawned on the left side. No swap inbound. Can we get the stock? That's what I'm looking for here. Can Poe get this stock? Basically trailing by a stock at this point. Just as you mentioned, man, it's like a completely new oh. player, and you do not want to see something like that. If you are Poe, you do not want to see your player turn into a different person at game five. Oh. I mean, you're gonna have to adapt quickly. Poe able to find that end light. The throw connects as well. Poe still quite damaged here. FXL, I, he is indeed going to be picking up a sword, and I mean, this could be the knockout right here. Okay, not going to bait the side sig off tide. Instead, does it onto the stage. And there we go, okay. D-Light side air. It's not going to be enough. One more side air. Has to seal the deal here. Can FXL get it? The answer is no. Wow. Okay, cool. We'll go ahead and take it. Now, Poe down to the final stock, potentially of the winner's side of bracket if Poe isn't able to turn things around. But FXL has looked way too confident on this bow. Okay, very, very see. confident indeed. Poe trying to find the trying to find the flame within him that he had last game. He's wondering where did it go? FXL FXL put it out. Okay, let's see. Ooh, tries to go for the grab cancel sideline yet again. Poe hasn't quite been able to get the reads off of these follow-ups but has been trying nonetheless. Almost ran into that digital shuriken there. And now, I mean, FXL looking for the double recovery wants this set to be over. Poe has to mitigate the amount of hits that they're taking right now. Another end light means that much closer to losing winner's finals. Can FXL close it out here or is Poe gonna activate the clutch factor? Oof. So close, yet oh. so far away. Able to jump out of that combo. FXL barely just one hit away. One good gauntlet ground pound. He knows it. That's why he's going for it. Throws out the end lights. Able to get Poe stage. Oh. He has another. He oh. Nice. And there it is. It's over. FXL is going to be securing a place in the grand finals after a, I want to say, nail biting best out of five that went all the way against Poe. Yeah, no, the, the way that it went, you would think, like, FXL looked so comfortable. Then I think Poe started figuring out a bit of what FXL was doing. And then the swap to Val made it seem like, yeah, you haven't studied this textbook yet before. And then it kind of ended up being a bit, a little bit of a wash at that point. But still a game five set. We'll say it was close. But FXL definitely making us remember the name because I was not prepared to see skill on that level. Yeah, and I mean, additionally too, I do want to mention Poe, super close best out of five. Um, we mentioned earlier that all of the EU players got knocked down to eliminations. We didn't say by whom. 
who would Poe took the Ninja 7 to 9 to game 5 and won that. So I wanted to mention that, but I didn't find a good place to do it mid, uh, mid the set. Uh, but yeah, so Poe, pretty good run so far, but is going to be getting knocked down to the Eliminations Finals, and we're going to have to follow him later. Yeah, and now, something that you guys probably weren't expecting. I know I wasn't, but we have something to show y'all that y'all might be a little bit excited about. So, take a peek at this. Okay, I didn't realize like because they were like, oh, you know, it's gonna be some some battle pass stuff I was like, oh, we all haven't seen it and I was like, okay, cool I didn't realize it was gonna be the weapon set though I didn't realize it was gonna be the weapon set because the weapons I'm gonna keep it a buck poly Bro, Hall have been murdering it with the weapons killing it well say <laughs> with the weapons uh, I did not I did not have any idea we were going to be seeing something like this today This comes as a complete shock to me. These look awesome I mean, my, my personal favorite uh, weapon sets, the ones I use, are the Asgardian ones and the Dark Heart. This kind of, in a weird way, looks like a mix of that. Ooh, you see that scythe, though? You oh, see dude, that? the lance. I'm looking at the lance. That lance, Ooh. that spear, that's a... Oh, man. I don't, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. These are great. I'm going to be rocking these. You're going to be able to see, see me with these on in the ranked queue. Wow. The merciful weapon set. That's wild to me because I'm looking at these and I'm like, these don't look very merciful, bro. I feel like if I start swinging, <laughs> yeah, I can do no. with any of these weapons. Like they're not they coming back. Definitely don't. <laughs> these these weapons th these weapons look powerful. I like that. I like that. And you know me. I want to see what I'm they look like with the colors sword. as well. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super. I'm super excited to see what uh, what these weapons are gonna, gonna look like on uh, on the gala color set or or the uh, the home team, all of that. And low key. I'm looking at the boots because boots is just like, you know, it's the newest weapon. And so as far as like cosmetics go, there aren't a whole lot of different boots to choose from yet because they're slowly being rolled out to the game. But you see those boots had like little spikes on them on the end, right? So you pulling up with your Tesca, you pulling up with your Thea and you spike booting people in the face. Nah, that's raw. That's raw. Also the orb, the orb was a book. That's awesome. I think there's, I think there may already be an orb skin like that. Don't quote me on it because I'm not an orb player, but that's super cool. If I played orb, I'd play that one too. But uh, yeah, definitely looking at that, uh, definitely looking at that spear and axe and swords and those are the weapons I play. <clears throat> they looked really cool. I'm, I'm definitely going to be rocking them. Yeah, no, that was amazing. I definitely cannot wait to be able to get my hands on some of those because uh, I don't know. I like drip. I like drip checking people, giving them more tools to associate the drip with. It's something I'm super about, so I'm I'm ready to go ahead and, and pack people up with those weapons. Definitely that new battle pass is looking like the one for me. Uh, yes, indeed. And I do believe that if you go over to Brawlhalla's website, you will be able to find more information on the battle pass. Uh, there should be, I believe, more reviews uh, and more information like that. So make sure to go over and check it out at brawlhalla.com forward slash battle pass if you're interested and you like what you see. But enough of that. We are jumping straight into the next game. We were so captivated by that reveal. We were barely able to hype this one up. We got introverts out here in the, in the lobby. Yes, going up against, I'm gonna say, Comer, or maybe it maybe it's Co-MR, we'll figure it out. But I mean, either way, getting things started here, a lot of <laughs> aggression. I mean, we got Rocket Lance for days. We got, we got Rocket Lance for days. We're getting D-Lights thrown out left and right so far. Uh, introverts are here, of course. I want to say, at this point, basically like a semi-OG player in EU, right? Been playing for a super, super long time, has been, ha, ha, does have a lot of placements under his belt, and yet again, so fun to see these players have been playing EU for so long, finally able to play on their home tour. I want to see, I want to see what Tahir is capable of, but it looks like Comer is making him fight for his life right now. Okay. Oh, and that's that new vector down sig that did graduate from the experimental changes, shooting out this couple of blasts, about four bullets. So go ahead and let people know what's up. 
and it, it's cool. I, I like seeing it. I like seeing, you know, Legends get these updates and clearly Tahir trying to go ahead and show what that's all about. Probably another down sig or recovery coming out to go ahead and close this stock is my guess, but Comer making it a little bit more difficult than that. That's going to be a oh double delight into the recovery, maybe a chase. Follow Tahir on the way down. No swing though, and Tahir still can't find the stock. Dude, Comer, not only does he find it just slightly more wins in the neutral uh, engagements, he always finds that high damaging punish options, able to get these double delights, massive follow-ups with extensions, and look at that flambo, it's another sword, the prophecy holds true so far. Okay, yeah, no, clearly they understand the way of the blade, they've been studying it for a little bit of some time now, great, uh, Proficiency, if you will, in the style of the Heat and Mitsurugi, so oh they no! definitely are ready no! to go. Jeez. Okay, he's able to do it the second time. He's able to get it the second time. Uh, dude, I've been playing. I've been playing. I have three thousand, more than three thousand hours in Brawlhalla. I still don't understand why sometimes my daylight recovery is on a sword drop. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not able to tell. I felt so much pain watching Homer not be able to not be able to string that together. Got it on the second time though. That would have been so unfortunate if not. Yeah, and usually D-Light recovery is the one where you, you don't even think about it, right? Like you're not even really trying to time it. You just kind of press recovery and then you try to drift into them. But depending on where it picks up, sometimes you do have to maneuver a little bit. And so Homer was struggling a little bit there. Introvert Tahir was able to bring things back relatively quickly though. Got a side air KO on the last stock relatively early that brought things back to even but Comer back on this spear trying to get extra damage Tahir trying to oh man double into the air was almost enough to KO right there another the last one and there it is no the weapon it's over it's yeah th that's still the stock this Comer does not miss delights on spear how many did he hit in that game I would like to know but I don't think we have a delight counter we might need to we, not, we might need to keep track of that next game Flambo Introvert Tahir is not allowed to jump. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was rough. Even on some of the dodges in would get caught with the D light as well, would have to suffer too. Definitely not something that Tahir was expecting. We actually do get a legend swap over from the vector to the Scarlet, which I can't actually remember the last time I saw Scarlet at this point in bracket, right? I feel like if there's been a Rocket Lance Three, legend two, as of late, one, it's usually oh. been Orion or Ulgrim. But Scarlet, especially with how unpopular Hammer was for a while in the meta last year, has largely been unseen. Yeah, Hammer definitely getting it. Pretty large uh, resurgence, I, I want to see in all the regions as of late. And I mean, I know we haven't been seeing that much Hammer game towards or Tahir yet, but I mean, what is going on? That's basically a clean stock. Look at Tahir's HP. That's like a sidelight on unarmed. And that, that's Rocket Lance for you, right? It'll carry you to the corner of the screen. All got oh right on God. the jump there. Ooh, good dodge oh, in though. If he got that sideline, it could have been over just right there. Tahir, he keeps finding these follow-ups. Even, even when Comer is able to find these dodges out of them, Tahir is able to pick up an attack right after. Oh, man, you oh can't dodge Lord. in on Scarlet. That down sig will be waiting for you. Oh, the read on the cross through with the neutral sig. Comer is just getting completely red on the jumps. Do I stay grounded? Do I jump? If I jump, I risk getting hit by the side air. If I stay grounded, they might dash side light and get a guaranteed combo on me. It's so hard to know what to do. But generally, the answer is stay grounded. Generally. But sometimes, if you're not keen enough, you'll get caught in that scenario. Hey, oh, if man. someone if someone just lost a, a ranked game or a set to lands, 99% of the time they'll end it by saying, "Why did I jump?" <laughs> yeah. Like you gotta, you do gotta have to play kind of grounded against lands. But that's, that's the thing about lands. Is there any area of the map where lands isn't strong? You know, it, most people would argue if you are right below Lance, you know, like perfectly lined yeah. up below Lance, just because all it really has is ground pound to cover that. And a lot of the times you can stuff that out really easily. It has a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that, it, I mean, th that Nair has amazing coverage. It, it's really hard to find your way around. I mean, Comer barely getting back to the stage there using the exhausted recovery, manages to get a catch on, I think, a dodge off of that side light, but it doesn't matter. I mean, Tahir completely smoking Homer in that game too. Two minutes and six.
seconds. Tahir absolutely turning up, making this look like an experimental lobby right now. Comer is gonna have to try and bounce back, and it looks like he's going to be doing so with the swap over to Mirage. Yet another Scythe uh, legend coming out today. Okay, interesting. So we're getting a bit of a swap there. I mean, even taking a peek, right? Like, this has been uh, quite quite the set so far. I I'm curious how the Mirage pick's gonna go. We have seen, uh, like, Sandstorm, for example, I think is the most notable, really go far with this character. Um, Chandra. Chandra oh, obviously, well. not not as far, but you know there are these there are these players that do play Mirage. Definitely has a dedicated following. Maybe maybe this is it. Maybe this is what we need. Maybe this is the difference. Put a little sand on it. You know we did see the spear do amazingly, and so really you're swapping the sword for the scythe here. And so far the scythe already looks to be doing decently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, I do want to say uh, you mentioned last game. Uh, you're quite strong against lands whenever you're directly uh, below them. I do wonder if Comer has an axe, because axe is super, super strong against lands. But seeing this swap, letting swap over to the Mirage, um, potentially favoring the Scythe in those scenarios instead, it does kind of make sense. I mean, Tahir, uh, at least in the first stock, took uh, Comer really far out with that lands. If you have Scythe, I mean, you can't really afford that to the same extent, because you can just nair you. Yeah, right? Like, it's, it's that simple. And I, I'm kind of wondering the same, right? Because you're right. Like, Act has been historically throughout all of Brawlhalla Esports. Just kind of the, I don't know, I'm losing to Lance. What do I pick? Usually the answer is Axe. But in the same vein, Lance players have learned how to play around it and just play the matchup better overall. But I don't know. It's not looking great for Coma right now. Throwing out that side stick, even if it had connected, not enough damage on Tahir for it to be at any risk of KOing. Gonna struggle to get this weapon, gets caught on the jump, hit by the recovery, and now the weapon's been taken away, and Coma is hungry and also without a stock. Pick up that stock. Basically a full stock lead going into what is the game point for Coma. He's gonna have to try and stick to this stock as well as he can. But he's going off stage immediately. Able to get back up with a pretty clean Zare though. And here it starts. It begins. It begins Flambo. Oh, he's getting back up though. He's been getting back up consistently from these from now on. Okay, tries to go for the again, and that was worth it because had it connected, that SIG hit extremely hard. That would have been the stock almost for certain. Neutral SIG, not gonna have enough juice. Comer just looking for it, but are you gonna keep mashing the SIG button or are you gonna have to be a little bit more tricky? There's an end light. I like the pogo here as well. I'm surprised we haven't seen the down SIG. There we go, we get a ground. Well, there it is. That's gonna be enough. Okay, and Mirage doesn't have a whole lot of defense, but Light Orange should be enough for you to take at least one or two hits as long as you're not getting Sig by Scarlet. Oh, okay. That's, we back. That's a big start at the end of Siggy GC as well. Such a smart option. Whoa. Saw here now. Oh, but he's aggressive with it. He's able to find that Sair. Is he looking for something? Down Sig. when people get sent launching off of the stage they will mash their recovery first because they want to get as much height as they can and not get punished for it right the closer you are to the stage if you do your recovery the more likely you're going to get punished for it because there's some end lag on those moves but you got caught by the immediate weapon throw and that's kind of the risk that you play. Sometimes people do dodge first immediately so that they can have their dodge back again by the time they get to the stage. But this time, that was not the option that was picked for, though it probably would have gone through the weapon throw. Yeah, and I mean, we opened this stream by saying we're going to be seeing some names that we haven't been seeing, uh, that we have not seen earlier. Uh, now, Tahir, that's not really true because Tahir, as we mentioned, been playing for a super, super long time uh, in EU and does actually have, let me go ahead and double check so I don't uh, say it uh, wrong. He has 15 top 32s, which then all wow. were in EU. Uh, so yeah, Tahir has definitely been around. Comer, 
on the other hand, I'm looking over into the bracket to try and see which games he has had. Uh, and it looks like he has had pretty strong games uh, overall, except for against Welfare, where he went three, down a one two, and a three, which Welfare is actually a player that managed to get into top eight on winner's side, and we're going to be seeing him later as well. Uh, but we're going into this next game. It is going to be match point uh, for Introvert Tsar here. And this is like interesting to see as well. Oh, Tahir almost got a clean one right there because Comer, I'm looking at the stats here and all, all I see was some Mordex here from the Summer Championships in EU in 2022. That, that, that's the only stat I see here for Comer, right? And so clearly got 129th place in that tournament. It would have make it all the way to top eight in this one, roughly, you know, a year and a half later, but this could potentially be the end of the run as Tahir already has gotten the first stock. He's looking to rack on extra damage. These D-Lights just keep catching oh Comer, Lord. man. Yeah, and he's able to follow up with that Sarah as well. Comer having a hard time navigating around this land. It's the same land is that, I mean, he was doing so very well again. It's in the very, very first game of the set. Able to find so many of the D-Lights. Tahir not falling for them this time around. Oh, that was... That, 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 dude, my, I, I swear, my heart. To catch the unarmed down sig, the break dance, the flare, coming out and securing that first stock. Hopefully not a little too late. We did see in that last game that Comer was able to get those strings together and really bring the damage. And so I'm hoping maybe we can get some of that recreated. But a bit of a gutsy return to stage gets punished by Tahir with a side air. For any kind of option here, throwing out Sears kind of left and right, hoping that Comer is going to end up inside one of them. But he's having a hard time finding the punishes. He finally able to get that side there in. So small foot just as quickly. Tahir gets back on stage and throws out the second one. This time around, that's going to be the knockout. Sticking to the lands still. A dedicated follower of the lands. Double and like Comer gonna have the scythe guess the pickup and the conversion all in one swift motion But needs a little bit more whiffs the punish on that as well You're not allowed to whip at this point You're too far behind the hits and need to connect and Tahir is just going blow for blow with the stock lead You cannot have that happen if you're Comer right now, but just is struggling to not get tagged There it is some more down six maybe another one in the near future Beautiful dodge the on the second hit of side oh, light. And that was so close, but the side signature is going to be able to close it out either way. Homer has a fighting chance here, but Tahir, he's been looking so strong all throughout the set. I don't know. I don't know if I have faith, Flymo. Yeah, especially if you don't take that weapon out of play. Now Tahir can just start throwing out that down sig is a very popular one, and sig as well. But it's clear Tahir doesn't look as comfortable on the hammer, but it doesn't matter because so much damage has been racked up. Mashes down air out of hit stun, and that's just going to be the game. And not only is it the game, it's going to be the set. It is going to be the set indeed. Comer is going to be completely knocked out of the tournament with that one. And Introvert Tahir will be advancing throughout the bracket where he will face off against Fridasol, but that will come uh, a little bit later. Yeah, no, great stuff that we've seen so far. We're going to go ahead and take a little bit more of a plunge into the elimination side of bracket. But first, we're going to go to a quick break. When we return, we'll be back with more Brawlhalla Trial of Ymir. Did I get that right, Polly? Close enough, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Right after this, we'll see you in a little bit.
and we are back with more North Africa and Middle Eastern. You know, I should have done that the other way around. Middle East, North Africa, MENA action for the trial of, I'm going to try it again, Ymir. How do you say it? Pa still, say st it? Still, still close enough, Ymir. I mean, uh, Ymir. I mean it's... it's, Ymir. it's, it's it yeah, that, that's definitely a lot better. We are indeed back. We just got to see uh, two amazing sets. We got FXL versus Poe in the winners finals and the first round in the elimination side. We had Introvert Ta here and Comer. So far, I mean, I think we've set a pretty good tone for the rest of the tournament. We've been seeing, we've been seeing some pretty good gameplay, Flambo. I, I mean, this is kind of lit. Yeah, no, I'm very impressed by what we've seen so far, uh, especially as we get introduced to new regions, I'm always curious to determine what their flavor is, right? When we first really started seeing South America, for example, it became very obvious early on that it was like, oh, these guys like to scrap, huh? Okay, and you could pick out South America from if you took 100 different videos of Brawlhalla, and then you were like, which one was the South American players in? You could do it without being able to see the names. It was that distinct, right? And so as we're in MENA, I'm curious to see kind of what that flavor is. What spice do they like to use? Are they Old Bay? Are they Adobo? Are they Trader Joe's seasoning blend? I, I need to know what their choice is. Yeah, and it looks like uh, we have been getting a little bit of a taste test on that, no pun intended. Uh, but we are going to be getting a little bit uh, of a mix here since uh, we have some European influences. We have fried us all in the lobby. Uh, we mentioned it before, it's obviously a pretty big deal in this tournament. Uh, the EU players in the uh, tournament. Now, I am looking at the bracket, and if I am seeing this correctly, fried us all is actually the only player uh, out of those EU players that has been able to break top eight. And we are going to be seeing him next going up against Tahir. Okay. Fried us all, the one, the only, the goat, <laughs> hanging on by, by a thread, but hanging on nonetheless. Gonna see how far of a run he can make, but I am curious to see how the other side of that elimination bracket will play out as well, because there are some names on that side that I'm not too familiar with, and one of those players will eventually end up going up against the winner of this set and so we are gonna have quite a bit of some what, what's the word i'm looking for here i guess just new episodes if you will <laughs> of brawl okay. esports here just because the, we, we've never seen the script written in this way before it's an it, it's it's a new season it's a new season it's literally the the first episode of the new season so uh, we are indeed going to be seeing uh, a lot of things for the very first time as as yeah as i think you beautifully put it we're going to find what kind of flavor the mena players are rocking and it looks like we have the players getting ready in the lobby yet again it is going to be tahir going up against fried assault and i want to very quickly check right fried assault eu player tahir Place, uh, has been playing in EU for a very long time. So that means if they have ever fought each other, it means that Introvert Tahir, or just Tahir, had the ping disadvantage. And I can confirm that game-wise, Tahir has a positive win rate against Tridoso. Okay. Okay. We'll take uh, it. Now, I don't know how telling that could, I don't know how telling that is because I don't know when those when those games were, were played or a, a, anything like that, but it's just food for thought. Okay. No, you know, the the stats matter, Polly. And so it, that lets us know it's been done before and it most certainly can happen again. Granted, I have a saying here that Fridesol currently PR 13, whereas Tahir was PR 356 in EU. And so definitely quite a bit of a gap there, but Things are different now. We're in a different region. It's on my turf. You know, everything's different. If the Lakers are playing on the home court versus away, you're going to get two very different experiences. So, won't be too surprised if perhaps this is the difference that was needed. 
I would agree with you, but I don't watch any sports other than esports. But it looks like we are getting ready into the ready to start. Tahir is hovering over the last map to try and pick it. We have Miami Dome and a small fortress of Alliance left on the field. Uh, I wonder what is running through these players' minds right now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking the same. I mean, granted, we've seen uh, this rocket lance from Taha really, really do some damage, but Fried Assault, quite a bit of a different beast here. Granted, it's going to be the second time we're going to be seeing Fate on the screen today, um, which is cool. It's, it's a breath of fresh air just considering how rarely we see her at the upper echelon of gameplay. But it looks like Taha's going to be the one to get the first weapon and actually gets that down air as well. Goes for the end light, but Fry jumps immediately out of that one. We are getting started, and we do have a fairly even start so far. Both players. I mean, this is a tennis game. This game. Th this game has a lot of pressure built up around it. They're probably, they're probably trying to chill out for just the first couple of seconds, right? Surely, Fridasol or Tahir wouldn't randomly just get a crazy stock. Oh man! And I think Tahir like really played the mind game on Fry on that one. Went for that side sig pretty much three times out of a similar setup. But I think after the first two times where it didn't connect, I think Fridasol thought that that dodge option was safe again. Because he was like, there's no way you're gonna do it a third time, right? And Tahir was like, no, actually it was me conditioning you so that it would eventually hit. Now Tahir trying to control the ground. Fridasol is trying to look for any kind of opening, able to get it there. I think he had that dodge read set up, but wasn't able to get that attack out in time. Tahir very quick on that wake up, or punish rather. Fry has to take a stock and he has to take it quickly, but Tahir oh. is not willing to go down. Even the Sears, that's still not enough. Oh, I like the attempt from the setup with the weapon throw there from Fry. The line wasn't quite perfect to go ahead and force that option out of Tahir. And now Tahir pushing a little bit further ahead, manages to get that down to. Oh, tries to get a read with the side air as well. Fry gets a stare into the stage. Maybe a downer here to close it out. No, wow. Gravity cancel and light. And the weapon throw actually is going to clear the way for Tyre to get back into the stage. But a D light from Fry forcing Tyre off into the corner here. Can't find the final blow. Oh. Gravity cancel side stick to get the wall done. <laughs> Fry can't KO him. Yeah, Tyre is still fine. I mean, he went for that GC and light, the GC side stick. How do you react to an option like that off stage? Out of all of the things that you're trying oh, to prepare no. yourself to punish, those <laughs> are not the ones you're looking out for. And Tyre with the DC, Fridasol is down on his last. Yeah, Freya really struggling to get this first stock here. Maybe a side air will finally KO here. Goes for the forbidden signature with that down sig. It's not going to be enough. You know, he, he, he has to find a hit. D-Light, finally, okay, Fry, able to get a stock. Not even gonna go for the weapon star. I'm gonna let Tahir go ahead and pick it up. Says, you know what, I'm better. Just staring into no nothingness between the stocks. Able to pick up that side light. No massive follow-ups on top of it. Tahir, he already has this full stock lead. He doesn't need to go oh. for anything crazy. Couple of nares, couple of sares. Bada big, bada boom. That's a two stock finish, man. 1-0 on the board. Yeah, no, I... Uh, <laughs> Tahir made that one look a little bit too easy. I think Fry was struggling way too much getting that first stock. I mean, even if you look at the, the graph on stats, dot, I mean, like the live stats, I'm like, it just ends up being like a straight line <laughs> for a while. For, for Fry, Fry was not able to get the hits. Yeah, Fry was not able to get the hits. That was, that was tough. I mean, 244 damage to the 498 dealt by Introvert Tahir, which honestly, a bit on the lower end as far as damage goes. That lets you know that Tahir was really able to get those stocks pretty efficiently. Not deep red, really kind of like orangish, lice red was kind of the area that he was getting those stocks. So really playing well on the side of Tahir, but... Fry needs a, a pick-me-up. Yeah. And I do I, I do want to say, not to create a conspiracy or anything, but I did a, a, a little bird whispered in my ear that Fridasol is allegedly playing on Wi-Fi. Um, and I don't know, perhaps that could have some kind of impact in what kind of decisions that he's making inside of, these, uh, inside of this game. Uh, nonetheless, he's doing really well for himself on this, on this first stock. Looks like the Wi-Fi isn't a problem.
Oh, he jumped three times. Okay. He really jumped three times. <laughs> I, I, I could not believe it. But he gets to turn around here, goes for a read, and that's just going to be the stock because you can see because Fry jumped three times, this is this is how you flip it. Because Fry jumped three times, it means that Taher had to burn the jumps that many times to make sure that Fry couldn't get back, but he wasn't able to KO Fry, and so Fry was able to get the turnaround with Taher okay. with no resources to spend. Friday Soul with the funny options going upwards. Tahir is able to bounce back though. Controlling the stage with his hammer. He needs this knockout and he needs it now. That stair was so close to hitting, but it's just <laughs> barely out of reach. Friday Soul keeps going for this weapon throws upwards. Is this the new meta? I have not seen that before. I was gonna say, when we casted together at BCX last year, Polly, I don't even remember who Fry was playing, but he did that setup at least four times in a game. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I remember. I do remember. It was X-Ray Cool J. I yes, do remember. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so it looks like he's trying to keep it alive. And honestly, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe he just gives him a little bit of a... A motivational boost because at the very least Fry does have a full stock lead in the second game. Yeah, it could very well be that Fry has all found the tech, or at least his very own tech that works out for him. Full stock lead indeed. Fry is all looking so much stronger this game so far. He's able to get that there. That's scary, but Tyre is able to work his way around him. Who weapon throw? The weapon throw. Yeah, again. <laughs> starting to become a common theme here in this set. And like, weapon throws don't do a lot of damage at all. Like, at all. <laughs> so it's like, hey, you know, get what you can get, but the follow-up afterward is really kind of what we're looking for. Ooh, beautiful weapon throw from Tahir there to kind of delay that weapon pick up a little bit longer. I mean, what would be interesting in that case is a lot of people are, are looking at unarmed and saying unarmed is super good. Maybe Fry just doesn't think it's like it's no big deal if I'm unarmed. Like unarmed is good. I can do fine on it. Oh, oh, no Nair turnaround with the Nair. I thought he was gonna send him back. Super close. Goes for the dare. Nice. Yeah, no, he. Okay, all right. He's able to pick it up. I think he had like a knockout two times there. I think. I think he was going for a little bit extra something for the viewers. Yeah, you know, the content creator brain really does uh, <laughs> seep the in at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just takes over. But I'm with it. No, Fry was looking very, very good in that game. I'm curious to see if maybe we can kind of keep some of that up as we push on forward. Because that first game did not look great. I'm going to keep it a buck. It did not look great for, uh, for Fry. But game two substantially better we're not getting any swaps of legends we're picking the exact same two that we've seen before and we're just gonna go ahead and hop right into game number three this time we have a point on the board for each of the members three, participating two, here being Tahir and fried assault yeah with the first game with the first game and the second one being so drastically different it could just be a case of Tahir has a very, very particular playstyle, right? And Friday Soul maybe just needed a little bit of a of a refresher. Like, all right, you're gonna go for your for your D6, you're gonna go for your Sairs, and then now he's able to deal with that. Tahir, it's all gonna come down to if he's able to adjust in a time, because so far Friday Soul, I mean, he's he's dominating a lot of the space right now, both on the air and uh, on the ground. Tahir able to pick up that Sair. Not able to finish it off though. Oh, that's gonna be a punish into the end sig. Not enough for it to KO. Tries to gravity cancel and charge one. And it's not, not gonna connect either. Tahir though gets scooped out of the recovery. The dodge was perfectly timed to go through the weapon throne. Because of that, had a chance to hold on to that stock a little bit longer, but it was not enough. Fridasol able to take the first lead of this game. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> okay. He just kept tapping forward on his keyboard and then <laughs> pressed end light and it worked. <laughs> Who could believe it? A, a, a weapon like Scythe able to pull something like that off? I cannot believe it. Fridasol, even more comfortable lead. It looks it, it, it looks like Fridasol, th there's no stopping it sign. Tahir is not able to break this neutral bubble of, of, of Fridasol. Yeah, 
this hammer is not getting the job done trying to get these stomps keeps getting stuffed out that's gonna be a three hit maybe one more attempt no fratus gonna go back to stage charges a reverse slide charged nsig and it's not gonna be enough that orb is gonna hit and the forbidden signature and the down sig the teleportation is able to take the stock away from tahir definitely wasn't expecting that fratus all plays so tricky I don't know. I don't know. If we can call it forbidden anymore. It looks like it's allowed for Friday so because it keeps working. I call it forbidden because it's not good. I'll stand by yeah. it. I don't think it's I, good. I, I agree. I agree. But Friday so he makes it work, man. I don't know how, but okay. Tahir, I mean, he he is behind, and he is not able to catch up. All of his efforts have gone unanswered so far, and this is the last stock of this game. His last opportunity to be able to put something more onto the scoreboard before he's going to go into the deficit. He's able to get that end light out to Pridasov. On the unarmed. Okay, Tahir. Ooh, manages to weave around that down air. Gets close enough to get some turnaround end light. Trying not to get nicked here, but that's going to connect. That down air doesn't quite punish. Couldn't line it up well enough. And at this point, Fry is getting way too many unanswered hits. Tahir slowly crumbling as that end sig is a little bit of hope, but you need to get the stock and then another one. Well, what a read. Yeah, <laughs> Fry was nowhere to be seen there. Fry is looking. But he's not able to find anything. Fridasol is able to pick up on these punishes. Getting that side lights here. Throwing Tahir off stage. He's able to get back up though with a GCD light recovery. Almost taking Fry out. Alright, weapon throw after weapon throw. Tahir still can't find the blow. At this point, Fry basically just needs one connection. D-Light recovery unarmed will be enough. A side sig, down sig will be enough. Tahir does find a recovery to go ahead and send Fry down to the final stock. But at this point, the damage has been done. Tahir needs the perfect hammer stock to go ahead and bring this one back. And I don't think he's confident enough in his hammer, but it's what he has to work with right now. And that's it. A single Sarah is all it took. And that's going to be Fry's all two and one on the scoreboard as we move into what will be the match point for Friday Soul, the tournament uh, match for Introverts out here. Okay. Yeah, that one was a little bit tough. We saw Tahir get that falling side air on that last stock uh, and was like, oh, what do I do now? Do I go for side light on hammer? And side light was not the play. <laughs> side light was not the play, but sometimes it, it's actually really interesting. I feel for hammer, people don't know a lot about some of the things you can get at low damage ranges with it just because most brawlhalla players are not hammer aficionados usually it's they play the other weapon and then the hammer is there kind of ends up being the way that it plays out but generally around like white if you get a falling side air on someone you can get a neutral light guaranteed a lot of the time but went for the side light it didn't connect we go next yeah, a lot of stuff, especially on Grounded Hammer, you have so many follow-ups that are really tight in terms of dodge frames, where if you're mm -hmm. especially fighting a player that's not super good at uh, super good at uh, countering that, they're going to find a lot of struggle. I've always said the difference between a good Hammer player and an amazing Hammer player is their Grounded gameplay. Uh, be, to be able to use, especially, I mean, end light and side light efficiently uh, can make a world of a difference. Tahir sticking to that Hammer. Uh, we've been seeing some magic happen. Uh, on the lance, potentially the hammer Three, will pick two, up, uh, one, but we are going into this last, potentially last game. It's either the last game or match five uh, at this point. Fight us over to Tahir. Okay, let's see. Tahir manages to get the first blow there with that side air. Trying to chase Fry, manages to connect that end light as well. So many active frames on that move. Even if you whiff, they walk by you. There's still a chance that you'll be able to catch them up in it. There we go. Another end light as well. Going for these reads with these side lights. Wants to get the conversion either through the nair or the down air. But Fry's not allowing it to happen. And now Fry staying extremely close. Sticky but not swinging. Trying to see if you can bait something out of Tahir to make it easier to get the follow up. Wow, what a side tick. Goes way okay. deep and just tucks him in a bed dude Friday right? so he recognizes those all openings from a miles distance and whenever he sees it he just goes for it Tahir 
going to be working from behind at the beginning of the game this time around as well. Last time around, you were just in this position and you weren't able, uh, you weren't able to ever completely even it out. But it looks like Tahir able to find that recovery. Is he going to be able to find this knockout relatively quickly? Oh, wow. Okay. Jumping right over the cloud there. Active frames must have just stopped. But Tahir still trying to close out this stock. Is unable to do it with that lance. Throws it away. Picks up a hammer. A stomp side air will be enough. A raw side air maybe in the corner will be enough. But not from center stage at this damage range. Tahir is struggling to find the hits. Yeah, says yeet. I don't want to take more damage while I'm holding this hammer. I'm just going to swap on over. So still no knockout coming out uh, coming uh, out here from Tahir. Fradasol doing such a good job at sustaining these stocks, building up that damage ever so slowly, but steadily. Finds that D-Light, not able to connect it, but Tahir not able to find the appropriate wake up to be able to punish it. Okay, turn around and light. light. That's it, that's it. Perfect, okay. So now, Tahir not trailing behind by too much. Able to go ahead and queue up another Rocket Lance as well. So there we have it. Should keep the fresh one. <laughs> All right. This oh, is amazing. Are... This is amazing. That's a, that's a gif right there. <laughs> <laughs> Do something. Come on. Starving. Weapon, weapon throw going upward. Yeah, there's, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of starving right now. Tar punishing that with a side light. Building up a, just a little bit of damage. Looking for the recovery. Fry knows it. Has to be careful whenever you're over that hammer. Whoa. Hold on. Oh, he actually reads a high recovery with that side air there. I thought maybe we might see Tahir try to dip low and get the hammer recovery, but it's not the option that he chooses. And Fry manages to go ahead and close out the second stock with that orb recovery. And now we find ourselves in a position where Fry is looking pretty good, I'd say, to go ahead and win the set. Tahir not quite able to answer back, gets reverse nared. And we just take those sometimes. That's okay. Right, so having a lot of control in the offstage encounter that they had right there, able to rack up even more damage. Tahir on the lance, trying to find any Sierra or anything here. We've been seeing throughout the entire game, Tahir doing a lot of signatures. We're just trying to like predict where Fridasol is going to be, which generally works really well, especially for Tahir. But Fridasol is just so precise with his movements that they just don't connect. Able to get that Sierra in though, I think if anything, in Introvert Tahir's signatures could be his downfall. Yeah, no, this is definitely a... Uh... Looking to be a bit rough. Granted, it's in the realm of possibility, right? You're in light orange, you're scarlet. You have a pretty decent health pool to work with. Oh, not after getting tagged like that, though. You still have been unable to find a hit on this final stock of Fridasol. And at this point, Fry's putting you in the range where the signatures are becoming more potent of a threat. Side light Sayer in the corner is going to be more potent of a threat. Ensig, a threat. Everything is looking to be. Oh my god, even the weapon that throw. That weapon throw, threat. yeah, that weapon <laughs> throw is a threat right there. The D light, though, Tars, no options. And that is going to be the set. Fridasol closing it out 3 and 1, taking out Introvert Tahir completely out of the tournament and advancing further throughout the eliminations bracket. What a set. Okay, cool. So. Fry still managing to keep the, the EU dreams alive while we're in Meta. Gonna be moving on to the uh, elimination semifinals, right? So get real deep there, guaranteed top five, I guess, if you will. Um, or I guess you could say fifth place, because, right, technically two people are gonna get fifth. But on the other side of things, you are going to have Welfay and F is what I yeah, see I, I, here. I, I, I saw you looking at start.gg like, uh, why it's not fully me it's showing me the full name? And let me click on and see if it shows the full name. Yeah, no, his, 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 his gamer tag is the letter F. And I do believe from what I saw earlier on start.gg, this is the first tournament that this player uh, is playing in. Okay, so... so uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned earlier, uh, I, I think you used Tekken as the example of how you have a lot of this skill that doesn't really get exposed. Uh, we, we literally have a guy, the, his, entire, his, his entire username is F, he's never played in any tournament. This is about as anonymous as you can get. Yeah, I mean, 
So much so that apparently looking at it has awakened the hiccups in me? Question mark? I was in here like, what? I'm just like, oh, I guess that's what we're, that's the kind of time we're on today. But it's interesting. It's interesting. F, I, I guess there's a different, you know, meaning to put an F in chat now. Oh, <laughs> with this guy around. Yeah, put an F in chat for F. That's that's honestly great. I mean, if you're if you're a top player, that's amazing. <laughs> I love those I love those rhymes that Twitch chat has. The the chance almost makes me smile. Uh, we do also have on the other side of this game we have Welfe or Welfie, uh, which to my knowledge is a great sort of player. Uh, now Ooh. we could be seeing something out coming out. I know you get excited about great sword. <laughs> yeah, I see here Welfe from Kuwait with PR 537 on the EU server so that's like there's some stuff here I mean I'm looking at a uh, kind of what the history is saying here and it looks like in the EU spring championships last year they got 97th place and also in the winter championships well they got 97th place so uh, yeah, I, I got the I have the core Hala pulled up and we're seeing Jae Yun, we're seeing Val, we're seeing Hatsuri, we're seeing Jala sword across the board. The prophecy okay. is holding true even thus far. Uh, but it does look like we are waiting for one of the players to connect into the lobby. Uh, so uh, we are only able to speculate so far. So far, I want to say this tournament. It's kind of a long time ago since we saw it, but don't forget that we still have FXL and Poe in the uh, Poe in the uh, in the bracket. Especially Poe waiting in the eliminations final. Want to see what he's able to do against whoever he's going against? Yeah, I feel very similarly as well. Especially kind of in a realm where like at the top level, uh, the the legend variety is starting to shake up a little bit, right? I think there was a while, especially kind of go into bcx where everyone was just kind of like oh man axe is so good axe is so strong blah 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 axe 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 kind of was chefing whatever and then jayun won bcx right and so that means great sword won but also i like to look at it as sure jayun does have a great sword but we can't forget that jayun has just like a normie snormy sword as well right and so like if we do end up seeing some of that it's going to be, as you were saying before, leading into the sword prophecy. We're going to have Jay Yoon. We've seen <gasps> Val already today. We've seen two different fates. All right. And then on top of that, we've had Hattori as well. And so really, the, the range is kind of spread across. Nothing in the realm of... We saw Vector as well. Legends that we have seen before, Vector still a little bit more on the underrepresented side especially since you stopped playing him as much but overall we have quite a bit of variety they're all legends that have like ha had their moment in the limelight at some point or another i know the hiccups are like hilarious no, it's, it's all good man it's all good you're fine <laughs> hold on let me hit they the, add to the commentary they, they, they are they add to the commentary now i am doing some investigation work uh says as you mentioned uh, the letter F, quite an anonymous name. We are not quite sure what to expect. I do believe that I have been able uh, to find their core Hala page, and we are looking at a 2,500 player in the uh, in the uh, Middle Eastern region. Now, of course, Elo doesn't say much. It is 2,500 with a win rate of 86.11%. In terms of the legends, where I'm seeing a Teros, I'm seeing an Orion, I'm seeing an Asuri. Uh, really hard to tell what is going to happen uh, here. Really hard to tell what to expect, since obviously Korhala does not tell you really the full story. Um, I'm just excited to see what's going to be going down. We're seeing the core locked in so far. Okay. And so, it looks like, I mean, I see this Jayun getting clicked in here from welfare and then on the other side uh, i'm assuming this must be f on the taros just using perhaps a different in-game tag uh yes uh we're, we're, we're I, I do believe that is correct and we are seeing welfare again we're seeing both the great sword and the sword coming out in the form of a jay pick okay so this is gonna be good we're gonna be cooking a little bit Three. 
Two. All right, so One. this is that, that battle pass skin for Jayun as well. I think, is this maybe the level two of it? Yeah, where he has like <laughs> part of his face covered a little bit. The wings aren't like fully actualized, but he's on his way there. I'm not going to be able. I'm, I'm not going to get over the fact that that the that the game verdict is F. It looks so funny on the scoreboard, but I mean, <laughs> potentially, potentially, small small name for a lot of gameplay. We're gonna have to wait and see. So far, 28 seconds into the game, we have quite an even start here. Both players just kind of shaking out this init initial neutral game interaction, trying to see whoever can build up a lead for nice. themselves. The first Wealth able to pick up that side signature, throwing uh, F uh, a bit off screen. And we can see Wealth, uh, you know, that weapon has been there for a while. Now it in fact just despawned, but has opted to lean into the sword pretty much the entire time. That falling side air might be enough. Grab kept this little side sig is going to be the punish on the recovery as well. And so really just great stuff all around. Get the first stock with the sword. When they're unarmed, switch to great sword. Great sword does well in a hammer as well because you're able to outrange it pretty easily. And so really just doing a great job of playing to the win conditions that he set for himself here. F uh, not quite able to find these openings. Yeah, well, playing super well around that hammer so far, as you mentioned. F. Going off stage here, looking for the recovery, not able to pick it up, and the dare that was so close to be, that, that was so close to being massive for welfare. But it looks like maybe he doesn't even need it. I mean, he's still building up a ton of damage here. F is gonna have to turn up soon. Is going to be able to find that stock. Yeah, a little bit of a self-destruct coming out on the side of Welfare there. Got a little bit scared, tried to fast fall with the side air, and then use the reverse recovery to get the wall touch, and just didn't quite space it out correctly. Could have done it, just needed to time the fast fall a little bit differently. But with that said, I mean, F. Answering back here, this is Taros. You know, you get your end lights, you get your D lights, you get your side light nares. Like the damage comes really quickly, even if you're just getting a stray hit here, a stray hit there. Those three stray hits that we just saw from F have gone ahead and turned this around. This is an even game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Wealthy able to get that quick knockout though with the NSIG. I want to say evening it out because it felt like F really took control of the game there, but no, he's actually, he, he's he is actually in the lead with that, and F is gonna have to try and find some of the magic that he just had with his axe. It looks like well, for, he's getting a lot of he's getting a lot of free hits right now. Ooh, okay. Now can F close it out here? Tries to go for the the ground pound in there. If you hold into the wall, you can kind of do it like that where you don't fall down. You kind of like slow as you're falling to keep covering that area. I think yeah. they call it like stalling or something like that, but yeah. did not Emergency quite work there. <laughs> Let's be picking up the great sword. Quick string to build up some of that extra damage. Trying to get him to knock out oh. range. Able to find that side signature, throwing him super far out. Grab the cancel move to instantly get the finisher, but it's not going to be connecting. Those D lights every single time. He does like a he, he does a string over the side, and F just ends up being inside of it. And Welfe with a string able to close out that stock, starting yeah. this set with himself on top. That was well played from Welfe there. Definitely caught F sleeping uh, more than a few times by going for that side light into the D light bridge over the corner of the stage. And then this time around was like, you're probably going to jump out of hit stun and was able to read it with a Sayer. And so really well played. And that's the thing is that like great sword. The, the, the opener isn't really going to do much to anyone when they're trying to recover back onto the stage, right? If anything, it's more like a, a st stagger to make them be like, ah, what are you doing? But people will see you with something and think, ah, I just saw the greatsword player do a move. This is my opening to get back onto the stage, right? And that's where Three, that downlight two, bridge go one, over the lip of the stage is able to catch you. And so really F needs to look out for that. And also I would, it would be cheeky, but Welfe could go for end light, side light, D light finisher, which spikes. You don't see it a whole lot because most people don't use it, but the greatsword does have a finisher that spikes you if it catches you airborne. 
I love this because you're a great sword player and I'm an axe player. So we kind of get both sides of the uh, both 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 sides of the story here. Because if I'm the terrorist player in all of these interactions, I mean, you see a player miss a move, you need these punishes. F needs to find every punish that he can to be able to rack up damage. He doesn't have that same level of uh, of momentum with his attacks. You get those punishes and they deal a ton of damage, and that's basically all you need to do. But Welfare consistently doing a good job at covering up for himself, using clever baits to be able to rack up this damage. So far, though, in this second game, the first stock is shaking out very, very evenly. Okay, and just a downer from Welfare is going to be all that it takes to get that first stock, and deciding to stick with the sword, and I don't blame you. You've been able to get this lead with the sword this far, and also, Sometimes when it comes to playing Greatsword, you just need the difference. You just need a, a little different mix added so people are, are unable to figure out your game plan. If you stick to one weapon too long, sometimes you end up in situations where people are able to adapt and your game plan kind of falls apart. Either way though, I mean that down sig from F, that was much needed. Able to pick up that end light, trying to patrol the ground here. Well, for doing a really good job at staying out of range, sweeping in with that side light, which always has just a little bit more range than you think it does. Able to catch back up with a side light there, though, holding that ground pound. I mean, if you miss it in the first place, you're going to keep holding it. At a certain point, you just kind of ride it out. And honestly, Welfare almost got hit, had to kind of drift out of the way of the hitbox for a moment there. Okay. They see it again, that stalled ground pound into the stage, holding you in that position, being the absolute reason why Welfare could not get back to the stage. And now we actually have a lead for F. Time will tell how... Time will tell how well he's going to be able Ooh. to protect it. Doesn't look like, like he needs to start going for the weapon guarding instead. Very, very successful in doing so as well. Getting Wealthy all the way down to orange. F now. Looking for any kind of call out auction, uh, option. I mean, he has a little bit of momentum under his belt going out through the signatures. You're on Terra, so you could very well with two or three Wells to bring together attacks. This could be a very close to a knockout. Welfare needs a D-Light recovery, and the moment I say it, it is granted. And now we have a final stock scenario. But F got great damage. Oh, be careful coming down here, though. Okay, cool. So we're in, like, Stomp Sayer will guaranteed send you off stage positioning, and then you can kind of go for some sort of edge guard. But it's going to be hard to beat Greatsword on the ground with Hammer. Keep it in the air. Juggle with these end lights. Stomp Sayer is going to be the name of the game, and F is able to win game two over Welfare. Going to be winning two, game two indeed. I am curious as to seeing if Welfi is going to be going to a legend swap. We mentioned it earlier. We were looking over at the picks that he has been playing as of uh, late. We're seeing a lot of sword. You have a lots of different options there. Uh, I think he had the Val, he had the Jala, he had the Hatsuri. Uh, but we are moving into the next game, and it looks like Welfi. He he ha he puts a lot of trust into this great sword man. And I get it. It's a good weapon. I also put a lot of trust into the Grey Sword. It won BCX. Clearly, it can do it. You know, if you could look at this as BCX Grand Finals. This is kind of versus use right here. You know, <laughs> it's, it's the same I mean, same, same, same picks in a way. I mean, I, I, we got that that established so far. Teros and Jayun in the top eight becoming more and more popular all throughout. I do want to mention. I am amazed we have not seen Battle Boots yet. We have not seen a single Tesco, but perhaps that'll come later. Yeah, maybe just not too uh, too popular there. I mean, granted, well, that's gonna be punched oh, down. Another here. one. Those don't work out, but he keeps going for them. Welf has been able to punish both of the times that he's done that. Oof. It's caught yet again with that D light bridge over the corner. Swapping over to the sword. Going for yet another ground pop. Welf this time around. F. Uh, let go of it just in time to where he's able to move out. Not able to find that punish. Getting closer and closer to a knockout. You need a Sayer, you need a recovery, you need a D-Light, you need a something right now. And that is going to be done deal. You have the stage control, keep it, stay patient. But F with a nice dodge back up, able to retake stage control. Only to, only to lose it moments after. 
Let's see, gets the scoop with the reversal. D like ground pound doesn't line it up correctly. And that gives Welfa an opportunity to get back onto the stage, not only with the stock, but the chance to go for a D like ground pound or rather recovery of his own to go ahead and secure that one. And so trailing behind by a little bit now, F has to find a stock. Welf is still working the magic of his great sword, which has been able to deal up damage so very well in the past. But F sticking to the true combos, the bread and butter, quick stomps here. Doesn't have to get any more complicated than that. You're on the Terrors, that's going to be able to knock out. Welfy though, as soon as he spawns back, uh, back onto the stage, he's able to deal out so much damage. F isn't able to find an opening. He does finally do so. And I mean, that's just so much damage, even out there, basically even. Okay, I'll take that back. Oof, yeah, and that one was tough. That one looked like it might have been unjumpable. Sometimes when you get that side light, D light, and uh, side light finisher, a lot of the times it's jumpable, but right there it looked like he might have been too low. And man, was able to get that nair so high toward the top KO box that there was no shot that we were going to see uh, F come back from that one. Man, F needs to dodge on these down, down air D light. Like, that, that is not true by any means, but. Just getting caught unaware because a lot of the time, oh, that might be the game. Gets oh. caught on the jump. Do you like ground pound could close it out here? Tries to actually just ground pound over the lip, but gets caught on the corner. Wow, what a read the down sig. You don't see that one every day. You can see Welfare is just trying to close this one out. And light for the D yep. light now. F has been able to get back up on the stage in these scenarios before. Welfare is able to pick up on that first edge guard. Allowing F to get back up onto the stage. He's able to find a couple of recoveries, but it could be too little too late. Another true combo. He has the axe in hand. Well, for you're basically one attack away. And it's going to be the Sarah. And it even fit, hit, it, it hits the funny angle, sending F straight down off of the Sarah. And that is going to be yet another game going over to Elfie. And you can see there's been so many times where F has tried to jump scare Welfi, right? Like it's been like, I'm going for ground pound. And then it's been a a test to can you react in time to see what I'm doing here and get out the way. And a lot of the times the answer was yes, but F didn't get punished for it. It was like, I'm doing the ground pound. You're like, whoa, and then you back out the way and then I'm able to do it. And then we kind of reset to neutral. That time, not only did he dodge the ground pound, he was able to weave off stage and sear him into the corner to get the KO. So that was extremely well played. Now we can see F is a little bit at wit's end. We get a swap over from the ter Teros to Ulgrim. We are getting the Ulgrim. We're getting yet another Lannis coming into play at this tournament. I do kind of like this Legend Swap coming out from F. I feel like last game, what really made me worried was I, I, I feel like we were seeing more and more hope Brahala coming out from F. We're seeing a lot of attacks where F wasn't really going to be hitting anyone other than than Casper the Ghost. We're seeing GC side sigs that just led Welfit to be able to get massive punishes. Perhaps swapping over to this Ulgrim is the kind of... Uh, is the is the swap that you need to regain that composure, especially that F had in the first game. Time will tell, we are loading in. Yeah, and this one's interesting too, because you know, it depends Three, who you ask. Two, I've always been a believer one, that Rocket Lance does really well in the Greatsword. I think it does extremely positively in the matchup, uh, just as far as like, it's a weapon that, you know, also does really well to control the ground, right? And it also just has faster frame data in terms of being able to stuff out a lot of the great swords options. And that side air can be really hard to anti-air with the great swords. If you do like a side air that's a little bit above ground height, the great sword side light isn't gonna reach it in that spot. But, you know, it's still great sword. If you get caught, you're still getting blended, bro. Like, it doesn't matter what <laughs> weapon you're using. Okay, enough. able to pick up that pick up on that ground pound. So far, the neutral seems to be going a lot better for F uh, as he's sticking to the plans. But well fit, perhaps will get adjusted to it. The side that's there isn't going to be enough to KO just yet. Swaps over to the axe. D Sig whips and Welfu with a beautiful punish, able to pick up that D light recovery. Just patrolling this ground. He's been finding these knockout so consistently and he's able to do so yet again as he finds himself an early lead here yeah and it's tough because f is getting beat 
beaten on the ground on these like left right mix ups that happen a lot when you're playing Brawlhalla where you're trying to weave in and out of the no man's land zone where it's like if I'm stacked directly on top of you do you know which side to throw your hitbox out on if you guess incorrectly you're gonna get punished F hasn't been winning in that many games <laughs> Yeah, been losing a lot of the been losing a lot of the 50-50s uh, against Wealthy throughout this game so far and throughout the set. D6 stacked is going to be able to pick up that stock though. Um, I think w w one of the major turning points, what would be the major turning point for F, is he's just able to find these knockouts because Wealthy not only is he slightly better at that damage buildup, he finds those knockouts. Now let's see. Oh, gets caught. Putting the, the head guard. above the corner, yeah. On both weapons, the edge guarding for Wealthy is so strong. The weapon throw, force after to the corner here. Coming in with these recoveries as well. Throws a weapon, manages to pick up a sword. We're in D-Light recovery territory from a platform, I think it'll KO, but not from the ground. Oop, falls out of that one. Okay, here Probably we go, a chance for F. Off. We're basically evened out now. To regain the composure was exactly what F needed. Did he finally manage to pull it off? Only time will tell. He misses that sidelight and Wealthy is going to be able to pick up that punish. Swapping over. He's actually going to be sticking to the sticking to the sword there. What do you think about that flambo? I would have expected him to swap over to the great sword. Uh, you know, honestly, I think the sword has been doing well, and this time we have a tri-platform layout. I think that sword is a bit better here just because of the fact that you do have those three platforms just easy to weevil across them and especially if you're standing on a platform and you do a d-light and somebody jumps into you you're gonna have that priority from using a grounded move right so that means it makes it a lot easier for you to kind of stuff your opponent coming in and welfare at this point i don't think he cares three d-light oh ground pounds he's talking to him oh it's gonna be tough Oh, that's game. For an opening, and that is going to be one string that's almost just barely no enough to knock air? out. Is it going to happen? Oh, he's able to get that deal I GC editing. So many times, Wealthy, every single time F has been on the corner, has been able to throw out one of those openings into the bridge, into the uh, into the finisher, surprising F. This time around, it didn't throw it out, and thus F didn't get stuck in it either. He's so damaged. Yeah, we need a rocket land stock right here. We need like side light, say yeah. or down air, say or down. You know, we gotta. First, you gotta get a hit, and you're not gonna find one. D light recovery is the name of the game, as Welfare is able to go ahead and pack up F in that set with the Jayun and my hiccup. Dude, those hiccups, they, they just refuse to go away. <laughs> They've been here for like the past 20 minutes. They're persisting, dude. Dude, they're, they're persistent. Sometimes, sometimes you just can't shake it off. Uh, but yeah, Welfi is going to be advancing throughout the bracket. And that does mean that we have our finalized top four in the bracket. It's going to be FXL Poe, uh, FXL and Poe, and Friday's All, and Welfi. The top four for the first MENA tournament uh, in the history of Brawlhalla and uh, we are I believe going to be following up yeah we're going to be following up soon on Welfi versus Friday so okay so that's exciting I'm happy that Fry was able to uh, go ahead and make it a little bit further into that bracket we're gonna figure out what's going on with the rest of the meta top four and my hiccups maybe they'll be gone right after this quick break do not go anywhere we'll be back with more trial of Emir
and welcome back with more trial of emir we're here for mena for the first time ever in brawlhalla history i'm flambo i'm joined with polly as we are getting down to the nitty gritty of this bracket what's popping polly I'm doing just fine, Flambo. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. I'm just taking a look over at the bracket for the tournament. We are moving into the last three sets that we are going to be seeing for the entire day. And uh, you already know, you know how this tournament format works. As we progress, the games will only get better and better from here on out. We still got Wealthy and Friday's old winner going up against Poe, winner of that, going up against FXL, which has been chilling in the grand finals since we started this stream. I hope you didn't forget about him yet. Oh yeah, FXL has been phenomenal, but we're going to have to wait just a little bit before we get to see some of them. Now, Wealthy versus Fridasol, which I mean, so I, I know you and Fry are like pretty pretty knit, right? Like how how much experience do you think Fry has against just great sword and mineral? I know y'all got Skeldra over there and stuff, but what well, what what's the word? I would not be too confident in telling you the answer to that. I think in general, especially compared to other regions, we don't really have that much greatsword representation, right? We have Skeldra, we have, you know, maybe Coco and Mini Mooner will, will, will swap over to that greatsword for a little bit. But in general, we don't really have too many greatsword players um, in the ranked queue. But I know that both... Uh, I, 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 okay, uh, but I do know that both Fridasol and Welfi play obviously quite a bit of ranked. I'm actually not sure if Welfi plays uh, in EU or MENA because uh, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern players and North African players actually play on EU to get more practice in. Um, would be interested to know as, uh, exactly which region everyone plays on. Okay. Well, I mean, so far, starting off to s seemingly quite fine. Fry has the lead ish as far as positioning goes gets the recovery and that'll be the stock we saw the sweat beats going off on welfare there so definitely not a problem whatsoever is just gonna go ahead and carry him off stage i guess I'm going to be carrying him off stage and that is going to be the stock fridasol chilling on this scythe swapping over to the orb now i want to see i, I want to see if we're going to be seeing those weapon throws upwards again flambo 100%. You already know Fry's thinking about it. He's plotting on it right now. When can I find the setup? <laughs> There's one. Hey, we'll take it. That time, a little bit more tactical, though, was used to weapon starve and get that orb. But Welfay, D Lights Air, gonna push Fry to the corner, try to get this edge guard, wait on the side a little bit, maybe corner guard. No, we're gonna trade spaces. Oh man, they are <laughs> dancing around each other, but Fry comes out on top with a weapon throw that doesn't really lead to anything. Now Fry just doesn't have a weapon. But hey, finds that scythe anyway. Able to get that scythe. Wealthy needs this knockout right now. And he's going to be actually going for quite a large commitment, running all the way out there for the GC sidelight. I guess scythe of all weapons. Very risky maneuver to be playing, but it's going to be working out well. He has that damage deficit. He has the great sword. Wealthy, we've been seeing so many times your great sword is able to deal up damage. Fry going for the massive commitment, but it's not going to be paying off. He's still going to be able to get back onto stage relatively safe. He only gets hit by a sidelight on the way back up. Okay. And you can see Fry getting hit by these great sword strings, but choosing to delay the dodge, right? And so okay, Welfe. Welfe? All right. Yeah, a lot of damage. Actually, one read from Welfe here, and that's the stock. Fry's not dodging yeah, the, the aerial gameplay, <laughs> the aerial gameplay is crazy coming out for Wealthy. Maybe that is the end game of countering Great Sword. You're trying to read me? What if I just don't dodge? Which, I mean, sometimes, sometimes it works. Other times you just get hit a lot. You know, there's a lot of strings you can do with Great Sword. If someone's <laughs> not dodging, you just keep hitting them, keep hitting them, keep hitting them. But so yeah, I mean, you want to mix up, uh, you want to mix up your, your dodge? I feel wow. like not dodging is a pretty strong mix up. Especially Fry's opting to mash jump instead of dodge. And so we saw in the previous set that Welfare was reading jumps by doing jump sair after a D-Light bridge. Fry's probably going to start getting hit by some of those if he keeps going for the same defensive option. Ooh, oh, I don't know about Ooh. that. No dodge, yeah. Yeah, no, really, really big call out. Not going to be rewarding in this scenario. Fry's able to get a three piece off of that. 
Building up that damage, but Wealthy, we've been seeing, we've been seeing him able to pull some funny stuff off in the aerial side of things on the Great Sword. Ooh. Able to rack up some damage. Not yes, close enough to, to find a knockout yet. But as you mentioned, I mean, yeah, one one read on a Great Sword can knock out deceptively early. Oh. Okay, recovery not enough. Maybe another recovery will do it. We have the sword here. D-Light recovery is now on the table to find the stock. Goes for the Ensig. You rarely ever lose your stock for going for Jayun sword Ensig. Man, that was great by Fry. I gotta give it up. You could tell that Wealth was really trying to be ambiguous with the drift, right? Because a lot of the time, side the players are looking for the moment in which you're going to go for the wall touch. And so it was like, well, what if I delay it here and drift a little bit to the side? But Fry said, what if I don't wait for that and I just chase you off the stage? And Welfay was not ready for that. He was like, why are you down airing me here? People usually don't do it. We're going to see in the replay right here where he kind of drifts to the side a little bit and then gets caught on the recovery with that down air. So extremely well played by Fry. Uh, and we do actually see from that game, uh, Welfay getting 570 damage dealt, whereas Fry only dealt 499. Now, not a massive difference. I mean, 71 damage, not insane by any means, but it is rare enough where the winning opponent dealt less damage that I feel like it's worth Three, mentioning. Two, uh, I was one, hyping well Wealthy's uh, ability to find the knockouts uh, up a lot last set around, but it looks like Fridasol is kind of one-upping him. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a tougher time because I'll say Wealthy has been able to find strings. You know, maybe three, maybe even four hit strings, but because Fry hasn't been dodging in a way that, like, is conducive to getting the kind of standard finishers that Greatsword is known for getting, like, right here, we see it again, right? He goes side light, dash, end light, D light, Fry jumps. He needs to go for jump Sarah now on those because Fry's not, or he can just go for the end light finisher because Fry's not dodging. But I think Welfay's been a little bit too scared to just let it rip. We'll Another find that there. there. Massive option. Goes for the second one as well. That is going to be the stock coming off of Fry as Wealthy is able to get himself, secure himself an early lead here, still sticking to the Greatsword. I do want to mention, yeah, Greatsword, good at a lot of things, but if you're looking for the knockouts, maybe you do want to lead into that sword a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful downstick coming out here from Fry as well. Because leaning into that sword gives you that guaranteed stuff. You know what I'm saying? If you're using the great sword, usually you're trying to get that read kind of around the like late yellow area where if you get someone there, you'll get a really early knockout off a dodge read. But otherwise, sometimes you kind of have to pick a little bit and then get a stray hit with like a side air or something to actually get the KO. Yeah, in terms of in terms of finding the knockout sword in general, it's just a lot less effort for the same reward, right? Whereas on on great sword, the, the effort kind of way more scales uh, with with your damage buildup, with your strings, with your aerial gameplay, which Wealthy has been against Fry of all people playing so exceptionally well in, and he's just controlling the space right now, not able to follow it up uh, or finish it off with a knockout. Fridasol is getting damaged here. Okay. Wealthy has a sword in hand here. Probably looking for that D light. We already saw one gravity cancel. This side is going to push Fridasol off to the right side of the stage. Gets caught by the recovery. It's not going to be enough. At this point, Wealthy needs one more hit. A side air will do it. Yeah, even from the middle of the stage, you can see a lot of these siders coming out. Get stuffed on the recovery. That would have been enough as well. But Great Sword, once again, 20 frame startup on that recovery. And a huge chance for Fridasol. Can't get the final Sayer. Maybe a reverse. No, we actually can't get enough drift to get the touch there. And now we actually we have a lead for Welfare. Super close to touching the wall, but still not enough. And Fry going immediately for the massive call out, trying to get an early stock. I mean, you're basically already deep red on that second stock. You might as well go for those risky plays. Not going to be not going to be paying off this time around. Welfi is able to bounce that bounce back up and find the knockout. Now even a territory. Let's see who's going to be coming out on top. Fry, oh my god. He's able to find so much right now. What is going on? He's finding all of the openings all of a sudden. Let's see. Fry looking to close one. Wow, he's just inching oh my away. God. Dude, <laughs> Fry needs to stop doing that. But I mean, it works. Wealthy, he doesn't know what to do. He's like, what's going on? Recovery. That's going to be enough to find the knockout as well. And that is going to be the end of that game. 2-0 on the board for Fridasol. Okay, Fridasol.
seemingly able to kind of be cheeky with it but i get it there is an aspect of brawlhalla where when you're playing it on average your opponent is always moving that when they stop or they do erratic movement like that you're just kind of like what <laughs> like it, it, it interrupts the natural flow in such a way that really does act like a stagger to the way people think about their approach to the game and fry seemingly at least two times if not more than that today has been able to lead that into some advantage if not a ko it's, it's funny to watch but it works it works yeah some sometimes just just bits of information or quotes to stick in your head that you can't really get rid of. I remember watching a dev stream in like 2020, and Foda said sometimes Three, the optimal, two, uh, the most one, optimal draw. option is the gold option. Which the more I think of it, the more I, the, the more I realize how, how right he was. You want to play, you want to be unpredictable, you want to surprise your enemies. Sometimes going for that one thing that the enemy has no idea what you're going on about is going to be the best option. I 100% agree with you. There's an aspect of playing a game at a competitive level that like tells you that you feel like you need to be optimal at every moment. And that's if you will your comp your opponent down to just like being a computer. But if you think about them as a person, the stuff that trips up people <laughs> is the stuff that feels like it doesn't make sense. Oh, well, all right. It. Dodge gets ground pounded, but you got Qatar ground pound is not the best, but clean. that's going to do it. <laughs> do super, like super pound? clean. So this is Able rare. I actually can't tell up. you the last time I've seen a Mako. You know, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can't, on the top of my head, I can't tell you a Mako player. I, I know that Skeldra was on Mako a lot in uh, a, a lot in uh, Ranked and periodically also picks uh, Mako up in tournament gameplay. But any dedicated Mako player, I can't tell you a single name. Qatar's obviously super, super strong at the moment. Um, Whoa. At least it looks like Welfare believes so. All right, gets the recovery as well. And maybe Wafa just needed the change. Maybe the sword wasn't doing it. Maybe you want an easier damage buildup. If you want to get KOs with Mako, you can, one, use that amazing down sig. You also have that slide charge down sig oh on the great sword if you can't find the KO. And right now, oh, I get, how does he do it? How does he I do don't it? Know. I don't know. I, don't I told it. you, I told you that signature, it's allowed for Fry. It's the forbidden signature, but for Fry Soul, it's allowed. He has a permit. He has a permit to use that signature. <laughs> he got a degree, He signed a bro. contract. He got an agreement. Okay, Fry. Five years in university for that oh one. Slide charge down sig. Do it. Do it, Welfi. It's in your bones. You know it's caught. Oh, no. He's going to lose the stock here, maybe. Oh, Fry tries to close it right there. Recovery not enough. Maybe a Qatar recovery. Are we going to starve Fry? We are. Oh, throws the weapon down and not diagonally. I wasn't expecting that. This is, for Wealthy, this is so much more than just a Qatar swap. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I forget this, but Mako has eight speed, like, base. This speed, I think, is working out so there well for, for Wealthy. I don't know if it's only the stats or if he just stepped up his movement in general, but he is moving all over the place, Flambo. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more dash landings, and I think part of it is because Qatars are just a weapon that requires you to get so up close and personal, you really have to substitute the lack of range with movement, right? And so there's sort of an inherent buff to the way he has to play because it just is what makes the weapon works better. Let me see if he can find some of that magic he has had with his aerial greatsword gameplay previously, but Fridasol is able to pick up that Sayer, taking it down to a one water stock situation. And this could very well be the tournament stock for Welf. He has, he has to survive here to be able to continue in the tournament. Most important stock of his entire tournament so far. All right, and Finds the dare. It's a good start. Gets the Nair as well, but Fry is able to turn oh. around the recovery, the dare. That could be very well be it, but Welfi is able to get back out. And just like that, Fry so he has some stuck in a lot of a combo. Welfi oh. can't get out. That's it. And that's it. That's it. Fry Soul is going to be advancing to the eliminations finals, going up against Poe and has has redeemed himself a spot in the top three. Okay, that was that was a bit haphazard in the end there. You know, the edge guard looks like it could have gone either way, but that is the risk you play going off stage against Scythe and not succeeding.
right? Like, I understand why Welfay did it, especially with the way that that edge guarding sequence started off. It did look like there was a huge opportunity to get a turnaround there, just wasn't quite able to capitalize. But I do actually like the switch to Mako. I think it made the difference. It just wasn't quite enough. Yeah, I, definitely in that last uh, encounter, potentially flew a little bit too close to the sun. But if there's anything in this set, uh, you know, any what if that pops into my head, it would be what if he went over onto the Mako earlier? Because I, 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 I don't know, I feel like those Katars were looking insane. Yeah, no, right? He was cooking, he was moving as well. I was like, oh, okay, so you really got that juice within you. But now, it means we're going to see Fridasol versus Poe for the elimination finals. And Poe's been waiting here for a minute. Hopefully, homeboy's still warm because Fridasol has had a lot of games in a row to make sure that this fate is up to snuff. Three, two, one. Yeah, hopefully, stayed warm indeed. I hope you didn't forget about Poe. We saw uh, Poe in the winner finals going up against FXL, which was a game five scenario. Uh, also, a reminder Fridasol traveling in here from EU, he's fighting He's fighting the guy that took out one of his brothers. Poe took out from winner's side, I believe, uh, the Ninja 79, and it looks like Fry is out for vengeance with a 18 second stock. That is Poe just deleted from the screen. Oh man, yeah, I was saying Fry had all this time to warm up, and clearly homeboy is hot, right? Fresh off the oil, ready to go. Like a plantain, man. <laughs> He's ready to cook. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Does trying to find some kind of a... Yeah, he's trying to find it at least. He has the cannon. He has definitely the same kind of pop off potential with his weapon. And I mean, it's so easy to just fixate on the, the, the quick pop off. But let's appreciate the fact that Poe has been able to rack up a lot of this damage back without taking too much damage himself. Now, as I say that, of course, Frida so is able to actually find a lot of good hits. But all in all, he did uh, recover slightly closing, uh, closing and tightening up that lead that Fry had. Yeah, no, I have to agree. I mean, like, at this point, you know, you get one D-Light and the, the game's tied <laughs> if you're a foe. And so, there we go, the end light gets the yeah. read on the yeah. dodge, and okay. that's Soul Force. Ugh, not coming back from that. Oh, with the cannon swing, able to take that stock off and fry now. What started as an amazing game for him, he's finding himself in a disadvantageous position here. Oh, patrolling the ground. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for another one of these crazy, crazy reads. And you see Pose immediately going for it. What kind of flavor do we have here, Flambo? That's what I'm saying. Especially if you're Fry, there's a, a degree of needing. Oh, gosh. That could have been the game right there. You can see Fry try to get the turn around. He's going to go off stage here, try to play this game. Gets that caught by the down it. air. Beautiful dodge. Turn around. Ground pound's not going to be enough. Needs one more hit. Do you like ground pound into the stage? Ooh, that oh, hit! Dude. That hit! Oh. These options, what is up with these options? Introverts out here also use these options. I'm, I'm, I'm understanding the flavor, Flambo. This is it, I get the flavor. There is no way. There is absolutely no way. Okay. I, I can't understand how he was able to do that. Clearly he's just built different. Clearly he's just built different. I mean, it, it is an option that people know about. It's an option that people use, but to the extent of which we've seen it used today, like, I see that, like, twice a year. <laughs> at least in tournament, at least in top eight. Okay. Let's see, Fry. Looking to close this one out. Falling behind as far as damage goes, but, I mean, this is... This is Zul here. You get hit by a side air, you're getting knocked out the screen. Fry trying to play off stage, gets caught by a down air, and that's going to be it for that one. But it was an extremely close game, but you have to remember how that match started. Fry, yeah, I think exactly. he said, was 18 seconds on that stock was what he got? Yeah. Yeah, something, something, something absolutely mental like that. It's so easy to, it's so easy to forget just how far back Poe was and how much he had to fight to be able to get back up and being able to close out the game just makes it that much more impressive. If Rydasol, because I mean, everything considered, he was basically starting the game with two stocks going, against, going up against three stocks. What is he going to be able to do when you have three stocks versus three? We're gonna have to find out. Maybe Fry is going to be able to find something like that again. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, Fry might be the one to be fried, bro. <laughs> We're gonna check okay. out in a moment. Oh, oh my god. 
Oh, it doesn't stop! It's not over! It doesn't stop! You think three times, finally, Poe is done, and then he hits you with another, and then another. He finds the read, he finds the follow-up, and that's the stock. Oh, man, hold on. Yeah, so I guess Fry getting a bit of his own medicine, trying to turn it around. The weapon throw gets eaten by the corner there, I think. And now Fry, without a weapon, without a oh dodge, and Poe going no. for the reads is not stopping. Fry tries to go for an unarmed edge guard. Are you crazy, dude? What? Why would you do that? And Poe is like, yeah, sure. Come to me unarmed. I'm going to go ahead and cook you. And suddenly, Dude, Fry I don't know. not relevant in this match. I don't know what's going on anymore. I I, I, I can't... I cannot comprehend or process. I, there's only one thing I can compare this to. When, when, at, when Sandstorm was on his peak, you could pinpoint the exact moment where Sandstorm, Sandstorm got the download and then the other opponent just didn't stand a chance. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened, but so far it looks like maybe that's a little bit what happened. He's finding just read after read after read, but Fridasol, very experienced player. I wouldn't put it past him to be able to adjust accordingly, but I don't know. I don't know if that's going to come too late. Can he get back to stand? Ooh, the turnaround. Hold on. Tries to go for the reverse nair. Perfectly timed dodge. Fry might be able to do it here. Needs one catch. Ah, oh, got the touch, though. So that means Poe was able to refresh resources and now was able to get back onto the stage. But if Fry was able to capitalize in that one moment, that could have been a tied okay. stock game. Okay. Still might be. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Fry. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> cheeky here. Yeah, not going to be able to finish it off. Fry has to find this knockout. This is the D-Light. This is the follow-up as well. Rather, oh. the wake-up option. That's it. Poe is able to find that punish, and there it is. That's a two stock. That's 2-0 on the board. This set just barely started. We're two games in Flambo. I just... Fry, I, I, I don't know what he was doing at the he beginning. He was doing a lot better on the last stock. He was doing a lot better on the last stock. That I feel like Poe, though. obviously... Yeah, Poe, he has the extensions. Um, he has the extensions locked in, uh, but uh, Friday so I mean, at the last stock, he just didn't allow Poe to win the neutral. And I mean, how good are your extensions if you just never have an opening to begin with? Uh, if we feel, if you see that kind of gameplay continuing to come out from Friday so this is still definitely. I mean, he's still in the game. Yeah, no, I mean Poe. Uh, we've seen a lot of cannon clips in our lifetime, right? And, and most of the time, they kind of start the same way. Cannon player hits you with, like, D-Light down air. They wait for your dodge. They get it. And then they, like, side light, sear you, recovery, whatever. And then you kind of lose your stock. That first stock we saw from Poe in that last game is unlike most cannon clips I've ever seen before, right? And I, I follow Adam Cool on Twitter, and he be hitting some stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So that was that was insane. Absolutely phenomenal play from Poe. I want to see more of that for sure. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in essence, a lot of the stuff that you see on cannon, as you mentioned, uh, the reads uh, are kind of standard. Uh, but it's one thing, as you mentioned, Poe doing it in a fashion in which, you know, we don't really get to see that often. He's also doing it in that fashion against Fridasol in the top eight, in the top three, in Eliminations Final. He's pulling this off and he is closing out these games faster than we can say what just happened. Yeah, no, we got a little bit of a... I don't know if you got something to do after this or or, or what. <laughs> he looking, he's playing like he got somewhere to be. I'll, I'll put it that way. He's playing like he got somewhere else to be, and I, I'm with it because he is bulldozing, steamrolling, and I I still can't help but remember Fry's first stock in that first game. It really did look like Fry had set the tone, set the pace for what the game was going to be like. And on the other side, Poe was like, "Fine, sure, we can play that quick." And now it looks like Fry can't keep up. Yeah, Fry is having a hard time keeping up, and it looks like they are going to be hovering over their legend picks. Uh, I believe we might have some technical difficulties coming out from Friday's Soul's side. Uh, as mentioned, Friday's Soul obviously uh, on vacation in Dubai, playing, I believe, uh, from an internet cafe. So uh, there's some external, external variables that you're going to have to worry with with that. Uh, but I think as soon as we are going to be getting back in, uh, we're going to be able to find out I see.
I see. He, he's running out of internet time, and he only has 10 no minutes way. left, so it keeps beeping. It's so I'm like, what? You got to, like, pay a little bit extra coin to, to have the computer for a little bit longer or something like that, right? That's how that works. You got to go swipe the card, little bro. You got to put them coins in there like you at the arcade. Put them credits in. This reminds me, this reminds me of when Pavelski was playing. angry i gotta fix this <laughs> that's funny yeah probably thought maybe the the tournament would be over by this time or something or maybe maybe fry just didn't think he'd get this far that's fair you know you put maybe. in as much time maybe. as you, you know you think you're gonna need and maybe he didn't expect to make it this far so it's a happy thing for him i think maybe <laughs> uh it looks like we are going into the map banning screen and friday's all is going to be playing with the beeping uh yeah i mean uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see how it turns out okay <laughs> we ride we ride i mean granted friday's all already down two games in the set maybe won't put that extra coin in because maybe a 10 minute should be enough if he loses if he wins, though, he's going to go ahead and have to go up to the main front of the screen there and pay some money. So with that said, we'll see in just a moment. Give it a little I bit do want to say, I do want to say Fate is known for having some some safer signatures, right? You have that neutral signature on, on Scythe, which when used off stage, you can throw out quite safely. Uh, I did not notice this earlier, but I, I screenshotted Three, two, the stats. I took one, another look at them. Fratisol had a signature usage of seven with an accuracy of a zero percent. So maybe, maybe we will see a different story if Fratisol doesn't throw out as many. Okay, let's see. So far, pretty decent. I mean, this cannon is going as wild as it has before. Oh, it goes kind of deep there with that down air, though. And Fry is going to go ahead and wait on the stage, looking to kind of hold the corner, hold that stage control. But Poe not quite able to, uh, to find the hits right now. This is actually the most solid Fry has looked, I think, versus Poe this far, as far as like, the neutral game goes. I think Fry understands and maybe he has to slow it down a little bit. It's the beep above. Each each angry beep of the of the computer just uh, increases <laughs> the vigor of which Fry plays with. Uh, quite even first stock indeed, as you mentioned. Uh, Fry is all falling a little bit behind on the damage side of things. And Poe, we are seeing we are seeing a much more almost uncertain Poe. Not going for as many of the call out options which he was earlier. Oh. Fry gets the recovery into the stage, maybe a ground pound, tries to go for a dare instead, it doesn't connect, looking for an option, Poe doing a great time of biding for time with this recovery, just to make sure that Fry can't tag him, then finds a downlight nair onto Fry, that true combo, the tried and true guaranteed good stuff that the cannon offers you to go ahead and get that first stock. Stock advantage now. Let's see if he's going to be able to sustain it and get some of that damage build up. Fridasol is on the Scythe, which, uh, I mean, according to a lot of Scythe players, um, can have a bit of a hard time finding those knockouts. I mean, that's a D-Light right there. Pose HP is basically almost barbecue and it's not enough. Actually, I scratched that. The D-Light did end up taking out Poe, stopping his uh, momentum there by the ledge with a dare. A Gimp of the Mind. Okay. Poe back on this cannon. Trying to find that opening. And you can see Fry's taking, slowing it down, right? Not throwing out hitboxes, yeah, waiting yeah, for yeah. Poe to whiff. He's like, if I'm going to bring myself back into this, I'm really going to have to pick and choose when I let my hitboxes rock. And we saw right there, he got, was able to get two, three now. Four hits as Poe is kind of struggling to answer back. But then the catch was almost enough right there to get the stock. Fry, oh, was trying to, I think, comp off of that weapon throw into a ground pound. But it was a well-timed dodge from Poe to get out of that scary situation. Yeah, we're definitely, we are definitely seeing a tone shift going into this game. Poe, I believe, wants to be kind of more in that aggressive kind of pacing, that fast-paced gameplay. Whereas Fry, if he purposefully starts playing a little bit more slowly, he forces Poe to play it by Fry's terms now. As I mentioned at the last stock of last game, 
I mean, Poe is amazing at getting extensions, but how much does that matter if you're not winning those neutral engagements to begin with? But so far, Poe has been winning enough of them and finding enough extensions to find himself in this advantage. And Fradisol is on his tournament stock. Okay, let's see the end sig gravity cancelled. It's gonna be enough to get that one. Fry has to win here in order to stay relevant in this bracket. But Poe has been quite difficult for Fry to get through. You can see some weapon starving happening here as Fry seems very comfortable trying to swing against the unarmed, but now Poe does have that axe in hand. Ooh, opportunity for Fry. Find the recovery. Goes for the massive call out. Fratus was ready with the appropriate response though. And this is exactly where Fry thrives. Always able to get back up though. With slippery movement, he's able to get past Fry only to get stuck in another combo coming out from him. He gets that there though. Tries to go for a second one. If Fry panic jumped again there, that would have been absolutely terrible. Still in the game though, it's still possible. Ooh, and Fry tries to go for the setup because there was no dodge, but it looks like that NSIG is not guaranteed if you have no dodge. We saw Poe get out the way. Fry could have gone for a Sarah instead, but instead will be knocked out of this bracket as Poe had racked up enough damage in conjunction with the end light from Zul with all that force. Yeah, that's going to be enough to get a kick. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think a lot of the Middle Eastern and North Africa players were getting worried when they saw Hermeson, Fridas Ol, and the Ninja 79 signing up to the tournament. But the dream is alive. We have a grand finals without any EU players. It's going to be PO, sorry, Poe going up against FXL. Fridas Ol going to be finishing at third, and we are getting prepared for Grand Finals, Flambo, the first ever Grand Finals in the MENA region. Now this is going to be wild. Granted, we did see this tale before, right? If we take a look back to the winner's finals, we saw FXL versus Poe. It was a game five set. The switch to Val in game five ended up being quite the difference though as far as that game five went i'm wondering if fxl is going to start with that val in this reset or maybe swap to something else but first we're going to be going to a quick break so make sure you refill your popcorn go take your little peeps and poops because when we're back we're going to have the grand finals of the mena region stay right where you are
Welcome back to the trial of Emir. It's me and Flambo joined with Polly as we're about to bring you guys the grand finals or the first time ever of this region. So I'm extremely excited to see how things shake out. We're going to have Poe versus FXL. This is going to be the run back from the winners finals. And I don't know what to expect. What do you think, Polly? I don't know, man. It is, it, it is the rematch. I, I think Poe... We didn't get to see that many matches, right? We've been following the tournament for the entire day. Everything has been leading up to this, but we only saw one winner's game. We only saw Poe uh, versus FXL, the winner finals. So I don't know if I'm able to tell you Poe is playing better now than he was in, in winners. And we also only really saw Poe play against FXL and just now going up against Ryder. So it's so hard to tell, especially considering FXL is a player that I've never I've never seen at a Grands before. And Poe is a player I haven't seen before, period. But that's what we said at the beginning of the, scre uh, of the stream. This stream is about uh, exploring uncharted territory, and that is the uncharted territory of MENA. And we are so blast blessed to have a Grand Finals with two players that are native of the region. We are getting ready to start. All right, and just like that, we're going to have the pick of the Mordex coming from FXL here. The Fenrir Mordex at that. This time, I think, rocking like Community Color V2 or whatever. But still, Fenrir Mordex, which I think we all know and love and recognize because of a certain person whose name rhymes with Bandborn. What? <laughs> I've, I've, I've not heard that before, <laughs> but that's a great way to put it. Now, so we'll we are getting started, and I mean, these guys, they're already playing with immense fever as we are just swinging in all directions. Poe, I feel like Poe has got on a lot of hits, but it's not really reflected on this HP coming out from FXL. He's been able to answer a lot of them very, very well so far. Okay, and Poe trying to swing with this axe here. Gets caught by the gauntlets. Those gauntlets were doing so well in that vow that we saw before that I'm sure that FXL probably feels right at home on this Mordex. But Poe has had so much time to go ahead and warm up, right? FXL, if you want to talk about people being cold, FXL's been cold for a bit now because since we saw that winner's finals, we've had quite a few elimination bracket matches to get through before FXL got a chance to play again. But despite that, still getting the first stock and still looking comfortable. Yeah, Poe has won the game over FXL in terms of being warmed up, and he had it against Fridasol of all people, 3 owing as we just uh, came uh, came from, which, if anything, could be a pretty substantial mental boost going into this game, which could have a pretty significant effect. So far, though, we are looking at quite an even game. But man, it might not feel it by the attacks, but this movement, this pressure is feels fast-paced. Ooh, wow, nice catch from FXL. Tries to read a high return back to the stage. 
He's gonna wait patiently here. Bait a little bit, throws out that side sig. Poe doesn't bite, takes as much time as they need to go ahead and try to see if they can get a little bit of more comfort before, the oh no. Oh, that's gonna be your stuff. Oh yeah, yeah that's it. No touch. That's it. No touch. Super, super clean there coming out from FXL. A really, really large part about being an amazing player is that you can't mess up on the simple things. And it's in these situations, you're in grand finals. This is when nerves catch up and you mess up on the simple things. But FXL is looking super, super consistent using great movements, great options at every encounter. But Poe is going to get that stock off of him with a dare offstage. Okay. So all things considered, pretty close game here. Poe is behind a fair amount as far as damage goes. But once again, I can only say it so many times, Cannon plus Zul means one wrong guess, and the game could just be over. Wait a second here, and that's just gonna be the game. I mean, I, a little bit anticlimactic, I think, in terms of the ending there, but sometimes it is just that simple. Yeah, and especially, especially if you're a scythe player that is like always constantly looking for the next attack being able to have the patience to sit back and just be like no 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 he's knocked out that's fine i don't need to go down and throw out another uh, another attack don't listen to the intrusive thoughts of going down and doing another eight attacks just just because i feel like it that 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 side of control is the side of a really really good scythe player in a lot of cases yeah now we're gonna see if this is gonna be a. Uh... A clean sweep. I don't think it will be. I do think Poe is going to be able to get some games on the board. Whether or not Poe is able to reset is to be determined. But I think the potential is there. Yeah, I mean, both FXL and Poe have like super, super strong reads, uh, which they're able to rack up so much damage from. But it feels like so far, FXL's neutral is just a little bit stronger. He's able to find way more of those openings. And uh, I feel like a common factor for a lot of players that have really, really good dodge reads, it's usually those tend, tend to have a little bit more uh, predictable Three, dodges, right? Because two, you're so focused one, on your opponent's roll. dodge all the time, you might not be paying as close attention to your own. So it would be interesting to see if we get kind of a back and forth of that. Uh, but for that to even happen, Poe needs to assert himself in this neutral here. All right, let's see what Poe has to say about that. Trying to find these hits with the cannon, man, just to get a stray nair there, but not much else as FXL trying to dance around them. Poe going for a read there, and that's the tough part about cannon, right? Is Ooh. like, if you spend your dodge on a gravity cancel going for a read, and you do not get the correct read, as we just witnessed, Poe lost his entire stock for it. Spawning back in, he's gonna have to try and find a quick knockout before FXL just takes this lead and runs away with it. He's able to rack up more and more damage, but Poe, he finds that there, the oh. ground pump, it is enough, and FXL, he catches the recovery. That's going to be it. It was over, it was already over. See, that's the thing, FXL, he had the knockout. I, I, I didn't keep good enough track of his options. I think he could have just got him back uh, onto the stage after that. Yeah, it looked like he was looking like for a moment, maybe, because I, I don't know if he had enough. Maybe it was like, all right, I know your stock is gone, but is there a way that I can hit you, keep your stock gone, and get back to the stage? And I don't think he was able to find it. But Poe, I mean, at this point, is trailing behind by quite a bit. An entire stock and FXL is continuing to cook here. And this is all she wrote. Good night. Oh, my God. The FXL closing out. Yet another game, and I do want to mention, I mean, my only criticism of FXL's attack in that game was literally that he is hitting too many attacks. Like, I feel if, you, if you're getting to that point, I mean, your gameplay is pretty solid. No way. Now, this, this Mordex is cooking, man. I mean, the dodge reads have been phenomenal. Got the turnaround down sig active input to the right side to go ahead and say, yeah, this game, too, was over the moment it started. Three, that was two, a dominant one, showing four. from FXL. FXL looking so, so strong in this set so far. Is Poe going to be able to bounce back up and regain his composure, or is FXL just going to keep hitting him with these gauntlet strings? And it's wild because we, it, it feels like we just started this Grand Finals, right? But now yes. we are potentially at the end of it. If FXL wins right okay. here, that's going to be it. But Poe, 
Not looking all out to happen. Way. Yeah. Yeah, Poe was standing in the way of that happening. Trying. I, I've been saying many, many times he needs to regain the composure. I don't know if that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing perhaps a little bit more confident Poe going for a lot of these openings here. Able to really, as I said, assert himself in the neutral space. I think so. Super far out. Poe. Just want to commit too hard to the offstage. Very wise choice. FXL super strong offstage. Goes out for that dare, but he's able to slip his way back up. Ooh, and a full damage lead on top of a stock lead for Poe right now. If Poe's able to get this stock, will be in a very pristine position to go ahead and try to move on further here. But that should be the stock. Won't be able to drift after getting hit by that cider from FXL. And FXL is now looking to go ahead and bring things back. Based off of what we saw from this site in that last game, I believe that FXL can do it. Poe needs to be careful. Oh, it's so doable for FXL, but Poe, I mean, FXL, he's in an up, uh, uphill battle right now. Poe, he has the full stock lead. He's looking more confident than ever. Finding these combos left and right, going for these big callouts Jesus. offstage, gets that there. This is the Poe that we know and love. All this cannon offstage. FXL wants to try and find an answer, but he's not able to find any kind of exploitable position all right and fxl trying to get unanswered hits here as well doesn't want to trade with poe at this point down to the final stop this down air is a good start gets the dodge as well gonna carry poe to the side that side air is not gonna hit but the second one will and one ground pound maybe no actually tries to get the delight when poe's going above the lip of the stage but it doesn't connect and now poe has another chance to stay relevant on the second stock what a reaction. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the spot dodge into the neutral sig. Tried and true read on the Mordex. He's going to be able to close out that stock. Poe is so close to closing it out. And he's able to do it with the wake up. Quick, Sarah, you're on Zog. We said it time and time again. Nine strength, man. That's going to be enough to find that knockout. You're basically overcompensating at that point. Yeah, no. Flying across the screen. Fantastic. That's all I got to say. Fantastic, right? I mean, I was a little bit worried that it was going to be a shutout 3-0 victory for FXL, but Poe managing to put a point on the board. Now we're 2-1. Poe has to win two more games to even get a three, bracket two, reset, then one, win three four. more after that. So he's definitely still got some work to do here, but now we've at least shown that we can accomplish some of the task. Oh my God, dude. The game has barely started. The game has barely started. And oh FXL, he just keeps going every time, time and time again. Poe. Jeez. I mean, okay. That's the stock. Jeez, FXL. That's the stock, dude. That's the stock. Poe is not allowed to play the game. Oh, FXL. The scythe looking so hard to deal with. Has done a really good job of getting those 50-50s as well with that side light and then guessing, are you gonna be left or right? I'm gonna go for the end light follow-up and then converting that into the 70 damage. True sight string oh that God. you get if they don't have a dodge. It's the movement too. FXL's movement is looking so crisp. Poe is starting to use panic options. Oh. Mashing around FXL. FXL with crisp movement just puts himself in the right position to find the punish time and time again. I mean, look at that. Able to not find the knockout. So close though. Nice there. Oh, ground pun is gonna do the job. Okay, Poe, not out of it yet, but definitely getting smothered a little bit. FXL manages to disarm Poe as well, throwing out these end lights, no weapon on Poe, tries to get the side air, and the ground pound is actually gonna be the one that seals the deal here. FXL on tournament point, yet again, throwing out the reeds oh. like he's Baron Dipidus, said, oh, hold God, on, it's time to get schooled. I 70 damage, well. 70 damage. <laughs> The read the C emote into the 70 damage. He dropped the read C emote and he does indeed read. What is going on? Epic Cell's just wanting, running back and forth. He is oh, in no. so much control. He's in so much control of this game right now. It, does he get overconfident though? It's still possible for Poe, but it's going to be so hard. Epic Cell, it looks like he has Poe completely figured out. Dare comes out. Oh, at this point, FXL can guy just pick a sig if he wants to. It's gonna be the end sig, the side sig, the down sig. Is it just gonna be the side air? Poe saying, hold on, don't count me out just yet. I can go ahead and bring myself back. This ground pound is me talking to you. At this point, Poe has to play pristinely. FXL, he just has to get that cheeky stuff. You've already done everything difficult. Oh, that's there. so far. Single option is all you need at this point. 
the end lights. Just barely not enough. He's looking for that Sair. He's looking for any kind of option here. And oh. Lights tries to go for the second one. It's not going to be enough. The damage is slowly racking up on FXL. Oh. And Lights. And that is going to be it. We have the first champion of a MENA tournament. It is going to be FXL. Wow. FXL came to play, man. It felt like when FXL was winning, FXL was winning. <laughs> you know what I mean? It did not, I don't know, the way that he was able to kind of lay the hammer down looked a, a little bit too convincing at times. I'm extremely excited to have been introduced to both of these players, both FXL and Poe, because as we've been saying time and time again, like this is our first time being introduced to the players from this region in an official capacity in like a you know like a a, a trial nonetheless right i mean brawlhalla esports year nine has been all about you know we're trying something new we don't want to just do the seasonal championship over and over and over let's try something else and the something else is hitting bro yeah Absolutely. F I mean, Poe, uh, just just the thought that Poe was 3 0 to Fried Assault and then FXL is able to close out the game like that against Poe. Like, we just saw Poe. Poe was absolutely popping off. But next to FXL, I mean, Poe is an amazing player, but FXL, what level is he on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a great way to say it. I, I don't. I'm already looking forward to BCX and we have so much year left, but I'm like, we got to get all these people in the same room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really got to know yeah. because at least for uh, the Royales and stuff, you know, you get like a, a, a smidge of like, what does this place have to give? But I'll have to be a little bit more patient. We got a lot more of the year to get through first. We got a lot more of the year and we do have even more tournaments uh, coming out to you guys throughout the entire week. And of course, we still got NA and SA and EU coming up uh, both tomorrow and the day after. Uh, but yeah, that is going to be this stream closed out. We have crowned two champions in the trial of Ymir. It's going to be FXL and Himwi. What do you think about the day so far, Fambo? Today's been absolutely fantastic. Tomorrow's gonna e be even better, and things will continue to evolve as Brawlhalla Esports shows no signs of slowing down. We will see you guys later with more action. Catch you tomorrow. Why should it be an issue? And because of it, FXL is that much closer. Even if you lose the stock, you're one hit away from sending down FXL to the final stock. Yeah, Hammer definitely getting it. Pretty large uh, resurgence, I, I want to see in all the regions as of late. And I mean, I know we have a super close. Goes for the dare. Nice yeah, no, he. Okay. Okay. D-Light recovery unarmed will be enough. A side sig, down sig. Well, try to solve is just so precise with his movements that they just don't connect. Able to weapon get the throw. Yeah, that weapon <laughs> throw is a threat right there. The D-Light though, Tars, no options. Well, now it in fact just a despawn but has opted to lean to the sword pretty much the entire time. That falling side here might be enough. Grab kept This is an even game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Drift out of the way of the hitbox for a moment there. Okay. Then see it again, that stalled ground. And a side light finisher. A lot of the times it's jumpable, but right there, it looked like he might have been too low. Oh, we gotta... First, you gotta get a hit, and you're not gonna find one. D-Light Rick for the knockouts. Maybe you do want to lead into that sword a little bit more. Yeah. Be the dare that could be very well be it, but Welfi is able to get back out and just like that, right? So he has some stuff in the bottom of a combo. Welfi oh. can't get out. That's it. And that's it against FXL, which was a game five scenario. Uh, also, a reminder, Fredasol traveling in here from EU. He's fighting. He's fighting the guy that. Without a oh dodge, my God. Po, both no. of the reach is not stopping. Fry tries to go for an unarmed end. XL is continuing to cook here, and this is all she wrote. Good reads, oh. like he's bearing dipidus. Oh Said, hold on, this it's time to get cool. Damage is slowly racking up on FXL. And oh. lights, and that is going to be it. We have the first champion of a ME.
Dreaming Something like the spaceship from above